Yo Atlas speaking and welcome to part 6 of what if I was reborn in Naruto as an evil prodigy Uchiha with the inheritance system. Let the tale begin. Chapter 201 Another Tool Uchiha Tenen knocked on the door. After a while, there was the sound of footsteps, and the door was opened by Kakashi. He saw little Yen Bo sitting on Kakashi's shoulder, holding Kakashi's hair with both hands. Seeing Uchiha Tenen arrive, Little Yen Bo happily opened his mouth and screamed. Her hands were also carelessly hitting Kakashi's head. Her small feet that were floating in the air fluttered on the ground, looking very happy. Kakashi stroked Little Yen and grabbed his feet with his hands to prevent him from falling down. Then he said with a helpless face, Tunin, you are here. After that, he led Uchiha Tunin to the courtyard. Uchiha Tunin looked at Little Yen Bo, who was stubbornly clinging to Kakashi, and smiled. Yen Bo seems to have caused you a lot of trouble. Kakashi said lightly, It's all right. When the two of them arrived at the main hall in the front yard, Achiha Tunin was slightly stunned. He saw that the living room was full of toys, like an amusement park. All kinds of things that children liked were placed all over the room, and the ground was covered with soft blankets to prevent children from getting hurt. The snacks in the corner were also full. Even the portrait of Sakumo hanging on the wall of the living room was tilted a little. It was hard to tell that Kakashi was actually quite fond of children. Kakashi skillfully took down Little Yen Bo and put it on the wooden horse in the living room. Little Yen Bo immediately shook it excitedly. Because there was not much room to stand in the living room, the two had to sit on the floor under the eaves. Achiha Tunin looked at the courtyard and said slowly, It's almost time for Chunin to take the exam. Do you have the confidence to take first place? Kakashi nodded silently. Obviously, he did not take Chunin's examination to heart. There is one thing I want to tell you. Achiha Tunin turned to look at Kakashi, and his tone gradually became a little serious. There is about a year left before the war. Kakashi was obviously stunned. He frowned and said, so fast. Naturally, Achiha Tunin could not say that Sasori would kill the Sandane Kazakage in a year, causing the third battle to erupt. He could only sigh and say, after all, it has been peaceful for so many years. Kakashi frowned and looked down at his hands. He murmured, I didn't expect that the war would come soon. With my current strength, I'm afraid I can't reach the level of my father. Kakashi. Achiha Tunin said coldly. Huh? Achiha Tunin said with a serious face, Senior White Fan told me to urge you to become an existence that surpasses him. Kakashi's expression also became serious, and he said solemnly, I will reach it sooner or later. As he spoke, his gaze towards Achiha Tunin became more resolute, and his face burst with determination to win. Achiha Tunin nodded and continued to pave the way, I don't want you to die in war. Kakashi nodded heavily. I know. He knew that war was extremely cruel. On the battlefield, you can only be cannon fodder and lose your life. Achiha Tenen pondered for a moment and said slowly, when I was traveling outside, I learned a secret technique. It can help people open up the Ren and do meridians, penetrate the bridge of heaven and earth, and stimulate their potential but the process of opening it will be very painful. A few days ago, I activated Abito's potential. Kakashi raised his eyebrows slightly and immediately became interested. Can I give it a try? The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. Sure. Achiha Tunin's eyes slightly narrowed, and he quickly made a series of hand seals. Then, he stretched out his chakra palm and gently pressed on the top of Kakashi's head. This time, Achiha Tunin had prepared an unprecedented life source, and he wanted to give Kakashi a fierce fight. After all, he had coveted Abito's Kamui Sharingan for a long time, so he naturally wouldn't let Kakashi take one. However, considering that Kakashi was strong enough to become his right-hand man, he naturally had to improve his strength as much as possible. In any case, Kakashi had already acknowledged him. The stronger the strength, the better. The system's ability was no different from a lone shark. When it was still there, it would pay with its life. 
Kakashi felt as if the bones above his head had been lifted, exposing his brain to the air. A cold and deep aura was poured into his brain. Even though Kakashi was already prepared for pain, he realized that he had still underestimated the pain that Uchiha Tunin was talking about. Ugh! Kakashi grunted and his entire body trembled crazily. All the hair on his body stood on end, and sweat kept pouring out. In just a moment, Kakashi's entire body was soaked. A cold and gloomy aura stirred in his mind like a swimming snake, as if it were for greedily devouring his own brain. Kakashi's facial expression gradually became ferocious, and the veins on his neck and the forehead above his mask bulged. His fists were clenched tightly together, and his nails were even embedded in his palms, squeezing out blood. Finally, Kakashi could no longer hold it in. He fell to the ground in the courtyard and rolled crazily. Little Yen Bo, who was sitting on a wooden horse in the room, saw Kakashi's appearance and immediately frowned, crying out loud. Then, he staggered out his hands and shook them at Kakashi. On the floor under the eaves, Achiha Tunin sat cross-legged and stared coldly at Kakashi. He casually stretched out his right hand and lifted up the back collar of Little Yen Bo. Little Yen Bu's legs constantly staring at Kakashi's pitiful state, crying so hard that it seemed like his throat was going to break. The entire courtyard was filled with Kakashi's screams and Little Yen Bo's cries. Gradually, Achiha Tunin frowned slightly. It seems that the amount of life essence is too large, Kakashi seems to be unable to bear it all. After thinking, Achiha Tunin opened his right eye and opened his Mangekyo Sharingan and began to crazily absorb the negative emotions emitted by Kakashi due to pain. But the negative emotions did not represent pain. Achiha Tunin only did this to prevent Kakashi from losing his mind due to the intense pain, which was about to drive him crazy. With the help of Achiha Tunin, Kakashi regained his rationality. However, the more rational this situation was, the more he could clearly feel the inhuman pain. Gradually, Kakashi's breath became weaker and weaker, as if he was going to die in the next second. In this situation, was Kakashi going to die? If he had known earlier, he would not have taken such a risk. Wasn't this a huge loss? Achiha Tunin's expression became uglier and uglier, more and more thinking that his thoughts this time were a bit too extreme. As he tumbled, Kakashi saw Little Yen who was crying endlessly, thinking that he had been in danger and wanted to help. As well as Achiha Tunin, who was frowning and had an ugly expression on his face. A huge desire to survive rose in his heart. I want to surpass my father and revive my family. I still have so many friends I care about. Tunin, Abito, Minato-sensei, Kushina, Rin. Finally, under the strong desire to survive, Kakashi passed the most dangerous period. The moment the pain disappeared, Kakashi fainted from exhaustion. Immediately, the heart-wrenching screams in the courtyard disappeared, leaving only little Yen Bo crying non-stop. Looking at Kakashi who had lost consciousness and fainted on the ground. Achiha Tunin could not help but heave a sigh of relief. Chapter 202, Dark Road Late at night, in the dim yellow room, Kakashi slowly opened his eyes and felt something moving under his armpit. He immediately tilted his head and looked towards his armpit. He saw little Yen Bo facing his butt and sleeping soundly beside him. The corners of Kakashi's mouth curled up slightly. He quietly got up and walked out of the room. He saw that the warm orange chandelier was lit in the living room. Achiha Tunin was wearing an apron and walking out of the kitchen with rice. You're finally awake. Come and eat. I made two side dishes in a hurry. Kakashi nodded blankly and sat down at the table. There were already four dishes and a soup on the table. The aroma was overflowing and the dishes made one's appetite increase. Kakashi picked up the chopsticks and hesitated for a moment. I, did I succeed? Achiha Tunin nodded and said, the effect is very good. Only then did Kakashi notice that Achiha Tunin's face was deathly pale. He could not help but frown. What's wrong with your face? Achiha Tunin was silent for a moment and then said in a relaxed tone, this secret technique will extract my origin and pour it into your body, so. Kakashi understood in a flash. 
Sure enough, this secret technique that can stimulate the potential of the human body is not without a price. The origin that Tunin mentioned should be very important to the human body. The reason why Tunin did not say it before was that he was afraid that he would not accept it after he said it. Thinking of this, Kakashi looked at Uchiha Tunin with a touched face and said in a deep voice, Tunin, thank you. A trace of a smile appeared on Uchiha Tunin's pale face. No need to thank me. The side effects of this secret technique are not particularly serious. I will be fine after a while. Wow! At this moment, Little Yan's cries rang out in the bedroom. Uchiha Tunin quickly put down his chopsticks and wiped his hands on the apron. He untied the apron and put it aside as he walked quickly into the bedroom. Soon, Little Yan Bo's cheerful laughter rang out in the bedroom. Uchiha Tunin carried Little Yan Bo out of the bedroom and sat down at the dining table. He said to Kakashi, You have to prepare for Chunin's exam in the next few days. Leave Yan Bo to me. I will be going out to carry out a mission in a while. When the time comes, you can lead him to me. Kakashi nodded heavily and said, No problem. Right, what mission are you going to carry out? Is it dangerous? After the secret technique just now, Achiha Tunin's face was already ugly to look at. His body must have suffered a great injury. In such a situation, he still had to carry out a mission. Kakashi was afraid that Uchiha Tunin would not be able to handle it. Uchiha Tunin shook his head with a smile and said, There is no danger. It is just a competition held by the daimyo. When Kakashi heard this, he immediately felt relieved. He picked up a mouthful of food with his chopsticks and put it into his mouth. Woo! Kakashi's eyes widened and the expression on his face gradually became exaggerated. It was too delicious. Late at night, Uchiha Tunin carried the sleeping little Yen and left the Hataki family house, walking towards Uchiha's home. Because only a few days had passed since the new year and Chunin's competition was about to begin. The commercial street was still bustling with people and lights. Uchiha Tunin had just arrived at the commercial street. At the end of the street, Jounin Tadu, the leader of Sunagakir who came out by himself, was stunned. He quickly ate the last bit of ramen in his bowl, got up, and left. After walking out of the noodle house, Tadu stretched and looked at the calm and composed Uchiha Tunin from the corner of his eye. Is this Uchiha Tunin who is going to participate in the honorary Chunin competition? He looks ordinary, isn't he just an ordinary teenager? Those ignorant villagers also boasted that he had the power to surpass the three ninjas. Tadu was recalling the information he had heard about Uchiha Tunin from those villagers during the day. Kind-hearted, brave, fearless of power, loyal and righteous. Strange-shaped eyes, can summon a huge Buddha, can chant the scripture to transcend the souls of the dead. What kind of strange information is this? Those villagers must have been hit by an illusion. But at this moment, Uchiha Tunin was already approaching. Tadu and no longer stayed, turning around and walking slowly into the distance. This direction was the direction of Uchiha's clan, and it was also the residence that Kanoha had arranged for the participating teams of Sunagakir. Tadu's footsteps were very slow, as if he was waiting for Uchiha Tunin behind him. The Umbu, who was secretly monitoring the, the complex, also saw Uchiha Tunin. But there was no reaction. After all, Uchiha Tunin was much stronger than them. Even if Tadu wanted to harm Uchiha Tunin in the sand village, he could only say that he was courting death. With his hands in his pockets, he walked slowly and even hummed a song. Gradually, Tadu walked to a fork in the road. A road led to the residence of Tadu, and a road led to Uchiha's clan. The shops near the fork were all breakfast shops, so the door was closed at this time, and there were no pedestrians nearby. Tadu did not go to the road where he lived, but kept walking straight to the direction of Uchiha's clan. Seeing this, the dark operation in the dark perked up. After Tadu took a few steps, he suddenly stopped in place and exclaimed with a face full of regret. Oh no, I went the wrong way. I still have to explain the tactics to them. After saying that, 
Tad had turned around and took out his hands from his pockets. He turned around and ran to another road. The moment Tad had took out his hands, he took out a metal necklace and dropped it on the ground. However, as if he did not know anything, Tad had hurriedly brushed past Uchiha Tunin who was walking towards him. After Uchiha Tunin ran past Tadu, a scarlet light flashed in his eyes. Then, the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. He carried the sleeping little Yanba to the metal necklace and stepped on it. What is it? Uchiha Tunin pretended to be surprised, moved his feet away, and then bent over to pick up the necklace. He saw that this necklace was extremely exquisite and it was suffused with a shiny metallic luster. Uchiha Tunin pinched it slightly, and he could even feel that the texture of this metal was a little soft. Of course, the most eye-catching thing about this necklace was the sky-blue gem in the middle. It was obvious at a glance that it was priceless. Finders keepers, I guess. Uchiha Tunin chuckled, put the necklace into the ninja bag, and continued to walk towards Uchiha's territory. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin had accepted the necklace, the dark group, who had been secretly staying here, no longer had the mood to stay, and quietly left. After all, this was the remnant of an international friend in Kanoha. If not for a heavyweight like Uchiha Tunin who picked it up, the Umbu would definitely give it to Haruz and Saratobi. At this time, Tadu was running towards the residence under the eyes of the Umbu. However, he was secretly proud of himself. As expected of Lord Kazakage, he could actually think of such a powerful assassination technique. Even if this little brat Uchiha really had the strength to rival the three ninjas, he probably wouldn't even be able to get out of bed in two months. Little brat, let Sunagakir teach you a lesson and let you understand what a ninja is. Chapter 203 Insider Information When Uchiha Tunin returned home, he put the sleeping little Yen Bo on the bedroom bed to rest. Then he went to the living room alone and made himself a pot of tea. While drinking tea, he took out the necklace in the ninja backpack and looked at it. It's so beautiful. The gems produced from Suno were worth two million. No, it should be ten million now. For ordinary Chunin, it was indeed a great temptation. Achiha Tunin murmured. He casually pulled off the gems on the necklace and threw it aside with a look of disgust. Immediately, he opened his Sharingan and observed the metal necklace. Achiha Tunin's Sharingan had fused with the ability of Byakugan, and the range of the light was even wider. In the eyes of Achiha Tunin, this necklace was simply like the sun in the sky, emitting a blazing white light. The technology of the ninja realm can already refine such a strong radiation metal? It seems that this radiation is very targeted. It can even cause the cells in my body to overload and extract chakra. I feel that if this goes on, with my physique, I will be squeezed dry in half a year. Achiha Tunin was not an ignorant ordinary ninja. Every once in a while in the Fire City, several civilians who were ignorant die. The civilians who could live in the Fire Capital were all elites from all walks of life. This also caused Achiha Tunin to unknowingly become more and more knowledgeable. Achiha Tunin picked up the cup and leisurely took a sip of tea, muttering. Because the strength of the cells is limited, it only has an hour of effective time to extract chakra every day. Over this time, under the effect of the self-protection mechanism, the cells will instinctively rest. If you forcibly break this self-protection mechanism with a secret technique, people will rapidly age. However, the radiation effect of this necklace was actually able to shield a person's own protective mechanism. Moreover, it allowed the cells to refine their own chakra at all times. What a good thing! In fact, the metal used by this necklace was refined by the third rakage using a lot of resources and time to refine it. At first, the third Kazakage discovered that this necklace could allow people to quickly refine and inspect their carrots. He thought it was a treasure. But later, he found that ordinary people would age and die after wearing this necklace for about a week. People with strong strength could only resist for a period of time. Although there was more chakra, the body was rapidly aging and dying every day. It was really not worth it. This time, the honorary Chunin event was of great importance. The third Kazakage targeted Kanoha's participant Achiha Tunin. 
In order to prevent Uchiha Tunin from picking up the necklace and handing it over to the village, the third Kazakage thought that everyone was greedy and specially decorated a priceless gem on the necklace. As long as Uchiha Tunin picked up the necklace, he would find that it could increase his chakra. He believed that no ninja could refuse such a fatal temptation. However, the only miscalculation of the third generation Kazakage was that not only did Uchiha Tunin see the essence of the necklace at a glance, but his body had also been modified by soft body, and his cell activity was far better than that of ordinary people. Even if Uchiha Tunin did not see that there was a problem with the necklace, he would not die even if he wore it for half a year. And now, Uchiha Tunin naturally would not let go of such a good thing. Although he checked the amount of chakra he had, it was comparable to a shadow level expert, but chakra would never be too much. In the quiet living room, Uchiha Tunin finished the tea in one gulp and gently put down the teacup. He could start eating now. Then, he quickly made a series of hand seals and slapped the ground. Sarutin, who was covered in golden hair, stood in front of Uchiha Tunin. He looked around and asked in confusion, Tunin, why are you looking for me? Uchiha Tunin smiled gently and pointed to the opposite side. I haven't seen you in a long time. Today, I will ask about your cultivation. Sit down. Sarutin nodded and sat opposite Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Tunin picked up a new teacup and poured tea into it. He asked, Is there any problem with your cultivation recently? Does the transformation of the soft body affect you? Tunin, the secret technique you taught me is so compatible with the unbreakable diamond. Sarutin suddenly said with an excited face. Do you know that although my body is not as tough as my fellow clansmen, every time I practice it to the end, it is always them who can't hold on. Lord Inma asked me several questions about secret arts, but I didn't tell him. Achiha Tunin sipped his tea and said slowly, Did Lord Inma say bad things about me in front of you? This, Sarutin, this honest child, was suddenly speechless. How could Achiha Tunin not know what Haruzan Saratobi must have said to the Inma? He immediately said with a casual face, it doesn't matter. I just asked casually. After saying that, Achiha Tunin put down the teapot and gently placed his hands on his knees. He did not look at Sarutin and just quietly watched his teacup. The power of silence was strong. Especially for people who lack patience, it was simply unbearable. Sarutin kept scratching his ears and cheeks. His emotions were flying. He hesitated for a long time before he said with a troubled expression. During this period of time, Lord Inma said a lot of strange things. He also asked me to protect myself more when I help you fight. Don't foolishly rush to the front. Achiha Tunin lowered his eyes and chuckled. He said slowly, It seems that the misunderstanding between me and Teacher Yuan Fei has already involved the ape clan. Sarutin pursed his lips and said, Lord Inma also told me that it is possible that he will smear your name on the spirit contract. I asked Lord Inma the reason, but he did not say it. Tunin, what kind of misunderstanding do you have with Lord Yuan Fei? Achiha Tunin raised his eyes to look at Sarutin, who was worried, and changed the topic. Do you still need to borrow external items to cultivate your unbreakable diamond? Sarutin was stunned for a moment. He did not expect Achiha Tunin to change the topic so quickly. He scratched the back of his head and said, Ah, no need. I only need to sit there and cultivate every day. It's just that my talent is indeed a bit lacking. Even with the secret technique you taught me, my cultivation speed can only be considered average. Oh right, you still haven't told me what the misunderstanding between you and Lord Yuan Fei is. Let me help you think about how to resolve the misunderstanding. Achiha Tunin sized up Sarutin from head to toe for a long time. He then picked up the teacup on the table and said, You can't help this misunderstanding, but there are some places where you and I can help each other. Sarutin was puzzled. What place? You said that your talent is poor, so your cultivation speed is not good. It just so happens that my talent is not bad. In the future, I will help you cultivate. Achiha Tunin looked calm, lowering his head and blowing the tea leaves floating in the tea. 
Sarutin was a little confused and did not quite understand what Uchiha Tunin meant. The only thing he understood was that Uchiha Tunin seemed to want to help him. He was immediately moved and said, Thank you so much, Tunin. You treat me so well that I don't know how to repay you. Chapter 204 Reborn Uchiha Tunin lowered his head and gently blew on the tea, but the teacup reflected Uchiha Tunin's slowly spinning Minjiku. In the empty living room, Uchiha Tunin's low voice sounded. You are the best repayment to me. As soon as he finished speaking, Uchiha Tunin secretly detonated the curse seal in Sarutin's mind. Bang! The sound of a heavy object falling to the ground rang out. At the same time, in Uchiha Tunin's special senses. On Sarutin's corpse, a pure white soul was pulled up by a great force. What is going on, Tunin? What exactly happened? It hurt so much. The tearing sensation of the soul could not be compared to physical pain. It was mainly because Sarutin's body was too strong, and he had just died. His body activity had not disappeared, and he still had a strong binding force on the soul. Achiha Tunin glanced indifferently at the struggling Sarutin soul. He sipped his tea and said with great interest, The stronger the body, the stronger the binding force on the soul. I've gained a lot of knowledge. Ah, it hurts, save me. Tunin, what are you doing? Quickly, quickly please take me back. I beg you, let me go. I am very obedient. Achiha Tunin took a sip of tea and said with a sad face, I am so good to you. But you always answer my questions in a secretive manner. You make me feel that my kindness is not good. I am really disappointed. I am very disappointed. It was as if Achiha Tunin was the victim. Tunin! Ah! Oh. Ki, ki! Sarutin even let out a monkey-like scream, and his soul was completely pulled out. In the end, under the effect of the Shuten Dojutsu, Sarutin's soul was sucked into Achiha Tunin's eyes. Achiha Tunin only felt a sense of comfort emerge from the depths of his soul, and his eyes couldn't help but narrow. A moment later, the sense of comfort disappeared, and only then did Achiha Tunin gently put down the teacup and let out a long sigh. Who told you to hesitate just now? At this time, Achiha Tunin suddenly felt a strange change in his body. It was as if there was a muffled thunder in his body, and his entire body crackled non-stop. A look of satisfaction appeared on Achiha Tunin's face as he quietly waited for his body to transform on its own. After five minutes, Achiha Tunin opened his eyes, and his entire body seemed to have become stiff and motionless. Ka! Achiha Tunin's body seemed to have turned into porcelain, and cracks spread from the top of his head to his entire body. Gradually, more and more cracks appeared, becoming denser and denser. The entire surface of his body was like a spider web. Bang! A huge wave of air exploded, and the furniture in the room was instantly overturned by the strong airflow. Pieces of debris shot out from Achiha Tunin's body. These pieces were harder than the kunai and instantly smashed the furniture that was sent flying into pieces. The remaining pieces were deeply inserted into the walls, the ground, the ceiling, and the pillars. Weya. In the bedroom in the front yard, little Yan's crying sounded. It was obvious that he had been woken up by the commotion just now. But at this time, Achiha Tunin was too lazy to care about Lily Yen Bo's crying. Achiha Tunin could feel that there was a huge change in his body. The feeling this body gave him was very different from before. It's really good. The naked Achiha Tunin twisted his neck and muttered. Then, he stretched out his right hand and looked at his palm with a look of infatuation. His skin was as smooth as jade, his palm was as solid as jade, and his fingers were as fine as spring onion. After the process of shedding skin, the skin on his entire body seemed to be broken by a breeze, like a newborn baby. At this time, four words appeared in Achiha Tunin's mind, reborn. Originally, after Achiha Tunin learned the transformation of the soft body, his skin color was a bit abnormal. However, he did not expect that after combining the unbreakable diamond, it became so natural. After admiring it for a moment, Achiha Tunin suddenly clenched his right hand. 
Bang! A deafening sonic boom rang out. Achiha Tunin's pupils constricted, and a look of great surprise appeared on his face. What a strong body, and this was not the limit. After obtaining Sarutin's inheritance, it naturally included the cultivation method of unbreakable diamond. The current Achiha Tunin could completely absorb the power of nature on his own to temper his body. If he continued to cultivate, then the strength of this body would reach a terrifying level. At that time, perhaps nothing would be able to hurt him. Achiha Tunin, who was naked, reached out to pick up the necklace on the table and put it on his neck. Now his body was already strong to an inhuman level. The cells in the body are refining chakra day and night, and it may take twenty or thirty years for Achiha Tunin to age and die. But don't forget, Achiha Tunin himself also cultivated the unbreakable diamond, thus increasing his body strength. At that time, the time would be extended. It would not take long, as long as there were no problems with the body for twenty years. At that time, when the war began, Achiha Tunin probably already possessed the power of six paths. A mere radiation would not be of any use in front of the power of six paths. After thinking about it, Achiha Tunin got up and walked towards the bedroom. He went to the bedroom and did not hug Little Yen Bo who was crying. When Little Yen Bo saw Achiha Tunin, he stopped crying for a while and then started crying again. But Achiha Tunin ignored this and went straight to the wardrobe. He first changed into a new set of clothes and looked at it in front of the mirror. In the mirror, the outline of Achiha Tunin's appearance did not change, but his skin was like an egg that had just been peeled off. It was smooth, white, and very elastic, together with the silvery-white radiation necklace hanging around his neck. His entire temperament seemed to have undergone an unknown change. It's very cool, isn't it? The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He was very satisfied with the current state of his body. However, the sound of Little Yen Bo's crying echoed beside his ears. He turned around to look at Little Yen Bo and raised his eyebrows slightly. Little Yen Bo's eyelids immediately rolled up and he fell asleep. Immediately, Achiha Tunin's low voice sounded in the bedroom. Really, a mere pet dares to behave atrociously in my head. But, still, I have to thank you properly. With that, the lights in the bedroom went out. Dark clouds covered the sky, and there was no moonlight or starlight. The sky was thick black, almost a color of despair. The street lamps could only illuminate a small area below. The street lamps broke the darkness into several pieces. Outside the residence that Kanoha had specifically arranged for the sand village, several umbu were hiding in the shade of trees, constantly monitoring them. Step, step, step. The crisp and rhythmic footsteps came from the darkness at the end of the street. The umbu raised their guard and looked over. Chapter 205 Threat Soon, Achiha Tunin, who was wearing a black trench coat, walked into the illumination range of the street lamps from the darkness. Achiha Tunin ignored the gazes in the dark and went straight to the residence of the Sunagakir team. Shua a dark group member used the instant movement technique to block Achiha Tunin's path. This is the resting place of the team from the Sonagalier. No random people are allowed in. Achiha Tunin raised his eyes slightly and looked at him indifferently. For some reason, the dark group felt a chill run up its spine, and all the hair on its body trembled as if it was being stared at by some kind of danger. For a moment, it subconsciously held its breath. The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth slowly curved into a gentle smile. He reached out and patted the shoulders of the dark group, saying, I picked up the valuable items that they dropped and specially came to return them. I won't make it difficult for you and only go in for a while, okay? After saying that, Achiha Tunin's smile did not diminish as he brushed past the dark group. As for the dark group member, he was already sweating profusely and could not move his legs. How could he stop Achiha Tunin? When the other dark group members saw Achiha Tunin speak to his partner humbly, they let him go. Naturally, they would not go forward to ask more questions. However, they kept their eyes on Achiha Tunin to prevent anything from happening. It was not until Achiha Tunin almost reached the building where Sanagakir was resting. 
the other members of the dark group realized that something was wrong with their companions. A member of the dark group came out from the darkness and brought his companion into the shade of the tree. He asked, What happened to you? Did you fall for that guy's illusion? The companion squatted and took a few deep breaths, shaking his head and saying, It's not an illusion, it's a very strange feeling. Just like when I was facing Orochimaru-sama before. The house of the Sanagakir was a two-story hotel. It was temporarily reserved by Kanoha. Achiha Tunin seemed to be very familiar with this place and went straight to the second floor. Step, step, step. There were terrifying footsteps in the corridor. The members of the Suna Ninja in the hotel were awakened by the footsteps. The three participating Jinnins hid under the window and were on guard. Achiha Tunin went straight to the room of Tadu and knocked on the door. Tadu was much more courageous than the three Jinnins. Knowing that this was Kanoha, no one would attack him at night. He opened the door naturally. However, when the door was opened, Tadu, who was drunk, was slightly stunned. He pretended to be calm and said, May I know who you are? Achiha Tunin smiled and reached out to shake the radiation chain around his neck. At the same time, he took out the sky blue gem from his ninja bag and said, Sure enough, I didn't remember wrongly. This necklace was dropped by you, right? It was just that I was a little careless when I took it and took the gemstone off. This thing looks quite precious. You must be very anxious. Tadu never expected that Uchiha Tunin would actually be able to resist his greed and return the necklace. Damn it! How could this guy have such a good character? Was he going to fail? Tadu forced a smile and suddenly noticed that Uchiha Tunin had put the necklace around his neck. Then it meant that he had probably discovered that the necklace could help him extract chakra. He immediately said with a grateful face, Oh, I was saying that I couldn't find it after searching for half a day. It turned out that it fell on the road. I didn't say I picked it up on the road. Achiha Tunin said with a blank face, like a silly boy who knew nothing about the world. Tadu, who was drunk, was stunned for a moment and said with an embarrassed smile. Uh, ha ha. Anyway, it's not like we will drop into a noodle restaurant on the way. I really appreciate it very much. This gem is very precious. I spent a lot of money to buy it. In order to thank you, this necklace is for you. I will only take back the gem. Achiha Tunin narrowed his eyes and stared into the eyes of Tadu, how can I accept this? Although he spoke politely, his hands did not move at all. Uh. Tadu was slightly stunned. He shook his head and said with a smile. Of course. You should be rewarded for your actions. Please don't decline, or I will feel uneasy. Achiha Tunin said reluctantly, Well then, I won't disturb your rest. After that, he turned around and left the room of Tadu. On the corridor, the three Sunajinans heard the conversation and knew that there was no danger, so they gathered together. When they saw Achiha Tunin, who was about the same age as them, walking towards them, they all stared at him. Achiha Tunin nodded calmly at the three of them and smiled. Hello. Then, he passed through them. After a few breaths, the three of them came back to their senses and came to the room where Tadu was. Teacher Tadu, what is that guy doing here? He is here to return the gemstone. He saw Tadu, who was sitting in front of the table, staring at the gem in his hand in a daze. What gem? Teacher Tadu, you still have this? The three of them surrounded him in unison. Their faces revealed an infatuated expression as they said, Let me see. It's so beautiful. Don't touch it. Be careful, don't break it. So beautiful. At some point in time, the gem in his hand had been taken by his subordinates and they were admiring it together. At this time, Tadda seemed to be in a trance. He gradually shifted his gaze to the gem and muttered, Jim. Give me back my gem. A Jinnin immediately held the gem in his arms, muttering, No, the gem is mine. The gem is mine. I just touched it. The other Jinnin quickly went to snatch it. Pa! Someone slipped his hand, 
and when the gemstone was being snatched, it fell to the ground and broke into several pieces. Tadu, who was like a mad demon, roared, My gem is worth tens of millions. The dark group outside the residence naturally heard the voice coming from inside and could not help but frown. Pooh! A blood stain was splashed on the window. Oh no, something has happened. The dark group moved out one after another and rushed to the room. At this time, Achiha Tunin had already walked under the street lamp. After hearing the movement behind him, he looked back indifferently and shook his head with a chuckle. People die for money and birds die for food. At this moment, the dark group that blocked Achiha Tunin appeared again, blocking in front of Achiha Tunin, and said in a low voice, Lord Tunin, you can't leave yet. Achiha Tunin raised his eyebrows, a little speechless at this young man, and said slowly, If there is anything, you can ask the Hokage-sama to come to me and learn to be smart. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tunin's figure disappeared without a trace. So fast. The pupils of the dark group contracted, and they looked around, but they could not even see the shadow of Achiha Tunin. In the end, they could only bite the bullet and go to the Saratobi clan to report the situation here to Haruzan Saratobi. Achiha Tunin believed himself to be a gentleman and had a standard conduct of conduct. As the saying goes, return good for evil and repay good for good. Achiha Tunin wasn't someone who was tricked and didn't even dare to fart. Of course, everything had to have a double standard. If it were for the kind of enemy with value and strength, then it would be like taking a step back to the wide open sky. Since the war was about to start anyway, so what if Sunagakir knew that he was the one who did it? At most, he would put pressure on Kanoha. And Haruzan Saratobi couldn't move him. He had endured humiliation and suffering for so long and finally obtained enough strength. It wasn't to let the trash ninja with low strength ride on his head and act like he was a tyrant. Chapter 206 Cracking Bond after returning home, Achiha Tunin tidied up the living room and put Sarutin's corpse into the storage scroll, hiding it in the basement. There was no other way. After all, Sarutin's body was too hard, and ordinary methods of dealing with corpses were completely useless. The following days were peaceful. There was no news from Haruzan Saratobi. He seemed to have suppressed the matter of the Sunagakir team. He didn't even ask about Sarutin. Achiha Tunin was also happy and idle. He went to see the reconstruction of the welfare home every day and went to the orphanage to comfort the lonely old man. Other times, he basically stayed at home alone to absorb the force of nature. When the emotional power in his body was insufficient to absorb more of the natural power, Achiha Tunin would then open the Manjikyu and use the Tamamo I technique to secretly absorb the negative emotions of those clansmen in Achiha's clan territory. Part of the natural power was stored in his body and fused with his own chakra to become a mortal chakra. Part of it would spread throughout his body to strengthen the cells of his body, and the cultivation of unbreakable diamond wouldn't be bad. It had to be said that Achiha Tunin felt that he seemed to have become a cultivator. In the finals of Chunin's exam, Achiha Tunin did not go, but stayed at home alone to accumulate strength. In the end, Minato and others came to Uchiha's territory and pulled Uchiha Tunin out to celebrate Kakashi and Abito becoming Chunin. As expected, Kakashi won the championship. After being planted with the curse mark, Abito's talent increased, and he made it all the way to the top 12. In the end, he was defeated by Abiki. From everyone's discussion, Uchiha Tunin heard that Abito lost in his mind and was defeated by Abiki. For those who have already gained recognition, Achiha Tunin does not need to deliberately disguise to gain their trust and affection. After possessing the unbreakable diamond physique, Achiha Tunin knew how to proceed. He no longer needed to act carefully. As long as the human setting does not collapse on a large scale, he can completely release his nature and push it all the way to the start of the fourth battle. Of course, at the critical moment, he still needed to plan a little more. While ensuring that he would profit, he also needed to ensure that the plot could develop smoothly and not leave his control. After the dinner, Achiha Tunin handed over the small talk to Kakashi. He also told them that he was going to participate in the honorary Chunin competition next month and that he needed to prepare well. 
in the following period of time. The closer it was to the day of departure, the more Uchiha Tunin felt that the atmosphere in Kanoha had become more and more depressing. It was as if something had reached a critical point and was about to explode. Boom! In the early morning, the sky was covered in dense clouds, and lightning was like a poisonous snake sticking out its tongue, cutting through the haze in the sky. The rain turned into threads, and they flowed down like a white silk. The rustling of leaves in the wind and rain matched the rhythm of the rain, sometimes heavy and sometimes soothing. Achiha Tunin woke up from his meditation, unhurriedly put tea in the teapot, and then put it on the stove to cook. He went to the bedroom and changed into a brand new loose shirt, and hung Kuzanaji sword diagonally behind his waist. He took off his glasses, wiped them with a sigh, and put them back on. Then, he began to tidy up the ninja bags and put the things that could be used into the storage scroll. He stuffed them into the ninja bags. After he was done, Achiha Tunin lit three incense sticks for the wooden sculptures on the altar. Finally, he picked up the teapot and sat down under the eaves. While drinking tea, he quietly watched the rain fall from the sky. Half an hour later, Achiha Tunin's ears twitched slightly and he slowly opened his eyes. After several seconds, there was a knock on the door of the courtyard. Achiha Tunin took a sip of tea and put down the teacup. Please come in. A member of the dark group braved the heavy rain, stood in front of the eaves, and said in a deep voice, Lord Tunin, the Hokage-sama has invited you. Achiha Tunin nodded slightly, got up, and went back to his room to take out an umbrella. Just like this, he held the umbrella and walked toward the Hokage building. An hour later, Achiha Tunin walked into the office with an umbrella. As soon as he entered, he saw Haruzan Saritobi sitting in front of the table, looking at him with cold eyes. Achiha Tunin walked to Haruzan Saritobi without looking at him. The two of them looked at each other, and the atmosphere gradually became serious. After a long time, Achiha Tunin lowered his eyes slightly and saw the task certificate that had already been stamped on the table. He reached out to take the task certificate without hesitation. However, just as Achiha Tunin's hand touched the task certificate, Hiruzen Saritobi reached out and pressed Achiha Tunin's hand down. I admit that there were some things that I didn't do before, so it chilled your heart. The matter of Sarutin, the matter of Suna village, and even many things that I do not know, I can let bygones be bygones. If you still recognize me as your teacher, then leave the team of Danzo as soon as possible. Achiha Tunin said indifferently, I don't care what struggles the higher-ups have, I only firmly stand on the side of justice. Hokage-sama, I personally think that Danzo-san knows more about the will of fire than you do. Hiruzen Saritobi coldly snorted and said with deep eyes, At this time, are you still pretending to be confused? I admit that there are many ugly things in the depths of Kanoha, but this is unavoidable. You also know that you are involved. I have always been very clear. I also know what I want. Achiha Tunin struggled to free his hand and put the task certificate into his ninja bag. Then, he turned around and left. Behind him, Hiruzen Saritobi picked up the pipe, lit the cigarette and took a puff. He narrowed his eyes and said, do I still have a chance? Achiha Tunin paused for a moment and strode out of the office. At the boundary of the village entrance, Danzo had been waiting there for a long time. Step, step, step. Footsteps came from the streets. Danzo's eyes narrowed. Soon, Achiha Tunin appeared on the street and walked to Danzo. Danzo looked Achiha Tunin up and down and said with a serious face, You cannot go. Now fire capital is more dangerous than before. As long as you can resist the gossip for a period of time, with my protection, Hiruzen Saratobi can't do anything to you. After all, Kanoha can't afford to lose any high-end forces. The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth slightly curved, and he chuckled. I didn't go because I was arrogant. It's just that I don't like to break the rules. There are some things that have to be solved sooner or later, right? After saying that, he walked past Danzo and walked towards the entrance of the barrier. Don't be impulsive. Once you do something, the whole world will be your enemy. Danzo warned from behind. 
Uchiha Tenen stopped and said in a low voice. I said, I don't like to break the rules. With that, Uchiha Tenen stepped out of the Kanoa barrier. Chapter 207, Interlude Two days later, on the plains near the capital of fire, the white clouds in the sky were like sails that floated in the sky. The warm south wind blew over slowly, bringing with it the fresh smell of spring soil. The pitch-black steam train slowly drove through the wild. Uchiha Tenen sat in the carriage, wearing a cap, writing and drawing on the drawing board. Opposite them sat a couple and a little girl. It was obviously a family of three. The little girl had a face stuffed with candy and was standing on the seat. Her hands were on the table and she looked curiously at the drawing board in front of Uchiha Tunin. In the deafening roar of the train, Uchiha Tunin's painting was finally completed. This is for you. Uchiha Tunin smiled gently at the little girl, took off the painting paper, and handed it over. The little girl did not recognize strangers. Her pink little hand grabbed the painting paper and sat back in her seat. Her eyes were curved with a smile. The woman beside him said softly, hurry up and thank uncle. Thank you, uncle. The little girl called out sweetly. Then, she pointed at the person in the painting and said, this is me. Achiha Tunin did not take offense at the little girl's address. After all, his body had developed a little earlier than his peers. In addition, his physique had recently been greatly enhanced, causing his height to rise sharply. He looked a little older than he truly is. The middle-aged man who was leaning against the aisle opened his eyes and looked sideways at the drawing paper in the little girl's hand. He saw that the drawing on this drawing was the appearance of a little girl holding the table and looking around curiously. The drawing was so vivid that it was like taking a photo. The middle-aged man could not help but praise, the drawing is really good. Are you a painter? Achiha Tenen leaned back in his seat, holding the drawing board in one hand and turning the pen in the other. He shook his head and said, No, I am a Kanoha ninja who protects the country. Drawing is just an amateur hobby. I just started to learn it. The man heard this. Immediately, a respectful expression appeared on his face, so your lord ninja. Achiha Tenen chuckled and said lightly, Please don't call me that. Class doesn't distinguish between high and low. But when he heard that Uchiha Tunin was a ninja, the man obviously wanted to curry favor with him and coughed lightly. Actually, I also wanted to make Keiko a ninja, but unfortunately, she didn't have the talent. Uchiha Tunin looked at the scenery outside the window, and the pen in his hand began to move on the drawing board. He said slowly, In order to achieve the leap of class, Unless the talent and effort are far beyond that of ordinary people, most of them still need generations of accumulation. There are so many jinin in Kanoha, and it is difficult for many jinin to even raise their families in order to carry out missions. Why are they still unwilling to give up their identity as ninjas? Many still wanted to pave the way for the next generation. There were too many benefits in connections, resources, and knowledge. In some small families, Every Jinin was the hope of the family. They were all children, and the children in Kanoha, from medicinal baths to food, were different from the children outside. They were even able to learn basic chakra training from their parents when they were very young. They were ahead of ordinary people from the starting line. The man sighed and touched the little girl's head. Who doesn't know about these things? But it is too difficult to settle down in Kanoha. It is not something that ordinary families like us can afford. Achiha Tenen narrowed his eyes and said slowly, The future will change. In the end, no talent will be buried in this world. The man naturally did not believe Achiha Tenen's words, but he still nodded and said, I wonder if you are Kanoha's Jinin or Chinin. Achiha Tenen lowered his head and carefully outlined the lines on the painting. He said lightly, those things does not have much meaning to me. Because that is not my goal. The man had already reached into his pocket and seemed to be groping for something. Then what is your goal? Can we talk? Hearing this, Achiha Tenen frowned slightly and said, It's hard to say. If you think about it carefully, there are many goals. 
if you really want to talk about a final goal. That is. As he spoke, Achiatunin turned his head to look at the sky outside the window and slowly said, I want only the sky above my head. The man was slightly stunned. He smiled and said, It's a bit hard to understand when big shots like you speak. Then, he took out a business card from his pocket and respectfully handed it to Achiatunin. I'm in the business of medicinal herbs. The origin is directly in the fire capital. If your family needs it, you can send someone to take a look. The price is negotiable. Although this person basically wouldn't have any dealings with him in the future, he still had to have at least respect. Achiha Tunin nodded slightly and took the business card out of courtesy. After glancing at it, he put the business card into the ninja bag. The speed of the steam train was very slow, not much faster than a normal person walking. Achiha Tunin only saw it by chance and came up to take a look. The train in the ninja world had been developed long ago, but it had always been relatively slow and not popular. But from the looks of it now, Naraku seemed to be a good student who concentrated on listening. He had always remembered Achiha Tunin's teachings of wanting to become rich and build roads first. There were not many passengers in the steam train, and 99 of them were merchants and accompanying guards. Their goods were in the carriages behind. The only advantage of the steam train was that the transport was large, and it was better than the traditional horse transportation. Of course, it was useless for ninjas. A jinin carrying a storage scroll was faster than any other way of transportation. Suddenly, a white pigeon flew in from outside the window and landed on Achiha Tunin's drawing board. Coo! Achiha Tunin reached out and patted the white pigeon gently. He smiled and said, there is no need to remind me of such a small matter. The white pigeon flapped its wings as if it was protesting that Achiha Tunin was not treated well. Finally, it turned its head and jumped onto the table. It picked up a candy from a little girl and flew out of the window. Achiha Tunin saw the little girl looking at him with innocent big eyes, looking like she wanted to cry but did not dare to. He immediately gave the little girl an apologetic look. Then he activated the wind whisper. He heard the roar of the train, the conversation of the passengers, the sound of the wind, the sound of insects crawling, a series of running sounds. It seems that there is a little trouble. Achiha Tunin gently put down the drawing board and shook his head with a smile. At this moment, the iron gate in front of the carriage was opened, and the conductor, who was wearing special clothes, said with a serious face. All alert, there is suspected to be a wandering ninja blocking the way. Achiha Tunin raised his eyebrows slightly. He had never thought that this guy would actually come to open the train. Damn it! How did I encounter such a thing? What should I do? Can we defeat them? This batch of goods, I bet everything on it. Achiha Tunin looked at the panic-stricken faces of the passengers and could not help but rub his chin. He had always maintained a clear sense of self-positioning. He was definitely not the protagonist. If he was right, he should be the biggest villain boss in the whole world in the future. If the whole car knew that there was such a big villain sitting in the car, would they feel safer or more dangerous? Chapter 208 Seeing Through the Spy At this time, the train gradually moved to the foot of a hill. The hill was green and full of colorful plants, which was pleasing to the eyes. On the rocks and trunks of the railway, a group of wandering ninjas stood on it and watched the train slowly approaching with a sneer. They were not afraid that someone would jump off the train and escape. After all, people died for money and birds died for food. There were a lot of supplies in the car. Most people would probably think that they were lucky and think that they could pass as long as they handed over the cash. As long as the goods were kept, they would not lose anything this time. As for life, that thing was not expensive. When the train arrived in front of the wandering ninja, a group of wandering ninjas jumped up and landed on the top of the train carriage. Act according to the plan. The leader of the wandering ninjas ordered. The group of wandering ninjas nodded their heads, and one by one, they stretched out their hands to the roof of the car and jumped in through the window. However, there were a few guards who were slightly clever and stabbed at the wandering ninjas when they were about to come in. 
However, after all, the guards were only slightly stronger ordinary people. In terms of strength and dexterity, they were not comparable to ninjas who had chakra buffs. This was like an ordinary person meeting Spider-Man, and they were completely not a match for him. The wandering ninja who came in naturally would not be polite, and the guard who had resisted just now casually dealt with it. After killing just two or three people, the people in the carriage were shocked and did not dare to breathe. Uchiha Tenen looked at the wandering ninja who jumped into the carriage one after another and did not seem to have any thoughts of stepping forward. He casually closed the window beside him and happened to block a wandering ninja who was about to jump in. The vagrant ninja fell into the bottom of the car and was immediately swept into the wheel, crushed into blood. Blood splashed and some blood splashed on the window. Stop the car. You dare to refuse? I'll kill you. A series of punches and kicks came from the driver's seat of the train. Two wandering ninjas dragged the badly battered conductor to the carriage where Uchiha Tunin was. Boss, this guy doesn't want to stop the train at all. At this time, the wandering ninjas had already controlled the passengers in the carriage. Seeing the passengers in the carriage obediently sitting in their seats without moving, their faces were full of horror, afraid that they would lose their lives in the next second. The scar-faced ninja turned his head and said in a deep voice, None of us know how to drive this thing. We will deal with him later. He then said to the passengers in the carriage, All of you, don't move. Whoever moves will die. Now, hand over all the valuables you have on you. As soon as he finished speaking, most of the passengers heaved a sigh of relief. It was not a big deal just to get the money on them. The two wandering ninjas began to search for the money and valuables of the travelers. At this time, the middle-aged man in front of him was holding the frightened little girl. He lowered his head and whispered, Ninja, can you beat them? Achiha Tunin was watching this scene with great interest. When he heard the middle-aged man ask him, he immediately said meaningfully, Sure, do you want to see me uphold justice? The middle-aged man seemed to heave a sigh of relief and continued to whisper, just treat it as me entrusting Sir Ninja to take action. No problem. Achiha Tunin spread out his hands, and the smile on his face became even wider. He immediately whistled. Yo, who is it that is still in the mood to whistle under the eyes of us brothers? A wandering ninja had just finished teasing when he heard a bird cry from outside. This voice seemed to contain an impatient mood. Coo! The densely packed black birds rushed into the carriage like a flood, directly pouncing on the wandering ninjas. What is this thing? In the blink of an eye, an unsuspecting wandering ninja was drowned by the black birds. The other wandering ninja reacted a bit faster and raised his long knife to cut the incoming birds. He wanted to try and kill these fierce birds, but it was of no use. Ding! The sound of metal colliding was heard, and the wandering ninja's palm was immediately numb. The scar-faced ninja quickly reminded, Be careful. This is a ninja beast, there are ninjas in the carriage. However, despite the reminder, Achiha Tunin's ninja beast had been transformed by Achiha Tunin's chakra all year round. In an instant, those wandering ninjas were thrown to the ground by the raptors. There was a terrifying tearing sound and wailing sound in the carriage. The ninja who had been standing in the carriage arrogantly just now was now lying in a pool of blood, surrounded by black feathers. Boss, save me! Spare me! The scar-faced ninja raised his long knife and used all his strength to pull at the back of the raptor that was tearing its partner a few times, but the raptor did not even bother to look back at him. In an instant, the black torrent dispersed, and not a single bone was left on the ground, leaving only a few bloodstains that were almost licked. At this moment, Achiha Tinan stuck his head out of the aisle and called out, Friend, please come over. If you come over, I won't kill you. Gulp. The scar-faced ninja swallowed his saliva and nodded subconsciously. He walked shakily towards Achiha Tinan. At this time, the conductor finally discovered Achiha Tunin. His face revealed a pleasantly surprised expression as he muttered, Lord Tunin. When the scar-faced ninja arrived in front of Achiha Tunin, his entire body was already drenched in sweat. His face was deathly pale as he said, 
sir, what instructions do you have? How could the scar-faced ninja not know that this time, he had met a ruthless person and was extremely afraid? Uchiha Tunin pointed at the family of three opposite him and said, Do you know them? I don't. The scar-faced man glanced at the trembling family of three and shook his head. Uchiha Tunin nodded thoughtfully and said, Well, if you kill them, I will let you go. For some reason, the scar-faced ninja hesitated and forced a smile. My lord, we only rob money and not kill people. Uchiha Tunin chuckled and his expression instantly became cold. Why are you pretending in front of me? With a flick of his finger, an air pill pierced through the forehead of the scar-faced ninja. Uh. The scar-faced ninja's corpse fell straight onto the table in front of Uchiha Tunin. The woman and the little girl screamed in fear. The middle-aged man said with an ugly expression, Sir Ninja, how did our family offend you? Please forgive us. Uchiha Tunin leaned forward slightly, rested his elbows on the table, looked directly at the middle-aged man and said, When you gave me a business card before, why were you grabbing it in your pocket? I'm looking for a business card. So long? My thigh is itchy. Don't you know that most of the herbs in this season haven't been harvested yet? It's a lot of profit. I really can't do anything to you. Uchiha Tunin smiled and shook his head. Then, he reached out and pinched the little girl's face. Then, he flicked his finger. Ding! A small hole popped up on the little girl's face, revealing the metal inside. The atmosphere in the carriage suddenly fell silent. The couple in front of them were obviously tense and ready to attack at any time, but they were afraid of something. Uchiha Tunin pointed at the little girl in surprise and said, You are so good at making up stories. Do you want to say that this thing is a Kagutsa doll that you imported from the wind country? Puchi. As soon as he finished speaking, he saw a blade piercing through the woman's heart from behind the seat. The person who had attacked was the conductor, the one who had been advised by Uchiha Tunin at the fire temple, Guangui Feng. After Guangu made a move, the middle-aged man acted like a frightened bird and moved his hand towards Uchiha Tunin. The middle-aged man clenched his left hand. The little girl's mouth suddenly split open, and a dense amount of bitterness shot out from her mouth, attacking Uchiha Tunin's face. Uchiha Tunin's expression did not change. He gently pinched the first kanai with his two fingers and then pushed the follow-up kanai away precisely. Ding ding ding! Finally, he flicked his wrist, and the kanai instantly penetrated the little girl's head and nailed her to the seat. Die! At this moment, the middle-aged man's right fist was less than an inch away from Uchiha Tunin's face. Uchiha Tunin raised his arm slightly and opened his five fingers. Pa! The man's right fist landed firmly in Uchiha Tunin's palm. Uchiha Tunin slightly raised his eyebrows and murmured, This is... Immortal Arts. Then he slowly increased the strength of his five fingers, and with a bang sound, the man's right fist was pinched into a lump of meat. Uh. Ah. Obviously, this man was not a tough man. He had lost the ability to resist in the intense pain. Uchiha Tunin's eyes slightly widened, revealing three Tomo Sharingan. He cast a hell's eye on the middle-aged man. After a moment, the middle-aged man's eyes widened, his breath cut off, and he fell on the ground. From the illusion just now, Uchiha Tunin had already obtained the information he wanted. This middle-aged man was Chunin from the fire capital, mainly doing spy missions like spying and assassination. Uchiha Tunin immediately got up and took out a note from the middle-aged man's pocket. There was nothing written on the note. Uchiha Tunin searched the note and found the sticky part smoothly. He tore the note into two pieces. It was this note that was made of two sticky notes. The side of the sticky note had a special rune drawn on it. On this note, if you use your fingers to write, it will be displayed on a scroll in another place. There is a certain distance limit, about several hundred miles. Obviously, this man came to spy on Uchiha Tunin. And those wandering ninjas were just the victims behind the scenes who used them to test Uchiha Tunin's strength. Uchiha Tunin put the note into his storage bag with a clear conscience. 
Things like rumor rays were related to rare knowledge and could be studied when there was nothing to do. Guan Guifeng came to Uchiha Tunin's side and said respectfully, Lord Tunin, I didn't think that I would be able to see you here. Uchiha Tunin turned around and observed the passengers in the carriage. Through the ability of rolling his eyes, he confirmed that there was no chakra flowing in their bodies. Then he patted Guan Guifeng on the shoulder and said, You are very good. I didn't expect that the once down and out man became a machinist now. Guan Guifeng was flattered and said, Do you need me to help you deal with it? Uchiha Tunin nodded and returned to his seat. He said, Sorry to trouble you. If there was a cup of hot tea, then it would be even better. There is, there is. Guan Guifeng swiftly carried the corpse to the connecting point of the carriage and threw it away. He did not know where he got a pot of tea for Uchiha Tunin. After respectfully greeting him, he tactfully did not disturb him and went to the driver's seat to control the train. A seemingly dangerous hijacking had ended just like that. The passengers in the carriage were all ordinary people. After seeing Uchiha Tunin's ruthlessness, they did not even dare to breathe loudly. How could they dare to approach him? Uchiha Tunin was naturally happy to be idle. Looking at the scenery outside the window, he took a sip of tea and picked up the drawing board to start writing again. It's like a dragon's lair or a tiger's den. Aren't you afraid of scaring me away? Chapter 209 Tyrant At this time, in the underground palace under the daimyo mansion of the fire capital. The underground palace was like a football field with three floors. The lowest floor was full of various instruments of torture, and there was a round table in the middle with a chair in the middle. Naraku sat on this chair, with the head of the guard mansion in his right hand, and Yamamoto Takao in his left. At the edge of the stage, the twelve guardians sat cross-legged, facing the prisoner, protecting Naraku in the middle. On the second floor of the stands, the guards of the daimyo mansion and the death warriors trained by the famous mansion were all sitting cross-legged. On the third floor of the stands, there were numerous guards under the jurisdiction of the guard mansion. On the lowest floor of the stage, the disciplinary minister Yamamoto read in the book, Nobuo Yuro, who accepted bribes from the enemy country, sold contraband in private, committed a crime against the country, and was punished with thousands of cuts according to the new law. A middle-aged man knelt down below the stage. After hearing Yamamoto Takao's judgment of him, he immediately pleaded like a mad demon. My lord! I only sold some food, I did not commit treason. The man's hand trembled crazily, and he could not control his voice. His eyes were wide open. His eyeballs were covered in red blood, and there was a circle of gray marks around his eyes. It looked like he had not had a good rest for a long time. However, Naraku, who was closing his eyes and pretending to be asleep, waved her hand impatiently. The next moment, the middle-aged man was dragged to the torture device and tied up. You are so brutal. You will die a horrible death. The kingdom of fire will be buried in your hands by late. As soon as the words fell, the middle-aged man was skillfully used iron pliers to pull out his tongue so as not to harass the daimyo. The people above had long been accustomed to this, and there was no sympathy in their eyes, all of them looking at each other coldly. Naraku slowly opened his eyes and sat cross-legged. His hands made a special gesture, and he said to Yamamoto Takao, This is the last one, right? Yamamoto Takao immediately kneeled respectfully on the ground. He bowed his head and said, Reporting to my lord, there are only eighty-six criminals in this batch. Naraku chuckled and nodded. It seems that the new law has been implemented well. Carry on with the execution. Yamamoto Takao immediately stood up and ordered the executioner, carry on with the execution. Because it was underground, the temperature in the underground palace was lower than the ground. It was unknown where the cold wind came from, but it made many people shiver. As Yamamoto Takao finished speaking, the prisoners under the stage began to suffer the inhumane torture. There were cannon marks, snake bites, oil pots, and tens of thousands of knives. There was a drop of water torture in the gentler part, and there was also an additional torture, pasted on the face with wet paper, one by one, it was suffocating. Hmm. 
Without exception, all the prisoners had their tongues pulled out and they could only wail and struggle in pain. Only the tears of unwillingness fell from the corners of their eyes and fell on the cold ground. Under the torture, the emotions of the prisoners reached the peak of their lives. But as the torture continued, the prisoners breathed their last one after another. The moment they died, their spirits went from high to deathly silent, and a great power of emotion surged out from them. This power of emotion would be first absorbed by Neraku and the others. Those that could not be absorbed in a short period of time would be absorbed by the people on the second and third levels. It was obvious that after Neraku sent people to ask for the cultivation method of the celestial clan of the Fire Temple, she thought of this kind of unorthodox method to cultivate immortal arts. After tasting the taste of power, the new law that Neraku executed became more and more harsh. There was almost no punishment like detaining, only judging the severity of the crime to what degree of torture the prisoner had to suffer. Half an hour later, Neraku felt that the surrounding emotional force was gone, and then he reluctantly opened his hands. He clenched her fists, and a look of infatuation appeared on his face as she muttered, Strength always makes people lose themselves in it. Fukuwa. Your subordinate is here. Who hasn't arrived yet? My lord, only Kanoha's players are not here. When Neraku heard this, a cold light flashed in his eyes. He said slowly, Still on my train? Fukuwa said in a deep voice, Yes, he will probably arrive at noon tomorrow. A malicious smile flashed across Neraku's lips. No matter what, he is representing our country of fire. Go welcome him on my behalf. Don't lose my face. With that, he stared at the people under the stage and narrowed his eyes. Yes, sir. After going up to the river, Neraku placed his hands on the armrest and slowly stood up. Talong. Yamamoto Takao immediately knelt on the ground and bowed his head. What instructions does the Lord have? Neraku tapped his finger on the armrest and said, Add another rule on the new law, the crime of deceiving the Lord. Yamamoto Takao said in a deep voice, I wonder what kind of punishment the Lord is going to arrange for this crime. Neraku frowned slightly when he heard this. He reached out and rubbed her temples. After thinking for a long time, he sneered and said, I can't think of any more interesting torture at the moment. Just write an unpardonable crime. Yes. The next day, at noon. Clang, clang, clang. In the station of Fire Capital, a group of bare-armed workers was holding a shovel and opening up a new line. Dirty. A worker straightened up and looked in the direction of the whistling sound. He saw a black steam train slowly approaching the station. At a rough glance, the front of the train seemed to give people a ferocious feeling, like a beast. The sky was originally clear, but behind the train, endless dark clouds appeared, like a dark gray curtain, spreading towards the capital of fire. Looks like it's going to rain. The worker couldn't help but mutter. All of you, go back and rest. The station is temporarily under martial law. Along with a dignified and deep shout, a group of city guards dressed in standard clothing and carrying long sabers drove the workers away, guarding every corner of the station. At this time, a middle-aged man with white hair rode a brown horse and arrived at the platform under the lead of several attendants. The middle-aged man was Uchiha Tunin's immediate superior when he was working in the fire capital, the head of the guard mansion, Ukawa. Ukawa narrowed his eyes and stared at the train coming towards him with a malicious gaze. No one knew what he was thinking in his heart. When the train arrived at the station and had not completely stopped, Ukawa spoke loudly. Welcome to Kanoha's Chunin, Achiha Tunin, to participate in the five countries' honor. Fight for the honor of the fire country. As soon as he finished speaking, hundreds of guards in the station straightened their chests and shouted in unison, to fight for the honor of the country of fire. To fight for the honor of the country of fire. To fight for the honor of the country of fire. In the carriage, Achiha Tunin's ears moved slightly, his eyes turned scarlet, and the three jade hooks slowly circulated. His line of sight passed through the drawing board, the seat in the carriage, and the driver's seat in front of him, and he saw the scene at the station. Achiha Tunin subconsciously narrowed his eyes, and the picture was gradually enlarged. 
His pupils reflected the figure of Ukawa. Then, the corners of his mouth curved slightly, and he slapped the drawing board on the table. He picked up the tea that was still warm and took a sip, muttering, Awesome! Chapter 210 Behind the Scene As soon as the train arrived at the station, Achiha Tunin took off his cap and threw it on the table. He took out the Kanoha forehead guard from his ninja backpack and put it on his forehead. He stood up and stood in front of the carriage door. Guan Guifeng opened the door to the driver's seat. He looked at Achiha Tunin and said, Lord Tunin, be careful. I will pick you up when the time comes. Achiha Tunin nodded slightly. Chi. Thick steam suddenly came out from the top of the train. The whole car seemed to be discouraged and stopped by the platform. Achiha Tunin got off the car with an indifferent face and stood in front of the river. On his horse, Ukawa looked down at Achiha Tunin with no intention of getting off his horse to greet him. How have you been, the first genius of Kanoha? Because of the height, if Achiha Tunin wanted to talk to him, he had to look up at him. This was the effect that Ukawa wanted. He did this to let the daimyo behind him know, and he would feel better. Making Achiha Tunin embarrassed was equivalent to making him famous, and being famous was equivalent to being valued. Achiha Tunin did not raise his head, but looked at the brown horse in front of him with a calm expression. The next moment, the pupils of the horse shrank, and it immediately foamed at the mouth and fell to the ground. The moment before the horse fell to the ground, Ukua rolled over and landed firmly on the ground. He glared at Achiha Tunin and said, You. Achiha Tunin's eyes were slightly strange, as if he was looking at a fool. I am a ninja, not an official. Don't mess with me. Aren't you afraid that I will turn around and go back to Kanoha? I can go back alive. But if you go back, can you still be alive? When Ukawa heard this, it choked up. Although the anger in his heart rose, he had to admit that what Achiha Tunin said was right. With the people he brought now, if Achiha Tunin turned around and left, they really couldn't stop him. When he returned to report, he might really lose his life. He immediately suppressed the anger in his heart and took a deep breath. My lord has already prepared a residence for you. Please follow me. After saying that, he turned around and left. Achiha Tunin chuckled. He was too lazy to argue with this reckless man who controlled the violence of the capital all year round. He immediately followed. It had been three years since he left Fire Capital last time. This time, when he stepped into Fire Capital again, he found that Fire Capital had changed greatly. The entire city was expanded. With the city walls as the boundary, the former capital city was the inner city. A new city wall was built on the edge of the town outside the city, and it was divided into the outer city. The road was several times wider, and pine trees were planted on both sides, as the boundary between the pedestrians and the carriages. Many strange shops appeared in the capital of fire. This also proved that the people here lived much richer than before. After all, they were full of thoughts. Looking at this group of city guards, each of them was full of energy, and their military discipline was strict. The city guards that Achiha Tunin took over were completely incomparable. At that time, the city guards were all walking casually, no different from ghosts entering the village. After Ukawa was defeated at the platform, he no longer had the mood to talk to Achiha Tunin. Soon, under the surveillance of a group of city guards, Achiha Tunin arrived at a large house. Ukawa said with a cold face, the day after tomorrow, we will go to the arena to start the competition. Don't run around for the next two days. The capital of fire is not too peaceful, don't make things difficult for me. Achiha Tunin smiled and said softly, naturally, I won't cause any trouble for Master Ukawa. Please. Ukawa extended his hand and gestured. The two city guards immediately ran to the front door of the house and opened it. Achiha Tunin walked in expressionlessly. Ukawa looked at Achiha Tunin's back as he walked into the house and narrowed his eyes. Let's see how long you can be arrogant. The two city guards closed the door again and stood on both sides. Ukawa looked around and ordered in a low voice, You guys stay here and guard. No one is allowed to enter or leave. 
Yes. The city guards immediately shouted and surrounded the mansion. Ukua turned around and walked towards the mansion. In the mansion. Naraku was soaked in a dark green potion, and his face trembled from time to time. It seemed that she was not feeling good. The maids beside him brought over a bowl of soup and offered it with both hands. My lord, the medicine has been prepared. Do you want to add some honey? Naraku raised his head and closed his eyes as she muttered. No, it's a bitter medicine. The bitter medicine is the best. Besides, this medicine is not as bitter as the pain in my heart. After saying that, he reached out to take the medicine and drank it all in one gulp. The moment he took the medicine, Naraku's face became extremely ugly and the sweat on his forehead gurgled out. But he forced himself not to say a word. At this time, Ukua arrived outside the curtain and did not speak. He just quietly knelt down on one knee. After a long time, Naraku let out a long sigh of relief. He raised his hands and slightly clenched them. A satisfied expression appeared on her face as she said, Have you arranged it? Yes, Achiha Tunin has already moved in. Ukua said in a deep voice, Very good, regardless of whether the information is accurate or not, regardless of whether he is the person I am looking for. At the very least, he can fight against the three ninjas, and he is now the strongest in Kanoha. Suddenly, Naraku raised his eyebrows and asked, This season, is it already over the time to grow seedlings? How is our planting this year? Yes, according to the information, Ukua said in a low voice. The crop farming area of the four countries this year is less than half of the previous year. Almost all of them planted cash crops under the lure of sky-high profits. Naraku chuckled. How much food have we accumulated? It's enough for the fire country to eat for a few years. Ukawa counted in his heart and replied, at least twenty years. Naraku twisted his neck and opened his mouth to eat a grape that the maid had fed him. As he chewed, he said, Enough, it's completely enough. In twenty years, the entire ninja realm is already mine. De Kong, there's a thorn stuck in my throat. I can't swallow it, I can't spit it out. What do you think I should do? Ukawa was slightly stunned. He thought seriously and said, This. If this subordinate encounters this kind of situation, I'd swallow it by force. Naraku took a deep breath and shook his head helplessly. I've already advised you to read more books. Being uncultured is a more terrifying thing than having no strength. This is a metaphor, not a thorn, but Kanoha. Ukawa immediately understood and said, This subordinate understands. The wooden leaf is stuck in the Lord's throat. We have to pull it out. Naraku sighed and said slowly, Ninja Village should never exist. Now that everything is ready, we can start the war. Kanoha has no white fang, no three ninjas, as long as we get rid of Uchiha Tunin. Kanoha basically has no high-end fighting force. When the war begins, we will sit on the mountain and watch the tigers fight. Even if a skinny camel is bigger than a horse, Kanoha will still be greatly injured. When the time comes, we will take the opportunity to take over Kanoha and then slowly annex the other big countries. Ukawa suddenly lowered his head and shouted, Lord is wise. Naraku waved his hand and said, Go, pass my orders to the finance minister. Immediately push out new currency, the exchange ratio is 1 to 10,000. The strategic resources of the famous mansion can only be purchased with new currency. Stop purchasing the economic crops of other countries. In addition, inform the guards to prepare for the battle. This subordinate obeys. Ukua responded in a low voice, then got up and walked outside. After a long time, Naraku's low voice sounded from the curtain. I just don't know how long Kanoha can last. If the ninjas of the four countries can push the battle line to the vicinity of Kanoha, that would be great. When the fire capital sends out their 20,000 troops, they might even be killed. In this case, in less than five years, the ninja realm will be mine. Ha ha. Ah. Ha. Who is it? Naraku, 
who was laughing wildly, suddenly closed his hands without hesitation. Immortal Technique, Rock Dragon Technique Rumble In the Daimyo Mansion, a stone dragon soared into the sky and rushed into the dark clouds, swallowing a white pigeon hiding in the dark clouds. Schwa, schwa, schwa. In an instant, six guardians appeared outside the curtain, all kneeling on one knee with fear on their faces. Lord, please forgive me. In this critical period, you need to be more alert. There will be no next time. In the dark curtain, the cold voice of Naraku sounded. The six guardians heaved a sigh of relief. At this time, Achiha Tunin, who was drinking tea in the courtyard, suddenly raised his eyebrows, and a trace of surprise flashed in his eyes. He could even detect a peep from thousands of meters up in the sky. Moreover, he could kill his own white pigeon in an instant. One had to know that his white pigeon had long been like metal and was invulnerable. But in a moment, he was crushed into meat paste by the enormous pressure. Moreover, he had yet to control the white pigeon to open the white eye insight, yet he was actually able to be detected. This strength and alertness. An expert. Chapter 211, 2000 Jinnins. He thought that there were experts guarding the Daimyo Mansion. Therefore, Achiha Tunin gave up on using white doves and Byakugan to spy for information. The eyes were very strange. There was clearly no chakra fluctuation. But for experts, they would always have an instinctive sense of vigilance. Perhaps, it was because the level of the supercilious look was too low. Thinking of this, Achiha Tunin immediately took a sip of tea, lay on the rocking chair, and closed his eyes to rest. It seemed that he was basking in the sun, but in fact, he was secretly launching a rumor to inquire about the nearby intelligence. However, there was no harvest after a whole day. It was as if all the residents nearby had been moved away. The next day. Early in the morning, Achiha Tunin came to the courtyard and lay on the rocking chair, continuing to listen. At the same time, the house of Ueda Nabutake, the contestant from Hidden Cloud Village. Ueda Nabutake was 16 years old this year. He was Chunin of Hidden Cloud Village, but his strength had already reached Jounin's level. The only thing lacking was that his mission volume had not met the requirements. It just so happened that this honorary Chunin competition was of great importance to all countries. Because Naraku had promised that the champion reward was a large amount of resources for free. At this time, however, Ueda Nabutake was frowning and writing information on the scroll. He muttered, No matter how I look at it, this place feels strange. It is clearly just an ordinary city guard, but it can make me feel some pressure. After writing, he closed the scroll and then used the summoning spell to summon a lizard. Give the scroll to the village. Tunin saw Ueda Nabutake put the scroll into the lizard's open mouth. At this moment, somewhere in the underground palace, two guardian ninjas sitting cross-legged on the huge formation opened their eyes at the same time. How dare you! You go, I'll go. I'll go. The next moment, one of the guardian ninjas used the instant movement technique and disappeared. At this time, Ueda Nabutake had just removed the summoning technique and came to the window to take a look outside. From time to time, he saw city guards patrolling the nearby roofs. Ueda Nabutake frowned and thought to himself, looks like I have to go out and take a look. After thinking about it, Ueda Nabutake pushed open the door and walked out of the courtyard. Squeak! The moment the courtyard door opened, the city guards stationed at the entrance all looked over. Two of the city guards stood in front of Ueda Nabutake. One of them said in a deep voice, The Daimyo has given orders to ensure the safety of the participants. The participants are not allowed to go out before the competition. If you need anything, you can tell us. I came all the way here to see the glory of Fire Capital. If you don't trust me, you can send more people to follow me. Ueda Nabutake said, the city guard said with a firm expression, No. Seeing that he had already said this, however, he was still rejected by a small city guard. Immediately, a look of annoyance appeared on his face, I am here on behalf of the Kingdom of Thunder, not a criminal. You do not have the right to imprison me. 
The city guard continued to act impartially. Please go back. Do not make things difficult for us. Get out of the way. Ueda Nabutake took a step forward, grabbed the guard's shoulder, and pushed him away. Stop him. A city guard shouted. In the next moment, all the city guards rushed towards him. Humph. Ueda Nabutake coldly snorted and threw a punch at a city guard in front of him. After all, these city guards looked like ordinary people. If they had a carrot, it was very likely that they would die. This was the capital of fire, and Ueda Nabutake was still a lot more restrained. Seeing this, the city guard on the opposite side also punched out. However, the city guard used all of his strength in this punch, and his fist still contained a thin immortal technique chakra. Bang! After the two people's fists collided, they actually retreated a similar distance. Tanaka believed that his physical skills were far superior to that of ordinary people. He didn't expect that he would be able to compete with an ordinary city guard today. He immediately said with a face of disbelief, Damn it. Seeing more and more city guards gathered around him, his expression immediately became serious. He jumped high into the air, and his body burst out with dazzling lightning. Get out of the way! Lightning style, heavy stream. Impudent! A loud shout suddenly rang out from the distance. Suddenly, a huge splash of water bloomed on the ground below Ueda Nabutake. The splash was like a man-eating flower that swallowed Ueda Nabutake in one gulp. The knowledge of water being able to conduct electricity was something that Ueda Nabutake was still able to understand. The instant he was swallowed by the water, he removed his ninjutsu. The next moment, the water flower turned into a water ball. No matter how Ueda Nabutake struggled or released his chakra, he was trapped inside. At this time, all the city guards made way. They saw a man with black hair and white eyebrows pass through the crowd and come to the front of the water ball. He crossed his arms and said, This is the capital of fire. If you come here, you have to follow the rules. If you still dare to send information privately in the capital of fire or disturb the order, then I will follow my lord's orders and execute you on the spot. If you understand, blink. If you don't understand, I will kill you right now. If it was just an ordinary water prison technique, he only needed to release his chakra before the water prison was completely formed. But this water prison seemed a bit strange, the water inside actually contained a special kind of toughness. This was something that he had never seen before. Ueda Nabutake, who was about to suffocate, crazily blinked his eyes. Humph! The black-haired, white-browed man coldly snorted, then snapped his fingers and released the ninjutsu. The water prison dispersed. The moment the water came into contact with the ground, it sank into the ground. It was as if the ground was not paved with bricks but a piece of sponge. Huff, huff. Ueda Nabutake knelt on the ground with his hands on the ground and greedily breathed in the air. His eyes were full of anger. You have violated the diplomatic principle by doing this. The black-haired, white-browed man lowered his eyes and said slowly, You are free to report this to your rakage. In addition, I will tell you clearly. Even if you are in the room, your every move is under our watch. Don't try to play any tricks. Now, get back. Hearing this, Ueda Nabutake only felt anger stuck in his chest. He said angrily, you. Okay, I will remember it. After that, he stood up unsteadily and turned to walk toward the house. At the same time, Achiha Tunin, who was resting in the courtyard, slowly opened his eyes. He touched his chin and muttered, That's not right. The conflict hasn't even happened yet. Why has this guy already set off? He should have known the news beforehand. Otherwise, he wouldn't have arrived so quickly. What exactly is hidden in the Daimyo Mansion? In the next moment, Achiha Tunin's eyes turned three times, and he raised his head to look at the sky. Suddenly, Achiha Tunin narrowed his eyes and found that the entire sky above the fire capital was filled with thin and special chakra. This kind of chakra was extremely familiar to Achiha Tunin. This is Kanoha's Barrier. 
This is the highest secret of Kanoha. Where did Naraku get it from? Suddenly, two figures flashed in Uchiha Tunin's mind, Orochimaru and Danzo. It seems that I underestimated the temptation of money. Things are getting more and more interesting. Honorary Chunin competition, showing off the strength of the country? What kind of joke was this? Naraku was not such a person. At this time, in the deepest part of the underground palace. This place was like an underground city. The edge of the city was a steel wall. The walls were covered in seal runes to isolate the aura and sound. The people living here were not commoners, but soldiers that Naraku had privately nurtured. Naraku followed the group of guardians down to a stand above the underground city. He looked down at the densely packed soldiers who were sitting cross-legged in the middle of the underground city square and practicing hand seals. He narrowed his eyes and said in a low voice, How long will it take to develop the improved version of the chakra potion? A guardian ninja behind him bowed and said, my lord, ever since Orochimaru died, our progress has almost stopped. Naraku touched her chin and said slowly, The chakra potion is too precious. If we don't develop a modified product, even if we control most of the wealth in the world, we can't popularize it. I have to find a way to speed up the progress. After tomorrow, you guys will secretly search for researchers. Yes, sir. How many people have reached the level of Jinnin now? Just a little over two thousand. Naraku placed both of her hands on the railing and crushed it with his bare hand. The iron railing was instantly deformed. Two, zero, zero, zero. Fifty thousand people cultivated day and night. There were thirty thousand people who could cultivate chakra. However, only two thousand people had the strength of Jinnin after such a long time. This is the result of me overdrawing the world's wealth for dozens of years in advance in exchange for a huge amount of resources. It seems that the gap in bloodline talent is more difficult to break through than I imagined. Tomorrow, bring these 2,000 people around the arena, just in case. Yes, sir. Chapter 212, Scheme to Defeat Tunin The next day. Early in the morning, Achiha Tunin went to the arena under the protection of a group of city guards. At this time, Achiha Tunin learned that the venue of the honorary Chunin competition was not in the city but outside the city. Coincidentally, the address was in Mount Jifu. In the past few days, fire capital had always been cloudy. At this time, dark clouds were pressing down on the top of the sky, and the sky was gray, giving people an extremely oppressive feeling. Soon, Achiha Tunin arrived outside the arena. The cliff that Abakira once lived on had been transformed into a tilted step, and the arena was at the top of the step. There were soldiers standing on both sides of the steps and around the stands, all of them in high spirits and motionless. The valley had been transformed into a huge venue for the competition. It was completely surrounded by tall walls, like a city wall. There were soldiers with long sabers hanging from their waists. Perhaps it was because Achiha Tunin did not know much about the aesthetics of the people of the fire capital. There were dozens of meters tall stone pillars standing all over Mount Jifu. Each stone sculpture seemed to have been crafted by a craftsman, and the patterns were different. Under the arrangements of the city guards, Achiha Tunin walked through the small door at the bottom of the arena. After passing through the dark passage, he successfully arrived at the arena. At this time, the other four contestants were already standing in the other four directions of the arena. When the four of them saw Achiha Tunin arrive, their eyes were filled with hostility. However, Achiha Tunin was not interested in them at all. He turned his gaze to the top of the stairs. Gradually, the figure of Ukawa appeared above the stairs. Ukawa took a deep breath and knelt on one knee on the ground. He said in a clear voice, the contestants are already in position. Welcome, Your Highness. As soon as he finished speaking, a group of dancers began to dance on the square above the steps. The musicians also began to beat and play instruments, and the sound of music rang out. And all the soldiers present were on one knee. With a fanatical look in their eyes, they shouted in unison. Welcome, Your Highness. Welcome, Your Highness. Welcome, your Highness. 
The voices were loud and uniform. Fanatical shouts resounded throughout Mount Jifu. At this time, Neraku was followed by the twelve guardians and walked up the steps step by step. After ten minutes, Neraku stood in the square and slowly turned around. Her malicious eyes stared at Uchiha Tunin below. The two looked at each other for several seconds. At this time, the shouts and music stopped. A meaningful smile flashed across Neraku's lips. She raised her left hand and pointed a few times, Don't stop, continue playing, continue dancing. The music sounded again. Neraku also turned around and went to the highest seat in the stands to sit down. The twelve guardians, on the other hand, protected Neraku in a semicircle. Achiha Tunin's expression remained unchanged, but he was secretly calculating in his heart. It seemed that something was going to happen today. It was a grand and glorious Chunin competition, but there was not a single outsider watching it. Moreover, after Uchiha Tunin left the city, he found that the enchantment of the fire capital had been completely activated, and the scope had expanded, covering the outer city. If he guessed correctly, even if there was a landslide outside the enchantment, the residents of the fire capital could not detect it at all. What are you trying to do? If you want to kill me, do you need to take so many detours? Even if you are worried that you will hurt the innocent residents in the fire capital, you can kill me halfway when I am still on the train. At this time, Achiha Tenen also could not figure out what Naraku was going to do. In public, it was not good to observe directly. Nair sat in his seat with a strange smile on his face. He said slowly, Today is a big day. This weather makes me dislike it. It's too stuffy. This subordinate understands. The two guardian ninjas behind him immediately bowed their heads and answered, then came to the side of Naraku. The three of them quietly looked at each other and nodded in tacit understanding. The same frequency was to form seals. Immortal technique, air blast spell. The three of them raised their heads and simultaneously shot three air bombs into the sky, shooting into the dark clouds. A moment later, the dark clouds in the sky suddenly surged. The gray sky was like a stone that fell into a calm lake, causing ripples in the air. Suddenly, the dark clouds seemed to be frightened and scattered in all directions, revealing the vast blue sky. Rumble! At this time, everyone present heard a shocking explosion. After the explosion, a fierce wind whistled over, raising dust and dust, flying sand and stones, and the mountain forest roaring. The strong wind blew the big tree to the side, and the leaves struggled and rolled in the wind. Naraku's long hair flew up, and she stretched out her hand to stop the guardian ninja who wanted to release ninjutsu to block the wind, and a carefree smile appeared on her face. Her eyes once again moved to Uchiha Tunin. A moment later, the wind stopped. Naraku opened her hands and stared at the arena below. You are all the top players of various countries, Chunin. I welcome you to participate in the honorary Chunin competition held by the Fire Country. The players from Hidden Sand Village had a strange expression on their faces. The daimyo name of the Fire Country is too strange. How dare you! A white-haired guardian shouted angrily and immediately formed a seal. The next moment, a tilted stone stick suddenly appeared in front of the sand-hidden village player and slammed him into the wall of the arena. Uh. Puff, the sand village player had a shocked expression on his face as he spat out a mouthful of blood. Scarlet blood flowed onto the stone rod and spread out. Naraku didn't even look at the sand village player as he leisurely said. When I speak, I don't like others interrupting. Since you are not a member of the fire country, I will spare your life. As soon as he finished speaking, the old guardian released the ninjutsu and put the sand hidden village player down. Naraku slowly got up and walked forward with her hands behind her back. As she walked, she said loudly, My fire country has a lot of land and is prosperous and rich. Kanoha is the leader of the five big countries. Kanoha is the strongest village in the world. And him. Suddenly, Naraku pointed at Uchiha Tunin, and everyone's eyes moved to him. Uchiha Tunin's expression did not change as he quietly looked at Naraku. Kanoha's number one genius, 
Achihatinen. However, I don't think this title is worthy of him. He personally killed Orochimaru and defeated Tsunade. The pupils of the four contestants shrank when they heard this, and they stared at Achihatunin in disbelief. What? If that's the case, what kind of Chunin is this guy? A meaningful smile appeared on Nara's face as he continued. Kanoha Sanin, he defeated too. I think he can be called the number one genius in the world of Jounin. So to be fair, today's game was divided into two camps. One was Kanoha, and the other was Other. Which camp's players died first means that the other camp won. As soon as his voice fell, the four countries on the field slowly moved their feet and gradually approached each other. At the same time, they were on guard against Achiha Tunin, looking as if they were facing a great enemy. Chapter 213 Interrogation Seeing this, a satisfied smile appeared on Neraku's face. He turned around and sat down in his seat, gently waving his hand. The maids carried a short table full of fruits and wine to Neraku and put it down. Neraku picked up the wine glass on the table, put it to his mouth, and said slowly, let's begin. With that, he finished the wine in one gulp. As the wine entered his throat, Neraku's eyes suddenly narrowed. At this moment, a guardian ninja beside him lowered his head and whispered, my lord, it's over. Neraku put down the wine glass with an unhappy expression. In the arena, the four players surrounded Achiha Tunin and he was slowly putting Kuzanaji's sword back into the sheath. Neraku tapped his finger on the table and gestured for the maid beside him to pour wine. He muttered, What a disappointment, what a disappointment. The guardian ninja beside him whispered, My lord, shall we? Neraku reached out and interrupted the guardian ninja. She said slowly, Take your time. I have waited for this day for a long time. Don't let my entertainment be too short. After saying that, Neraku took a deep breath, sat up straight, raised her hand and pointed straight at Achiha Tunin and said in a clear voice, Achiha Tunin, you are very good, very good. Please take a seat, I want to drink with the champion of the competition. Soon, more than a dozen children of six or seven years old carried tables and chairs and wine to Achiha Tunin. Achiha Tunin sat down calmly. At this time, a few children winked at Achiha Tunin crazily and whispered with surprise. Tunin, it's us. Tunin, I miss you so much. Achiha Tunin glanced at them. He nodded slightly without leaving a trace. Then, he lowered his eyes and looked at a child pouring wine for his wine glass. However, while pouring wine, the child whispered with a worried face. Tunin, don't drink it. The wine was pure amber in color, but when it was poured into the cup, there was a bluish-green bubble. Everyone could see that there was a big problem with the wine. At this time, Neraku picked up the glass, and a meaningful smile appeared on her face. Achiha Tunin, do you remember these children? They are the children you adopted before. I guess you must miss them very much, so I asked them to pour you wine. Achiha Tunin lowered his eyes and did not look at Neraku. He bowed honestly and said, Thank you very much, Your Highness. I propose a toast to you. Neraku raised her head and drank all the wine. She did not put down the empty glass and just stared at Achiha Tunin. After a few seconds, he saw that Achiha Tunin had not raised his glass. Neraku had a look of realization on his face, and he said considerately, I forgot that the three taboos of the ninja are not allowed to drink. If you don't want to drink, I won't force you. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard Ukawa shout, Drink! Then, the soldiers around the arena shouted in unison, Drink! 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 Neraku smiled even more. Achiha Tunin seemed to be in a dilemma. His face was extremely ugly and his body was trembling slightly. However, it was unknown whether it was because of anger or fear. After a long time, Achiha Tunin took a deep breath, picked up the wine glass, closed his eyes, and drank it. Seeing Achiha Tunin drink the wine, the soldiers stopped shouting. Neraku's expression also instantly became cold. 
After a long time, Uchiha Tenen finally opened his eyes. With a face full of surprise, he reached out his hands and touched his body as if he was surprised that he was not poisoned. Then, he let out a long sigh of relief and bowed with a face full of surprise. Thank you, your highness, for the wine. Nariku snorted coldly and threw the wine glass to the ground. Pa! The moment the wine cup fell, the children around Uchiha Tenen attacked at the same time. The child who poured the wine condensed an icicle in his palm and stabbed it at Uchiha Tenen's heart. The child who was closer took out the kunai hidden in his sleeve and attacked Uchiha Tenen. The one who was further away took out several swords in his hand. All of this happened in the blink of an eye. Ding, ding, ding. In an instant, the sound of metal clashing rang out. Everyone felt their vision blur. In the blink of an eye, they saw that Uchiha Tunin was still sitting in his seat. He was slowly sheathing his sword, but his expression did not change at all. In the next moment, no matter how close the children were, they all clutched their necks and fell to the ground. Nariku stood up and said in a low voice, You really are a Bakira. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, his slightly angry face immediately turned into a confused expression. Puzzled, he asked, I don't understand what your highness is talking about. The corners of Nariku's mouth curled into a sinister smile. He slowly sat down and leisurely said, I have read your information. You were born in the Uchiha clan, and your parents were ordinary chunin. However, after your parents died, you showed great talent. In just a few years, you were able to fight against Sanin. Uchiha Tunin nodded and said, This is the result of my hard work. Nariku seemed to have heard a big joke. He immediately sneered and said, Hard work? One person only had that much energy. I found several top doctors, and after a few rounds of research, they managed to combine more than ten types of poison into one. Moreover, these ten types of poison are mutually restraining each other, so there won't be any toxicity after drinking it. I ordered someone to put the medicine into your wine. This cup of wine, anyone can see that it is poisonous. If you are not proficient in pharmacology, how can you dare to drink it? The pharmacology is not something that can be learned overnight. The only thing I can think of is my teacher, Aba Kira. Don't say that you, a person who was born in Kanoha since childhood, will give up your heart and obey every word. Of course, if you insist on saying this, I will order you to commit suicide on the spot to prove it. Hearing this, Achiha Tunin was silent for a moment, then sighed. I used to study under Mr. Aba Kira for a period of time. He taught me a lot of knowledge, including pharmacology. Your Highness, you also know that ninjas often carry out assassination missions. So in terms of pharmacology, I put in a lot of effort. Moreover, although I am a ninja, in terms of knowledge, my talent in learning is very high. I have been number one since I was young. When Nariku heard this, he did not believe Uchiha Tunin's words at all. He said slowly, I can say that you are talented. Someone come, it's evidence. At this time, a maid walked into the arena with a stack of clothes, placed the clothes on Uchiha Tunin's table, and then left. Uchiha Tunin touched the clothes and narrowed his eyes. Then, he raised his head and looked at Nariku with a puzzled expression. This is... Nariku leaned forward slightly. He looked down at Uchiha Tunin and said in a deep tone, this is something that was found in the place where they believed to be the house of Abakira. An ordinary outer garment. Uchiha Tunin shook his head. I don't understand what your highness means. A hint of ridicule flashed in Nariku's eyes. He reached out and stroked his chin. Everything seems to be reasonable there. The clothes were all neatly stacked in the wardrobe. But there was only one coat that was not in the wardrobe but in the mud. Chapter 215, What Was Hidden Half an hour ago, in the fire capital. In the house that Uchiha Tunin had arranged before. The enchantment has been activated for so long, and the instant clone is still alive. It seems that it is not as dangerous as I thought. Uchiha Tunin sat cross-legged in front of the short table in the room, took a sip of tea, and slowly put down the teacup. 
Then he got up and went to the window to look around. He heard the bustling sounds of the streets outside. Obviously, the martial law had ended and the surrounding soldiers had been transferred away. In this situation, the experts of the Daimyo Mansion would definitely follow Nariku. As for those ordinary guards, in Uchiha Tunin's eyes, they were no different from defenseless guards. Uchiha Tunin looked in the direction of the Daimyo Mansion and the corners of his mouth slightly curved. Let me see what good things you have found over the years. In the next moment, Uchiha Tunin's eyes turned jade white and he activated the ability of Byakugan. The world in his eyes became red and his sight penetrated layers of walls, looking through the entire Daimyo Mansion. Uchiha Tunin frowned. There was actually nothing strange about it, how could it be? Following that, Uchiha Tunin shifted his gaze downwards. Suddenly, Uchiha Tunin raised his eyebrows, only to find that his vision was blocked by complicated ceiling techniques. So it's underground. It's hidden quite deep. In the next moment, Uchiha Tunin's figure disappeared. Knowing that Nariku would attack him, Uchiha Tunin naturally wouldn't be stupid enough to go and kill him. After all, the entire Kanoha knew that he defeated Orochimaru and Tsunade. There was no reason that Nariku didn't know. Since Nariku knew about his general fighting strength, he even dared to set up such a formation to welcome him. Then he must be prepared. This was a real world, not a hot-blooded anime that revolved around the protagonist's perspective. Achiha Tunin would not underestimate anyone, especially someone who could control Kanoha's forces from a distance in the Fire Capital. During this trip to Fire Capital, Achiha Tunin had seen too many strange things. In particular, the Temple of Fire's immortal arts seemed to have been popularized in the army. This was extremely outrageous. One had to know that he had the assistance of the Jade LG. As long as the living beings in this world were endless, he would be able to absorb enough emotional force to cultivate immortal arts. However, only a few people in the Temple of Fire had successfully cultivated immortal arts. In order to cultivate immortal arts, they had to enlighten their believers day and night to obtain a pitiful amount of emotional force. The emotional force was the greatest threshold of immortal arts cultivation. What method did Nariku use to break this threshold? This piqued Uchiha Tunin's interest. There was one more thing. The feeling he got from Ukawa was very strange. When they met in Fire Temple two years ago, Uchiha Tunin had felt this strange. Now Uchiha Tunin knew that this was a situation where the body was passively refining chakra. It was the same as wearing a radiation necklace. The problem was that there was no sign of aging or death in Ukawa. This was terrifying. The strongest clan with the best chakra talent were Uchiha, Senju, Uzumaki, and Hyuga. These ninja clan were all related to the Atsutsuki. It must be known that the average time for ninjas to refine chakra every day was around an hour, and the efficiency was about the same. The amount of chakra extracted by the Uchiha clan for an hour was about three times that of ordinary ninjas. The Senju and the Uzumaki clan might be even stronger. It had been more than three years since he left the fire capital last time. If Nariku and the others could continuously refine chakra 24 hours a day, then these three years would be equivalent to 72 years of cultivation for ordinary ninjas. It was equivalent to a normal member of the Uchiha clan cultivating for 24 years. Ten minutes later, at the entrance of the treasure vault in the depths of the underground palace, Six soldiers with the strength of Jinan stood motionless at the entrance. All of a sudden, the pupils of the six soldiers dilated as if they had lost their consciousness. They saw white pigeons appear in the air at the entrance, and it was unknown where they had flown and from. These white pigeons gathered together and turned into Uchiha Tunin. Open the door! Uchiha Tunin said lightly. The six soldiers shook their heads and pointed at a mural next to the gate. Uchiha Tunin looked to the side and saw that the mural was painted with a complex sealing spell. Do I need to use a special method to open it? Uchiha Tunin reached out and touched his chin. Unfortunately, other than the general public seal tactics like the storage scroll, Uchiha Tunin did not have any other seal tactics. He immediately gave up on breaking the seal, pulled out Kuzanaji's sword from his back, 
and stabbed it into the tall stone door. Surprisingly, the thickness of the stone door seemed to be a bit beyond imagination, and Kuzanagi's sword did not pierce through. However, Uchiha Tunin was not in a hurry. He used Kuzanagi's sword to open a big hole in the gate. The big hole was glowing with a special metallic luster. Obviously, this was not just a simple stone door. Instead, it was a compound gate made of many layers of hard metal. Uchiha Tunin repeated the same trick. This time, the door was completely opened. Walking into the treasury, even Uchiha Tunin, who considered himself to be experienced and knowledgeable, could not help but be stunned on the spot. The treasury was tens of meters tall, and the rock layers above were inlaid with shiny gems, illuminating the entire treasury. Uchiha Tunin could even see that there were all sorts of sealing techniques drawn on the rock layers above. These seal tactics not only had the effect of isolating aura and spying, but they also had the ability to automatically trigger basic water escape and earth escape tactics. Presumably, these tactics were to prevent disaster like fire. Other than the gemstones on the top of his head, there was no other luxury goods in the treasury, nor was there a single banknote. All kinds of food piled up into a mountain, the kunai, the sword in his hand, the long saber, and other weapons were piled up in a corner. There were also all kinds of medicinal herbs placed together in a bundle. Achiha Tunin took a deep breath and walked inside. Cloth, finished products of clothing, coal, salt, rubber, gold, silver, copper, and other metals. These things were all piled up on both sides of the road, and this road was beyond sight. After walking for a long time, Uchiha Tunin finally reached the end of the treasure vault. This was another door. There was no seal spell pattern beside the door, but an ordinary keyhole. Uchiha Tunin made a seal and pressed his finger against the keyhole. Small streams of water gushed out from his fingers and poured into the keyhole. A moment later, the keyhole seemed to be filled with water. Under the water pressure, the lock was successfully lifted. In the next moment, Achiha Tunin activated the ice escape he had just obtained and condensed the water into hard ice. Then, he gently turned his fingers. Ka! The door was opened by Achiha Tunin. Inside the door was an antique room. There were many bookshelves filled with all kinds of scrolls. In the innermost part of the room stood a huge scroll that was half the height of a person. Achiha Tunin's eyes narrowed and his figure flashed. He appeared next to the scroll. This. Could it be a scroll of the Senju? Chapter 216 The Truth About Naraku Facing the scroll of the legendary god of ninjas, Achiha Tunin couldn't help but feel a little tempted. He immediately sat down cross-legged on the ground and slowly opened the scroll. As the scroll rolled, secret techniques were displayed in front of Achiha Tunin. The beginning was some basic ninjutsu, but it was not very valuable. But gradually, many of the precious secret arts made Achiha Tunin's eyes light up. The immortal race is actually also here. Achiha Tunin's hands paused and he saw this familiar secret art. It was not difficult to guess that the Naraku sent Ukawa to Fire Temple to ask for the scroll of the Senju. To be honest, the disappearance of the Senju clan was very strange, and there was only one Tsunade left in the huge clan. However, the villagers didn't even notice it. Achiha Tunin remembered that in his previous life, someone had guessed that the Senju clan should have dissolved on their own and integrated into the villagers of Kanoha. In this regard, Achiha Tunin felt that it was not completely correct. It was very likely that the Thousand Hand race was not only integrated into the villagers, but also integrated into the various levels of the Kingdom of Fire. Suddenly, Achiha Tunin thought of the last time he saw Ukawa in the Fire Temple. Combined with the fact that the Earth Temple knew both immortal arts and the secret arts of the Senju. Perhaps the Earth Temple was the clansman left by the Senju clan to guard the scroll in the Fire Temple. Achiha Tunin boldly guessed that the Senju clan must have stored the scroll of the Senju in the Fire Temple. And this scroll was taken back by Naraku. Then, Naraku might be related to the Senju clan. Naraku. Senju. Achiha Tunin's eyes gradually narrowed as he recalled the time he spent with Naraku. Finally, 
Achiha Tunin discovered that something was wrong. Naraku's physique was too good. When he was whipped and trained like that, he only had to apply some medicine and rest for a few hours to completely recover. Moreover, he had given him a chakra test paper and a few basic ninjutsu. It didn't take long for him to release ninjutsu to kill his father. This kind of innate physique, wasn't it the Senju clan? Naraku must have a mixed Senju bloodline. Perhaps a certain generation of the Senju clan had a marriage alliance with the current generation. Thinking of this, Achiha Tunin had opened the scroll completely. After roughly looking through the follow-up secret technique, Achiha Tunin immediately found a special secret technique. It was inappropriate to call it a secret technique, but it was a high-level method of using chakra. As everyone knows, the usage of chakra is basically divided into shape changes and nature changes. This secret technique is similar to the sand control technique of Gara. It could change the shape of the chakra according to the mind of the user, and it could affect the corresponding matter. Of course, this technique had a very high requirement for the control and quantity of chakra. Achiha Tunin calmed down and repeatedly watched it several times, memorizing this secret technique in his mind. As for the other secret techniques, most of them were ordinary, not worthy of a high-quality ninja like Achiha Tunin. After reading the secret technique, it was time to take the treasure. This scroll was equivalent to a supersized storage scroll, so there was naturally no need to mention the good things inside. In the original work, during the battle between Hashirama Senju and Uchiha Madara in the final valley, he also summoned a large blade from this scroll. Uchiha Tunin quickly made a series of hand seals and then pressed his right hand on the scroll. Strangely, Uchiha Tunin's right hand seemed to touch the calm surface of the water, and the scroll rippled. And Uchiha Tunin's right hand gradually sank in. A moment later, Uchiha Tunin pulled out his right hand from the scroll, holding a potion in his palm. What is this thing? Achiha Tunin pulled out the stopper and sniffed it. A nauseating stench entered his nose. It was a little intoxicating. Achiha Tunin quickly stuffed the potion into his mouth. He endured the nausea and carefully recalled the contents he had just smelled. The images of all sorts of medicinal herbs flashed through Achiha Tunin's mind. Almost every one of them was extremely precious, and there was no market for them. There were the special products of the ghost kingdom, the eggs of the illusory wing insect, and the black armor bamboo oil, the winter lotus of the snow kingdom, etc. But there were still some things that Achiha Tunin couldn't remember for a moment. After the time it took to brew a cup of tea, Achiha Tunin no longer thought about it and put the medicine back into the scroll. He then closed the scroll, got up, went to the bookshelf, and flipped through the records on the bookshelf. Soon, Achiha Tunin found the records of the medicine from before. When he saw the effectiveness of the chakra potion, Achiha Tunin was truly shocked. But when he saw the method of making it, Achiha Tunin had to admit that Naraku was a ruthless person. Chakra potion, after consuming it, it can increase the amount of chakra that an ordinary person can cultivate for an entire day. Moreover, the matter of refining a chakra is purely provided by medicine, not harming the body. Just looking at the effect, it was indeed a good thing. However, the cost of making it required extremely expensive and rare medicinal herbs. Not only that, the main ingredient of the chakra potion was a certain amount of heart marrow. Heart marrow was formed from the blood and brain of the human body that had been extracted countless times. To make a chakra potion, one needed to refine at least a hundred people. What kind of concept was this? If Naraku took this potion every day, he would need more than 100,000 lives in three years. This was the amount he needed alone. Looking at it like this, he seemed to be much kinder than Naraku. Moreover, if Achiha Tunin's judgment was correct, Naraku really possessed the bloodline of the Senju race, then his chakra was too astonishing. In addition to the secret technique left behind on the Senju Hashirama scroll, Achiha Tunin couldn't help but take in a cold breath. Hiss, this was a bit terrifying. However, it was only limited to a little. After all, even he didn't know the exact amount of chakra Achiha Tunin had. As long as he had enough chakra, it wouldn't have much meaning after reaching a certain level. 
After all, he hadn't seen anyone with insufficient chakra in the later six levels of battle. After thinking about it, Achiha Tenen put down the item. He walked out of the secret room and closed the door of the secret room. After all, there were so many treasures inside. It was not a good thing for him to spread it out now. The scroll of the Senju Hashirama was too big and it was really inconvenient to carry it. It was better to settle the matter of Naraku first. At the same time, at Mount Jifu battlefield, Naraku, who was drinking wine and watching the battle, suddenly frowned and muttered, Why do I have a bad feeling? Then, he shook his head and said, Achiha Madara, don't let me down. I will let you have a good look at what a new generation of ninja god is. At this time, in the arena, Achiha Tenen's instant clone was calmly looking around at the thirteen people who surrounded him. He saw Ukawa and twelve guardian ninjas make a familiar hand gesture and shout, Thousand Hand Kill. Chapter 217, Trump Card Behind these thirteen people, pure white thousand hand Buddha statue appeared. However, these thirteen people's Buddha statue was slightly smaller than Jigo's. Achiha Tunin had an indifferent expression as he lightly said, Bunch of clowns. You're courting death. In an instant, the pure white thousand-armed Buddha statue behind everyone instantly transformed into a golden-red glaring Vidra. Its entire body emitted a golden light, and the red that it emitted gave off a great deterrent force. Everyone formed hand seals, and they were still chanting something. One by one, fists were like missiles, attacking Achiha Tunin. Achiha Tunin's eyes were like jade, spinning rapidly. The whole world seemed to have been pressed by a slow release button, and these fists became slow. Taking advantage of the moment before the fists reached him, Achiha Tunin reached out and touched his chin, looking up at the sky. After dragging this out for so long, the main body should have investigated thoroughly. Then, the next step was to test out all of Naraku's trump cards. Rumble! In the blink of an eye, the overwhelming golden-red fists completely buried Achiha Tunin. The smoke formed by the dust covered the entire arena. Countless pieces of stone were shot in all directions. The surrounding trees were all bounced up and down, and large trees were turned into sieves. The leaves all fell to the ground and spread all over the ground. The thick trees could not stand such an attack, so they were broken in the middle and fell to the ground heavily. The collapse of the trees around the arena was too loud, causing the dust on the ground to rise. Immediately, the entire environment was shrouded in dust. It was hard to see clearly. Naraku, who was sitting on the seat, frowned and stared at the dust. He muttered, How could it be so simple? Suddenly, Achiha Tenen's low voice rang out from within the smoke and dust. Immortal arts aren't used like this. If it really is a thousand hands, it can transform. Suddenly, huge arms sprang out of the smoke and dust, firmly holding the thirteen people, and in an instant, the Buddha statue behind them was broken. Those Buddha statues were directly crushed into pieces, and in the next second, they turned into pieces and disappeared into the air. And Buddha statue the size of a mountain rose from the smoke and dust. The Buddha statue was golden, and half fell on the golden lotus platform, thousands of hands on three sides. On the left was a merciful face, on the right was an angry face, and on the front was an image of Rulai. The densely packed and stretched arms were like a peacock spreading its tail, making people feel dizzy just looking at them. Nilua stood up with a whoosh and frowned. Damn it, where did he learn this move? Could it be that the fool Hashirama Senju passed this move to him? Achiha Tenen opened his arms and a strange smile appeared on his face. He looked straight at Naraku and said slowly, Amitba. In the next moment, Achiha Tenen clasped his hands in the middle. At the same time, the summoned Buddha statue threw the thirteen people in his hands into the sky. Immediately, the densely packed arms closed in the middle at the same time, ready to slap the thirteen people to death. The palms quickly closed, raising the yellow sand on the ground. At this moment, the thirteen people finally saw the gap between them and Achiha Tunin and were scared to death. My lord, save me! Humph! Naraku snorted coldly. His eyes narrowed, 
and he slammed his hands on the ground. A palm made of countless rocks suddenly sprang out from the ground. Layer after layer, the thirteen people were gathered in the palm of their hands in advance, forming a rock ball to protect them. Bang! Thousands of hands joined together, turning the rock ball into a big pancake. At the same time, the ground beside Naraku rolled over and over. Ukawa and twelve guardian ninjas spat out the earth that had been turned over. It was Naraku who controlled the earth movement technique to move the thirteen people over. Naraku waved away the thirteen people who had lost most of their combat strength and slowly walked forward. Achihamadara, you are known as the Shura of the Ninja Realm. You once only lost to the god of the Ninja Realm, Senju Hazarama. Everything I have today is all thanks to you. I will let you experience the power of 300,000 living beings. The corner of Naraku's mouth curled into a sinister smile. He stopped in his tracks, and his entire body erupted with an intense amount of chakra. His long black hair danced in the air, and the surrounding ground cracked open like a spider web. Countless small stones even broke free from gravity and floated on the ground. Naraku's eyes were filled with madness as he shouted, Thousands hands, Huahong! The next moment, the entire mountain shook. Bang, bang, bang! Thick rock arms emerged from the ground around them. The ground under Naraku's feet began to rise rapidly. The first thing that was revealed was the three heads of Buddha. The soil and rocks of Mount Jifu seemed to have been removed by half, and the entire Mount Jifu was falling at a speed visible to the naked eye. The difference between Naraku's thousands of hands and Uchiha Tunin was that Uchiha Tunin was purely condensed from immortal chakra, and Na Luo's thousands of hands were formed by controlling the soil and rocks, and its size was even larger than the one that Uchiha Tunin had summoned. Just like Hashirama Senju, the wood style was changed to earth style. Ha 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 ha! Tremble, Azura! As the Buddha statue completely revealed his true appearance, Naraku, who was standing on the top of the Buddha statue, laughed wildly. Mount Jifu also changed from mountain peak to flat ground. Achiha Tunin frowned, his eyes closed and opened, revealing his Mangekyo Sharingan. He cast an illusion on Naraku. However, Naraku was only stunned for a moment before she woke up. A playful smile appeared on her face as she said, a very strong illusion. Unfortunately, it's useless against me. In order to temper my will. Every day, the twelve guardians will take turns to release the illusion. I struggle in pain and suffering every day for today. With the body of a mortal, I can compare with the gods. I am the god of the new generation. However, at this moment, Achiha Tenen's mind was no longer on Naraku. Instead, it was around him. In Uchiha Tunin's line of sight, the soul that covered the sky surrounded Naraku. The faces of each soul were extremely ferocious and terrifying. They screamed at the top of their lungs, and their faces were twisted to the point of disbelief. The screams of the soul seemed to be bearing great pain. The whole scene was creepy. These are all resentful spirits. If the soul suffered a great torture before death, there would be resentment. The greater the resentment, the longer it would stay in the human world. After the resentment dissipated, these souls would not be able to withstand the attraction force of the pure land and would be sucked into the pure land. Achiha Tunin only took a rough look and saw that the number of wraiths here was no less than 200,000. Naraku, this guy, in order to get strength, is a bit ruthless. However, it is me who benefited. I didn't expect to have a full meal before the war. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curved into a strange smile. Your smile makes me very unhappy. When Naraku saw that Uchiha Tunin did not show the serious expression he had expected, he was a little unhappy. Hashirama Senju can defeat everyone in the world with wood release. My earth release can do the same. After saying that, he suddenly clasped his hands together and shouted angrily. Immortal technique, stone dragon technique. Roar! A dragon roar rang out. A stone dragon emerged from the ground and coiled around the earth escape Great Buddha. Finally, the dragon head appeared above the Great Buddha and pounced towards Achiha Tunin. 
At the same time, Naraku also controlled the Earth Buddha to move towards Uchiha Tunin. At this critical moment, Uchiha Tunin couldn't control the Buddha to extend his dozens of arms to capture the incoming stone dragon. At the same time, he opened his left eye and the kaleidoscope started to spin rapidly. Shoot in! There was a great suction force. This suction force could not affect the real world, but to the soul, it was completely unable to resist. The wraith surrounding Naraku quickly floated towards Uchiha Tunin's left eye under the great suction force. No matter how the soul struggled or screamed, it was useless. What is this? I don't want to leave. I want revenge. I can't accept this. I can't accept this. I haven't seen him die with my own eyes. I want to wait for him to die with me. I don't want to leave. In an instant, all these souls were devoured by Uchiha Tunin. Even in battle, Uchiha Tunin could not help but show a comfortable expression. It was really too satisfying. However, Uchiha Tunin's annoying expression was simply a naked provocation in Naraku's eyes. He actually didn't take him seriously. Damn it! When Naraku got close to Uchiha Tunin, a sharp light flashed in his eyes. He pushed forward with her hands folded and shouted, Immortal Magic, Cloth Bag Technique. Chapter 218, Fourth Form All of a sudden, a palm formed from countless rocks gushed out from the ground around Uchiha Tunin, and it firmly grabbed onto Uchiha Tunin's Buddha statue. Naraku laughed wildly. Do you feel that these ninjutsu are very familiar? You won't have a chance. In the next moment, the Buddha statue formed from rocks under Naraku clenched its thousands of fists and attacked towards Uchiha Tunin. Bang! 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 In an instant, Uchiha Tunin's Dharma idol was shattered, and the remaining rocks and heavy punches covered up Uchiha Tunin's small and weak figure. Orerererererera. When Naraku saw this, his face was filled with a carefree expression. It was as if he was trying to vent his anger. He controlled the earth to continuously bombard the Buddha statue. His mouth continued to clamor. Under the accumulation of absolute resources, all talent cannot withstand a single blow. Moreover, I still have the bloodline of the Senju. What can you use to fight me? In the future, who would dare to use me as a puppet? Haruzen Saratobi and Danzo? Are they even worthy to fight me? When I kill you, Kanoha will surely be destroyed. I will lead the army to sweep the four countries and become the lord of the ninja realm. After a long time, Naraku finished venting. The place where Uchiha Tunin was had been smashed into a circular pit. The soil that should have been loose had been smashed into a hard rock wall. And Uchiha Tunin's figure had completely disappeared, not even a strand of hair remained. The emotions that had been suppressed for so long were completely vented out. On the contrary, Naraku felt a little dull. He removed his ninjutsu with waning interest, turned around, and walked towards the crowd. The original Mount Jifu had become a flat ground at this time. The Buddha statue formed from rocks melted into the soil. It raised the ground a lot. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin, who was so powerful, was killed by the mighty Naraku in one fell swoop. The 2,000 Jinin brought along by Ukawa, 12 guardian ninjas, and the 2,000 Jinin alls knelt down on one knee, their eyes full of fanaticism as they looked at Naraku and shouted, The Daimyo is invincible. The Daimyo is invincible. All hail the Daimyo. Suddenly, Naraku stopped halfway and turned around. He stared at the huge pit in disbelief and said, Impossible. Why isn't he dead? As soon as he finished speaking, everyone fell silent, holding their breath as they focused on the deep pit. At the center of the deep pit, the hard rock wall suddenly exploded, revealing Uchiha Tunin who had changed into Abakira inside. He saw that Uchiha Tunin's entire body was only stained with some dirt, and he looked completely unharmed. What was puzzling was that after Uchiha Tunin escaped, he did not attack, but stood there with a calm face. At this moment, a figure appeared in the direction of the fire capital. Step, step, step. The crisp and rhythmic footsteps seemed to step on the hearts of everyone present. 
Naraku's eyes were wide open, his gaze wandering back and forth between the figure and the deep pit. After the time it took to brew a cup of tea, Achiha Tinin came to the battlefield and apologized to Naraku. Sorry, my clone is too strong for you it seems like. The veins on Naraku's forehead bulged and he clenched his fists tightly. He gritted his teeth and said, Clone! Bang! Smoke rose from the deep pit, as if confirming Achiha Tunin's words. Naraku took a deep breath, clapped his hands once more, and shouted, So what? I don't believe that I can't kill you. Thousand palms! The earth shook and sank again, and the Buddha statue formed of rocks gradually rose. In order to be safe, Naraku even took out a small scroll from her bosom and opened it in front of her. When Ukawa saw this, he immediately took out a large scroll from his ninja bag and opened it. He shouted, Quick! Give the chakra to the Lord. After saying that, the two thousand jinnins knelt down in a square formation and placed their palms behind the person in front of them, sending pitiful amount of immortal chakra. These two thousand jinnins' immortal technique chakra was sent to the body of the twelve guardian ninjas, and then sent by the twelve guardian to Ukawa. Ukawa pressed his hands on the scroll. At the same time, Naraku controlled the Buddha statue which was composed of rocks, while pressing on the scroll in front of him with one hand, he absorbed the immortal chakra of everyone to replenish his own consumption. What made Naraku surprised was that Achiha Tunin did not stop him, but walked towards him leisurely. Naraku felt a burst of anger in his heart, and said fiercely, You are looking down on me. Achiha Tunin narrowed his eyes and smiled. He said gently, No, I admire you very much. You have superior talent and temperament. Your knowledge is far beyond that of ordinary people. The most important point is that you are ruthless enough. This point is quite good as a leader. Naraku sneered. He, As expected of Uchiha, he is even more arrogant than I thought. Uchiha Tunin smiled and shook his head. You can't even imagine how strong I am. Shut up! Naraku shouted. He used all his strength to stimulate the immortal chakra in his body, and the Buddha statue's body grew even larger. Ah! Oh. Naraku shouted, using all his strength to control the Buddha statue to reach out hundreds of arms and punch towards Achiha Tunin. Achiha Tunin had an indifferent expression on his face, and his eyes quickly changed into a Manjikyu, and the two Manjikyu started to spin rapidly. Today, I will let you experience what true strength is. In the next moment, hundreds of huge rock fists struck Achiha Tunin's body, but they were blocked by the Golden Barrier. The Golden Samurai Gundam appeared around Achiha Tunin. This was the fourth form of Achiha Tunin's Mangekyo, Heavenly Hound form. Achiha Tunin himself had forgotten when he could use the fourth form. It could only be said that as one strength increased, everything would go smoothly. Seeing that the attack was ineffective, Naraku wanted to first restrain Achiha Tunin before making a plan. He immediately controlled the Buddha statue to extend his arm again, grabbing the huge golden warrior in front of him. Needless to say, Naraku's tactics were no problem. The Buddha statue which had fused with the earth escape was extremely strong in terms of strength, and he really managed to block Achiha Tunin. However, the corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly, and there seemed to be a trace of mockery in his smile. In the next moment, the golden warrior's right hand grasped at his waist. A golden scabbard appeared at the waist of the warrior. This blade was precisely the spirit artifact awakened in the fourth form of the great heavenly hound. Its name was Demon Sword Miramesa. The Sharingan was worthy of being called the eye that portrays its user's soul. Not only did it give Achiha Tunin all kinds of demonic skills, even his spirit weapons were evil. The special effect of Miramesa was very straightforward and simple. Omni-attack type. Whether it is space, soul, chakra, seal, force of nature, or even thought. As long as Achiha Tunin could see it, the moment Miramesa attacked, it would automatically turn into one. Using the power of space to cut through space, using the power of the soul to cut off the soul. None will survive its attack. Chapter 219, Begging for Mercy 
The Golden Warrior slowly pulled out Demon Blade Miramesa. The moment the Golden Demon Blade Miramesa was pulled out, the body of the blade burned with seven colored flames, as if it contained a myriad of things. Seeing this, Naraku's pupils suddenly shrank. What is this? The Golden Warrior raised the Demon Blade Miramesa, and with a swing of his blade, he cut off countless arms of Naraku's Buddha statue. The severed arm instantly disintegrated into gravel and smashed into the ground, causing dust to rise all over the sky. Nero only felt that a part of the immortal chakra in his body had cut off the connection with him, and shock appeared in his eyes. What the hell is this? Uchiha Tinin controlled the Golden Warrior to slowly walk towards Naraku. With an indifferent expression, he said, You know nothing about power. Naraku was already sweating profusely, but he was at his wit's end. He suddenly clasped his hands together and roared. Immortal technique, ancient form. Rocks rose from the ground, and the originally calm ground instantly rose by dozens of meters. Then, a giant formed to block Naraku and Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Tunin shook his head lightly. The next moment, the Golden Warrior held the Demon Blade Miramesa with both hands, and his figure suddenly disappeared. When he reappeared, he was already behind the Buddha statue. At this moment, the world seemed to have lost all sound. Rumble. Both the ancient form and the Buddha statue were cut in half at the waist. The ancient form directly exploded from the middle, and pieces of stone flew everywhere. His vision was also blurred by the dust. The lower half of the Buddha statue was also scattered into huge stones. Naraku knelt on the head of the half-Buddha statue and looked back with an ugly expression. The golden warrior slowly dissipated. The figure of Uchiha Tunin was revealed. Uchiha Tunin slowly turned his head and leisurely said, Victory and defeat have been decided. The next moment, Uchiha Tunin's scarlet Mangekyo Sharingan suddenly spun. Naraku felt a red light shoot out from Uchiha Tunin's eyes, and the entire world seemed to turn blood red. The surrounding environment also became abnormal. The light from the sky was like blood red, and the trees and weeds not far away also revealed a deathly stillness. The originally vibrant environment became somewhat creepy. The entire world seemed to be approaching the end of days. But he heard Uchiha Tunin say faintly, Your so-called willpower is simply a joke in front of these eyes. However, it was Uchiha Tunin who used his full power against Naraku. Ah! Naraku roared, and immediately after, Buddha statue completely disintegrated. His entire body fell to the ground, his entire body shaking like a sieve, sweat pouring down like a waterfall. My lord! The spectators in the distance were all transferred to Naraku because of the chakra in their bodies. At this time, they didn't even have the strength to get up, all of them kneeling on the ground, dying. Uchiha Tunin slowly walked up to Naraku and tried according to the secret technique he had just learned from the scroll of the Hashirama Senju. The ground surged, and a throne made of stone emerged from the soil. Although it seemed a bit rough because it was the first time he used the secret technique, the general shape was still intact. It's really convenient. Uchiha Tunin nodded slightly with a satisfied expression. Then, he sat down on the throne and quietly looked down at Naraku in front of him. The hell's eye was an offensive illusion, and the effect in the real world would only last for a moment. At this time, Naraku had clearly already carried it. His face was deathly pale, and his eyes were bloodshot. He slowly raised his head and looked at Uchiha Tunin. A trace of surprise flashed through Uchiha Tunin's eyes, and he praised. I take back what I just said. Your willpower is indeed good. You actually didn't go crazy or faint when you were under my illusion. Originally, Uchiha Tunin thought that Naraku would curse. Unexpectedly, Naraku took a few deep breaths, and a look of worship appeared on her face. Teacher! Teacher, you are too amazing. This disciple is convinced. When Uchiha Tunin saw Naraku like this, his eyes were filled with a strange color. Naraku shamelessly knelt down in front of Uchiha Tunin and said with snot and tears, Teacher, you don't know. Ever since you left last time, this disciple has been thinking about you day and night. 
Every night, I would dream of the scene of you teaching this disciple earnestly. This disciple was born to be dull and ignorant, and when he encountered a major event, he was also extremely impulsive. Without teacher by my side to point out this disciple's mistakes, this disciple has already made a great mistake. I really regret killing countless lives. Thank you, teacher, for waking this disciple up today. This disciple understands what is called there is always a sky above the sky, there is always someone above the earth. Achiha Tenen sucked in a breath of cold air. He couldn't quite tell if this guy was begging for mercy because he was afraid of the illusion. Or was it because he hadn't been able to resist the illusion? What nonsense are you talking about? Aren't you prepared to kill your teacher today? How did you start to recognize your mistake after losing? Naraku immediately said firmly, No, I swear. I swear. I've never thought of killing you. Achiha Tunin looked at Naraku seriously and nodded. Okay, then swear. Naraku was stunned. He slowly raised her palm and the blood in his eyes became denser. He said with difficulty, I swear on my great name that if I have the intention to kill my teacher, I will destroy the entire country of fire. The land will be barren for thousands of miles, and the children will eat each other. Achiha Tenen smiled and reached out his hand to pat Naraku's face. Ha 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 ha. You are really a clever one. Naraku's face was red and swollen, but there was no anger on his face. Instead, he put on a flattering smile and said, Teacher, you must have a great ambition. Why don't you let me serve you? I'm willing to give you my position. Do you think it is possible? Achiha Tunin's eyes instantly turned cold. Naraku seemed to feel the danger and said in embarrassment, This method is a bit inappropriate. It doesn't fit the ancestral system. But I think you are determined to be the Hokage. As long as there are disciples, the whole fire country will be the pasture of Kanoha in the future. The people of the fire country are all sheep in the pasture. I am willing to be the most loyal dog of my teacher. Yes, I will do that. I'm a dog. Woof, woof, woof. As Naraku spoke, he actually propped his limbs on the ground and began to bark at Achiha Tunin like a dog. When the people lying on the ground in the distance saw this scene, they felt as if the sky had collapsed. My lord, how can his highness be like this? This is not the lord that I know. The more Naraku shouted, the more excited he became. In front of Achiha Tunin, he even shook his butt. Woof! Teacher, look, disciple can shake his tail. Achiha Tunin tapped his fingers on the armrest and was silent for a long time. He vaguely saw Naraku's eyes sparkling. Chapter 220 Hypocrite Originally, Achiha Tunin wanted to control Naraku and let him do things for him, establish a sect, and play the tricks of the king's power. He wanted to see if he could gain recognition through faith. Then, he would use his method to cultivate the believers who had gained recognition. However, this guy's behavior made Achiha Tunin a little unsure if he should kill him or not. After a long time, he saw that Achiha Tunin seemed to be hesitating. Naraku's begging actions became even more severe, and he moved his head closer to Achiha Tunin's feet, sticking out his tongue to lick Achiha Tunin's shoes. He looked obedient and loyal. Achiha Tunin narrowed his eyes and said in a cold tone, Tell me about your value. Naraku immediately sat in a dog-like position and said while breathing, I found a magical potion, and after drinking it, I can refine a whole day of chakra without any side effects. It's just that this potion needs to be refined by people, and it needs to sacrifice a lot of people. But teacher, don't worry, I can do it for you. In these three years, regardless of whether I am innocent or guilty, I have killed at least 300,000 people. As long as you ask, I can kill a million disciples. I believe that you have also practiced immortal arts and know that immortal arts need to absorb the power of emotions. I have a full set of torture methods that can torture 10,000 people at once. It can be used to quickly become an immortal technique. This disciple has also plundered all sorts of precious medicinal formulas that can increase one's physique in all aspects. 
Achiha Tinan said with an indifferent expression, it's not very useful to me. When Nariku heard this, cold sweat trickled down his cheeks and he rolled his eyes. He thought that he absolutely could not let Achiha Tinan feel that he had no value, otherwise he would have to die like this, so he quickly said, I also used all kinds of methods to seize the secret techniques of the ninja organization from all over the country of fire. Even the inheritance treasure of the Senju clan. The scroll of the Hashirama Senju was also in this disciple's hands. This disciple is willing to offer it to teacher. Seeing that he had already thrown out his family fortune, but Uchiha Tinan still seemed to have that indifferent expression, Naraku became anxious. She immediately hugged Uchiha Tinan's thigh and cried. Woo! I really know my mistake. I have always regarded my teacher as my second parent. Who told you to abandon me and leave? I hate you because I love you. I love you so much that I hate you so much. Now that I have vented all my hatred, all that is left is the indestructible relationship between master and disciple. I regret everything, I should not have attacked you. This disciple is really stupid. After saying that, Naraku ruthlessly slapped his originally red and swollen face. This slap was really heavy, causing his swollen face to be left with a purple and purple five-finger mark. Pa! I'm stupid. Pa! He is even worse than an animal. Pa! Uchiha Tenen kicked Naraku to the ground and said coldly, Stop acting. Don't you hate me for lying to you and killing your father? A hint of joy flashed through Naraku's eyes when he heard this. He was not afraid that Uchiha Tenen would ask more, but he was afraid that he would not ask anything. Because for people like them, if they are willing to talk nonsense with you, it means that you can still be saved. He shook his head like a rattled drum and said, I don't hate you, I don't hate you at all. Teacher, you really misunderstood me. Teacher, don't you know what kind of person this disciple is? This disciple is that kind of selfish, self-centered, cold-hearted little person. There is no such thing as a father and son relationship. Moreover, that old fellow has always lived to dominate his grand position. This disciple has long wanted to kill him. It's just that he has always had a heart but no guts. Fortunately, teacher gave this disciple this opportunity. He even helped this disciple find that scapegoat, Shinasuk. This disciple is already grateful to teacher, so how could I hate you? This disciple will not be able to repay kindness with gratitude. Seeing that Naraku's logic was already in a mess, Achiha Tenen sighed, It's been hard on you. After saying that, Achiha Tenen began to form a seal with his hands in front of Naraku. Then, he stretched out his palm and slowly pressed it against Naraku's head. My lord! In the distance, there was the untimely wail of Ukawa. This was the collapse of faith, the shattering of value. It was also the worry of a loyal subject regarding the monarch's current situation. Naraku looked at the palm that was about to touch his head. He swallowed his saliva and shouted into the distance. What are you shouting for? Teacher and I are like father and son, and he won't harm me. What are you all worried about? Achiha Tenen pressed his palm on Naraku's head, but he had yet to release the cursed seal. He felt the violent trembling coming from his palm. Teacher, if you leave me behind, I'll really be lonely. My family has all died, not a single one left. If I die, my bloodline will really be cut off. The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curved slightly as he looked at the trembling Naraku and said unhurriedly, You are afraid. Naraku's eyes were bloodshot and he forced a smile on his lips. He said hoarsely, Teacher's palm is still so warm. I am happy, and I tremble when I am happy. Achiha Tenen sneered, and a gentle smile appeared on his face. Then open your heart and don't resist. With that, Achiha Tenen violently injected the cursed seal into Naraku's mind. Naraku's eyes widened, and he knelt on the ground, twitching. He stretched out his arms, tilted his head, and his hands were in the shape of chicken claws. It was as if he had epilepsy but his eyes did not lose their luster. Uh, uh. To be honest, 
Neraku's performance was obviously much better than any of the people Uchiha Tenen had seen before. Uchiha Tenen suddenly thought of a sentence. The master surpassed the master. If he was really a native of this world, he might really treat Neraku as his successor. This personality was even better than his own. A hypocrite. The daimyo of a country that act like a dog in order to live. To make him swear an oath, he didn't mention himself, but used the entire country to swear an oath. Achiha Tenen admitted that he couldn't do this. Half an hour later, Neraku seemed to have been fished out of the water. After discovering that he wasn't dead, his face revealed an expression of surviving a disaster. Achiha Tenen leaned forward slightly and said faintly, Seeing that you are so obedient, I really can't bear to kill you. But in order to prevent you from being disobedient in the future, I put a little toy in your mind. You don't mind, do you? Neraku's pupils instinctively shrank, and he immediately smiled obsequiously. I don't mind. Teacher, everything you do is for my own good. Achiha Tenen nodded and turned around to look at the people lying on the ground. He said, I suddenly remembered that you seem to have guessed my true identity. This is a big secret of mine. I am the only one who knows about it in the entire ninja realm. You are my disciple, so it's fine if you know. But they... When Neraku heard this, he secretly took a deep breath and suddenly lowered his head. He gritted her teeth and said, I understand. Immediately, his hands formed seals one after another, his movements were slightly sluggish. When the last seal was completed, Neraku shouted in a hoarse voice. Immortal technique. Stone spike. Rumble. The earth trembled violently, as if it had accumulated a great amount of energy and was about to be released. Pooh. A series of sounds that pierced her flesh rang out. In the entire area of Mount Shifu, stone spears rose from the ground and pierced Neraku's hand. The densely packed corpses were hung on the stone spears. Their eyes were wide open, and they had an expression of death. Achiha Tunin nodded in satisfaction at Neraku's performance and slowly stood up. He turned around and walked in the direction of the fire capital. He said slowly, let's go to a private place. I have a task for you. Yes. Neraku stood up and looked at Achiha Tunin's back. He quickly wiped his eyes with the back of his hand. With a flattering smile on his face, he followed him. Achiha Tunin suddenly stopped in his tracks and turned to look at Neraku. Neraku subconsciously swallowed his saliva and said humbly, Teacher, is there anything you need me to do with you? Achiha Tunin asked with concern, The teacher forced you to kill your trusted subordinate. I hope you won't take it to heart. Neraku arched his body slightly. How can that be? This disciple is the daimyo. It's just killing a few dogs. It doesn't matter. Moreover, they had seen the appearance of this disciple just now. They had already lost their respect for this disciple. This disciple also needed to keep it a secret. Otherwise, how could this disciple command his subordinates in the future? Achiha Tunin nodded with satisfaction and said, Very good. However, I still like your unruly appearance. When Neraku heard this, he immediately straightened up and the smile on his face disappeared. Seeing this, the corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He quietly looked into the distance and then turned to walk toward the fire capital. Chapter 221 Great Sage Fire Capital, Daimyo Mansion Achiha Tunin sat in Neraku's seat. Neraku knelt to the side and began to cook the tea that was supposed to be done by a maid. Achiha Tunin and Neraku were both at the level of a ceiling in the ninja world. From now to the start of the fourth battle, what Achiha Tunin needed to do was to retreat and lay down the chess pieces, and finally seize the fruit of victory in one fell swoop. In addition, Kanoha was only a ninja village after all, and there was no shortage of blood and ninjutsu. However, a person's strength was multidimensional, not just depending on chakra, strength, speed, and so on. More importantly, he needed to have enough knowledge and experience. This was also one of the reasons why Achiha Tunin had left Neraku behind. 
More importantly, a person's energy was limited, and only by controlling the power could they seize more things. Just like Naraku, relying on the method of killing the chicken to obtain the eggs, he forcefully grew from an ordinary person to a Kagya rank powerhouse. Teacher, please have some tea. Naraku respectfully filled the cup and offered it with both hands. Achiha Tunin nodded slightly and took the cup. He took a sip and said, Tell me about your next plan. I can help you sort it out. A silly smile appeared on Naraku's face. Teacher, you must be joking. I don't dare to propose my own plan. Teacher, I will do whatever you say. Achiha Tunin narrowed his eyes and said slowly, Do you know why I didn't kill you? Naraku immediately bowed and said, Teacher is merciful. Achiha Tunin chuckled and shook his head. All right, stop acting. It's not like I can't tell. A look of anxiety appeared on Naraku's face, as if he had been greatly wronged. Teacher, you really misunderstood your disciple. Your disciple simply wants to prove himself. Achiha Tunin stretched out his hand impatiently, indicating for Naraku to shut up. He said lightly, do you still remember the order that I gave you back then? Naraku frowned when he heard this and began to think carefully. After a long time, seeing that Naraku had not remembered anything, Achiha Tunin picked up the cup and leisurely took a sip of tea. He said earnestly, I have my own chi observation technique. Everything in the world is filled with chi. And you, between your eyebrows, there is a hint of purple. The purple star is the most central star in the starry sky, surrounded by stars, and can be called the Emperor Star. If there is no extraordinary external force to stop you, you will be able to sweep across the world, unify all six directions, and rule the world. Naraku thought about it, Achiha Tunin had told him these words before. However, ever since he recognized Achiha Tunin's true face, Naraku only thought that this was a trick that Achiha Tunin used to trick him, and he had long forgotten about these words. Now that Achiha Tunin mentioned it again, Naraku felt that the other party wanted to trick him again, and he did not know how to answer for a moment. This. Achiha Tunin snorted with an unhappy expression and placed the teacup heavily on the table. Do you think that you were worthy of being lied to by the mighty Shura of the Ninja Realm at that time? Naraku immediately said with a flattering smile. Teacher, you are joking. Disciple is not too interested in power right now. I only want to be by teacher's side and serve you well. Achiha Tunin gently turned the teacup with his fingers and said, Do you know what your master's goal is? Kanoha? Or the ninja realm? With Naraku's knowledge, this was all he could think of. Achiha Tunin shook his head in contempt, then stared into Naraku's eyes and said in a deep voice, Surpass the six path immortals and become a true god. Naraku was slightly stunned when he heard this, but he did not take what Achiha Tunin said seriously. He only felt that Achiha Tunin was bragging in front of him. Now that his life was under someone's control, no matter how outrageous it was, Naraku could only pretend to believe it and nod repeatedly. A look of amazement appeared on his face just in time to satisfy this old man's vanity. Achiha Tunin tapped his finger on the table and continued, But gods can't meddle in the affairs of the world. This is not conducive to the development of the world. So I need someone to take charge of this world for me. Just in time, I met you. The look of amazement on Naraku's face turned into surprise, and his body trembled slightly. Anyway, it was impossible for this old fellow to stay in fire capital all the time. As long as he served this old fellow well for now. After he left, he could think of a way to remove the cursed seal in his brain. Then, he would silently accumulate strength and make a comeback. However, Naraku's exaggerated expression was particularly fake in Achiha Tunin's eyes. This guy seemed to be much smarter than before. He was not easy to fool. Achiha Tunin took a deep breath and said in a deep tone, I said, don't act anymore. When people hear the sudden good news, they won't laugh or shake. At most, they will be stunned. So from the bottom of your heart, you feel that your master is a fool. The smile on Naraku's face suddenly froze. 
he cursed in his heart that this old fellow was too difficult to deal with. Naraku smiled embarrassedly and said, No, this disciple only feels that it is a bit inconceivable. But since it is teacher's dream, as long as this disciple can help, I will naturally be willing to do my best. Uchiha Tunin nodded slightly and said, There are only two things you need to understand. First, the power of the ruler is passed down by the gods. Second, the gods protect the world, and the world should also return to their devout faith. As he spoke, Uchiha Tunin pointed to the ground with his finger and said, You carved the statue of a god according to my mold. First, let the soldiers below worship the statue of a god. If you find talents from all walks of life, or people with special talents, you can also accept them. Sincere, take out your resources and nurture him. Remember, without my permission, this matter cannot be spread. Naraku did not expect Achiha Tunin to be serious. He nodded repeatedly and said, What should the name of the god be called? Which name should I use? After all, in Naraku's heart, the current Achiha Tunin was Achiha Madara. Of course, Naraku was still guessing how Achiha Madara lived his life again. Hearing this, Achiha Tunin touched his chin and began to think carefully. After all, he did not know if it was possible to obtain recognition through faith. However, there was a basis for this method. That was the so-called belief. The most extreme way to agree with ideals was belief. Faith was not just to believe in Achiha Tunin himself, but to agree with Achiha Tunin's thoughts. Of course, if it were for possible, Achiha Tunin was more willing to use A. Bakira's image. However, in order to be safe, Achiha Tunin still had Naraku carve a statue according to her appearance. First, I will be called the Great Sage. I will write a book that records many of my ideas and thoughts. When the time comes, they will have to read it day and night, which is also brainwashing. You should understand what I mean. Naraku nodded heavily. I understand. Chapter 222, Kill the Spy Achiha Tunin nodded with satisfaction and drank up the tea in the cup. He immediately asked, the war should be coming soon. Naraku straightened up and picked up the teapot on the table. He carefully held up a cup and said, I was prepared, but I don't know what you mean. If you want to start a war, then the war can break out immediately. If you are not willing to start a war, I have a way to suppress the signs. Achiha Tunin tapped his fingers on the table again and again, his expression was inexplicable. The sooner the better. Without me, no matter how hard you try, you will not be able to unify the world. In this world, there are many hidden experts. You go first, I will write some letter tonight, and I will return to Kanoha tomorrow. Hearing this, a hand of joy flashed in his eyes. He put down the teapot and picked up the teacup. This disciple will immediately take care of the matter that teacher instructed me to do. Teacher, please have some tea. A quarter of an hour later, the Daimyo Mansion sent out two notices to the outside world through various channels. One was the honorary Chunin competition. The four big ninja village players joined forces with the Fire Capital Rebellion officials wanting to assassinate the Daimyo. In the end, they were all killed by Kanoha's player Achiha Tunin and his trusted subordinates. The daimyo was furious and announced that the fire country had stopped trading with the four big countries. The second was that the daimyo mansion announced the release of new coins. The ratio between the new and old currency was 1 to 10,000. Only the new currency could be purchased from the official channels for food, salt, and other important materials. The exchange channels in the four countries were closed. In fact, the first notice was mainly to find a legitimate reason for the second notice. As soon as the second announcement was made, if the four countries did not start a war, they would not be able to survive at all. It was only summer now, and because of the economic war before the Daimyo Mansion, they purchased most of the food and other necessities of the four countries. They also used a high price to induce them to grow economic crops. Now that the fields were full of inedible economic crops, and the money he had could not buy food and other necessities, what should he do? 
If he wanted to rely on the big names of various countries and the grain stored in Ninja Village, he would have to hold on until next autumn. Conservatively speaking, it would take 18 months. The only way to break the situation was to start a war. Work together to defeat Kanoha, force Naraku to take back the new currency policy, and compensate for food and other supplies. Of course, it would be better if the higher-ups of a country chose to go through the trap. By that time, the entire country would be empty, and the great cause of Naraku's unification of the world would be a step closer. In fact, in Naraku's original plan, Uchiha Tunin and the players from the four villages would all die. After that, he issued a notice that in order to protect his distinguished highness, Uchiha Tunin had sacrificed himself for the job and sacrificed himself. Unfortunately, Naraku had underestimated Uchiha Tunin's strength. He still had to blame his lack of knowledge. Late at night, the dead bodies on Mount Jifu had been cleaned up and buried by the soldiers of the Daimyo Mansion. Only tall stone spears were left standing on the ground. The moon was almost as round as a silver plate, and the sky was bright and clean. The clear moonlight shone on the earth, illuminating the stone spears into bright silver. In the forest that was still at the edge of the battlefield, the trunk of a big tree seemed to be slightly twisted. A canvas fell, revealing the deep tree hole on the trunk. Someone had used a canvas to cover the tree hole and hide it in the tree hole. A ninja wearing a cat-faced mask carefully poked his head out and scanned his surroundings before turning into a black shadow and running towards the center of the forest. The cat-faced ninja was a member of the Umbu under Haruzen Saratobi. In recent times, whether it was Haruzen Saratobi's Umbu or Danzo's root spy, they had all been caught by the Daimyo Mansion. The spy was exposed in the open and lost its meaning, becoming a communication microphone between the Daimyo Mansion and Fire Capital. In this regard, Haruzen Saratobi and Danzo were both silent. After all, the Daimyo Mansion was the legitimate ruler on the surface, and it was wrong for Kanoha to spy on the Daimyo. Fortunately, Naraku pretended to be magnanimous and did not punish Kanoha. Of course, Naraku was not magnanimous, but was ready to start a war and let Kanoha fight against the four villages, not caring about the lives of the spies. Only this spy, who had always been in the deep mountains and forests, had not been discovered by the people of the famous mansion. When Naraku and Uchiha Tunin fought, this spy had already hidden in the tree hole and watched the whole process. At that time, the spy was extremely shocked. Because the battle between the two had already surpassed his understanding of ninjas. In particular, Naraku also revealed Uchiha Tunin's real identity, Uchiha Madara. This was a huge secret, and as a spy of the Umbu, he had to send this news back to Kanoha. In order to avoid being discovered, this spy had to wait until late into the night before he dared to come out of the tree hole. Suddenly, the running spy stopped in his tracks, and with a flash, he stuck to the tree trunk. Goo goo. In the sky, a large group of white pigeons whistled through the air above the forest. The spy completely held his breath. At this time, even if it was an ordinary animal, they could avoid it if they could. After the white pigeon flew far away, the spy stuck his head out and looked ahead. He saw that the forest ahead was cut off by an iron passage. The entire iron passage was completely exposed under the cold moonlight without the shade of a tree. This made the spy instinctively feel insecure. Why don't we write down the information here and let the summoned beast send it back? The spy thought about it for a moment, but immediately rejected it. This place was still too close to the fire capital, and it would be dangerous to stay here for another second. Taking a deep breath, the spy suddenly sped up and turned into a black shadow that quickly passed through the iron passage. However, the spy who had just passed through the iron road and entered the jungle frowned. Just now. It seemed that there was a white figure on the iron road. Gulp. The spy subconsciously swallowed his saliva and looked back through the gap between the tree trunks. The tree trunk blocks the iron path in the spy's sight into dozens of pieces. No. 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 It seemed that he was scaring himself. The spy heaved a sigh of relief and was about to continue fleeing into the distance. Just as he turned his head, he saw Achiha Tunin, who was wearing a white nightgown, 
standing in front of him. Achihatinen seemed to be in a hurry to travel. He was unhurriedly tying the belt on the nightgown and said faintly, You left in such a hurry. Do you want me to send you off? The spy said in a relaxed tone, Mr. Tunin, I didn't expect to meet you here. I just came out of Kanoha, and I'm going to the enemy country to carry out a mission. Achiha Tunin chuckled and patted the spy on the shoulder. Hey, you are considered relatively stable in Umbu. It's not a big deal. In your next life, change your profession. As soon as he finished speaking, the Umbu held the kanai and stabbed it into Achiha Tunin's heart. Ding! The sound of metal clashing rang out, but it did not even break his skin. Achiha Tunin pinched his right finger and flicked it backwards. Poo! Bang! A tree trunk behind him was pierced by Achiha Tunin's air pill. A corpse fell straight to the ground. The spy in front of Achiha Tunin turned into a ball of white mist. It was just a shadow clone. In the next moment, Achiha Tunin made a hand seal with one hand and used the pawn of the underworld to devour the spy corpse. Then his body also turned into a ball of white mist and disappeared. At the same time, Achiha Tunin, who was riding in the daimyo mansion, paused slightly, put down the pen in his hand, and looked down at the loose belt on his sleeping robe. It seems that there is only one small fish. As he spoke, he reached out and tied the belt, picked up the pen again and continued to wave the pen ink. Chapter 223 Teacher and Apprentice The Next Morning a red sun jumped out of the morning fog, and thousands of rays of light illuminated the river water that was flowing in the distance of the capital of fire, dyeing the morning fog red. The morning fog gradually receded under the sunlight, and the world suddenly became clear. In the capital of fire, dense city guards moved out, sealing the road from the famous mansion to the train station. Achiha Tunin, accompanied by Nariku, arrived at the train station. Under Nariku's signal, a group of city guards guarded the train station strictly, leaving a separate space for the two of them. The two of them walked up the platform and stood at the same time with tacit understanding. Achiha Tunin held Nariku's hand and placed it in his palm. His other hand gently patted the back of his hand and said earnestly, Nariku, for the sake of our great cause, I will have to trouble you for a period of time in the future. If you have any difficulties, feel free to tell me. Nariku placed his other hand on the back of Achiha Tunin's hand and said with a face full of reluctance, Teacher, this disciple has just reunited with you. I didn't expect that it would be time to part again. I really can't bear to part with you. I can't wait to give up this place and go to Kanoha to show my filial piety to you. As he spoke, he reached out and took out two small scrolls from his bosom. Teacher, time is short. This is a little gift from me. Please accept it. Achiha Tunin glanced at the scroll and said with a puzzled face, This is. Nariku held a scroll in one hand. He raised the scroll in his left hand and said, There are five hundred chakra potions in this scroll. In this period of time, the wealth of the daimyo mansion has been exhausted. This disciples could only take out five hundred. Then, he raised the scroll in his right hand and said, This scroll contained a secret technique of the Senju clan. It is said that it was created by the second generation of the Hokage, the Tobarama Senju. It can accurately control the chakra in the whole body and greatly increase the strength and explosive power of the body. The secret technique on the scroll of Senju Hazarama was passed down from the time of ninja sect, and there is no record of this secret technique. Saying this, he handed two small scrolls to Achiha Tunin. Achiha Tunin took the scroll and gently weighed it. He nodded with satisfaction and said, It's rare for you to be so considerate. Since you gave me these two gifts, I naturally can't treat you unfairly. In fact, although the curse seal in your mind has some restrictions on you, it can greatly increase your talent. Consider it my first gift to you. When Nariku heard this, her eyes sparkled with tears. I see. I am so touched. Achiha Tunin stuffed the scroll into his ninja bag and smiled. Don't be in a hurry to be moved. There is still a second gift. As soon as he finished speaking, 
a white pigeon landed on Uchiha Tunin's shoulder. Uchiha Tunin reached out and gently stroked the white pigeon's soft feathers. Teacher can't accompany you often, but he is worried that you will be alone. It just so happened that this was a pet that teacher had raised for many years, obedient and sensible. Today, teacher will give it to you, and it will accompany you day and night in place of teacher, never leaving your side. After saying that, the white pigeon on Uchiha Tunin's shoulder spread its wings and landed on Naraku's shoulder. Naraku looked at the white pigeon and praised. This white pigeon looks very divine. It's not an ordinary pigeon. This is too precious. This disciple feels guilty. All right, it's getting late. I'm leaving. You have to take good care of yourself. You have to take good care of this little fellow too. If something happens to it, I will be very angry. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He reached out and patted Naraku on the shoulder, then turned around and walked towards the train at the end of the train station. Naraku stood there with tears in his eyes as he looked at Uchiha Tunin's receding figure. Teacher, if you miss your disciple, come to Fire Capital often to take a look. If you lack money, find someone to send a message to your disciple. Your disciple will buy you enough even if I have to sell everything. The battlefield is dangerous, if you don't need to go, then don't go. If Hiruzen Saratobi wants to exclude you, don't endure it and tell this disciple. Even if this disciple was stripped from his title, I will still fight him to the end. Teacher, take care. A moment later, Achiha Tunin boarded the train. Guan Guifeng had already been waiting in the driver's seat for a long time. He put his hands on his knees and bowed deeply. Lord Tunin, are you leaving? Achiha Tunin nodded. Start the train. After saying that, he randomly picked a seat by the window and sat down. Thick white smoke rose from the roof of the train and slowly drove out of the station. Naraku stood on the platform and watched the train move further and further away. When the train completely left their line of sight, Naraku's face had already returned to a cold expression. His eyes narrowed slightly, looking a little sinister. Half an hour later, in the daimyo mansion. Naraku sat in his seat, kneeling in front of Naraku's remaining confidant, the disciplinary minister Takuro Yamamoto. My lord, this is the list of the ninjas from all over the country of fire. Do you want to choose the new twelve guardians? Naraku waved his hand indifferently. No, I will train them myself. Leave the information behind and you all go out. Takuro Yamamoto quickly stood up and called the maids and guards in the hall to leave the hall and close the door. When there was no one in the hall, the suppressed anger in Naraku's heart finally burst out. He clenched his fists and smashed the short table in front of him into pieces. He roared, Old bastard! I will kill you sooner or later. At this moment, the veins on Naraku's forehead bulged and his eyes were bloodshot. It looked extremely terrifying. Suddenly, Naraku felt a special sense of peeping. Out of the corner of his eye, he caught a white pigeon standing on the beam of the room, staring at him curiously. What made Naraku despair was that the white pigeon's eyes were scarlet red, and there were also three familiar magnetama that were slowly rotating. Naraku took a deep breath, his entire body trembling. He smashed the armrest with a slap and gnashed his teeth. Hiruzen Saratobi, you dare to bully my teacher. Sooner or later, I will chop you up and feed you to the dogs. Then, he shouted with a hoarse voice. Come, come. The door was pushed open and Yamamoto hurriedly ran in. He knelt on the ground in panic and said, My lord, what can I do for you? Nalyuo gulped and saw the Magatama in the pigeon's eyes disappear from the corner of his eyes. His lips were slightly pale and he said hoarsely, I want to read a book. Go and bring all the scrolls about fire, earth, water, lightning, seal, and body arts. Yes. Yamamoto Takuro staggered to his feet and ran outside. Wait a minute. Naraku suddenly called out to Yamamoto, who was about to run out, and a stiff smile appeared on his face. Bring over all the top animal feeds and send two maids to serve my pet day and night. 
Takao Tatsukawa glanced at the white pigeon on the beam of the room and did not dare to ask more. He bowed his head honestly and said, Yes. Chapter 224 Physical Force On the plains near the capital of fire, soft clouds floated in the sky like wisps of smoke. It had only entered early summer two days ago. In addition to the lack of rain for a period of time, the earth had gradually become extremely hot. The hot wind that rushed in from outside the window wantonly blew at the ends of Uchiha Tunin's hair, making his hair a little messy. Uchiha Tunin's physique was far beyond that of ordinary people. Although the outside was hot and unbearable, he did not feel much. He just quietly looked at the strange physical skill scroll spread out on the table. Nowadays, even he could not count the number of ninjutsu that Uchiha Tunin knew. Even Haruzen Saratobi, who was known as a doctor of ninjutsu, might not have more ninjutsu than Uchiha Tunin. Most of these ninjutsu were of little value to the current Uchiha Tunin, because most of the effects of these ninjutsu coincided with each other. Uchiha Tunin was naturally not looking for trouble after learning so many ninjutsu. It was mainly to let him understand the principles of ninjutsu even more deeply. When you encounter a practical high-level ninjutsu, you can quickly master it. For example, the physical force that was placed in front of Uchiha Tunin. The physical force was created by the thousand hands, and the one who really developed this skill was Tsunade. Of course, the reason why Tsunade was in love with the physical force was mainly to cooperate with her own in seal. After all, everyone's energy was limited, and they needed to take the route that was suitable for themselves. But who told Uchiha Tunin to have a cheat? Those who had a chi were naturally all good things in one fell swoop. After reading the contents of the scroll, Uchiha Tunin gently raised his right hand and used his mind to control the chakra in his body to flow along the special meridian points and finally gathered in his palm. In an instant, Uchiha Tunin felt as if his right hand had become extremely powerful. His strength ignited in his body as if he had the ability to crush everything. However, this was the train after all, and Uchiha Tunin was not the kind of person who was ignorant and did not intend to test the effects. Suddenly, Guan Guifeng opened the door to the driver's seat and a wave of heat came. The temperature of the hot weather, coupled with the fact that the driver's seat was close to the boiler, was naturally much higher than the temperature of the carriage. Guan Guifeng, who seemed to have been pulled out of the water, quickly closed the door to prevent the heat from affecting Uchiha Tunin. He nodded apologetically at Uchiha Tunin, then quickly passed through the aisle and went to the carriage behind. Not long after, Guan Guifeng came to Uchiha Tunin with a slightly sumptuous meal and put it down. Lord Tunin, it's time for lunch. There are only these things in the car. If you have anything you want to eat, you can tell me. When we arrive at the next stop, I will stop the car and buy it. There were many different kinds of food on the plate which was already very rich. It could be seen that Guan Guifeng had spent a lot of effort. Achiha Tunin looked at the food on the plate, reached out and took off his glasses. He put them aside and said, No need, I am not picky about food. But there are too many of them. I can't finish them all by myself. Sit down and eat with me. Guan Guifeng quickly waved his hand and said, I brought my own lunchbox. Uchiha Tunin smiled and said, Sit down. You don't have to be so polite with me. You can chat with me while you're at it. Then, all right. Guan Guifeng sat down awkwardly in front of Uchiha Tunin. When Uchiha Tunin saw that there was only one pair of chopsticks, he thought of something. He saw a stone shoot in through the window and fall into Uchiha Tunin's palm. The next moment, the shape of the stone changed and gradually split into a pair of stone chopsticks. The heat from outside the window spread over Uchiha Tunin and Guan Guifeng's faces. Uchiha Tunin felt that it was all right, but Guan Guifeng was different. He used his uniform sleeve to wipe the sweat from his forehead and smiled at Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Tunin smiled. Uchiha Tunin wiped the stone chopsticks with a tissue, then handed it to Guan Guifeng. This job seems to be very hard. Guan Guifeng stretched out his hands and respectfully took the stone chopsticks. He said, It's just a little hard in summer. 
just make it through. Are all ninjutsu so magical? He was still a little surprised by Uchiha Tunin's ability just now, which was an eye-opener. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth slightly curved, and he picked up the chopsticks, picked up a mouthful of food, put it into his mouth and chewed. What do you usually do other than driving? Guan Guifeng smiled awkwardly and said, Look at the books from all walks of life. After all, this train thing has just come out. No one knows if it will be eliminated in the future. I have to leave a few more options for myself. As he spoke, under Uchiha Tunin's gaze, he picked up a pair of stone chopsticks, picked up a mouthful of vegetables, and slowly chewed them. Uchiha Tunin gently nodded and said, I usually like to read. Expanding knowledge is a good thing for anyone. Are you interested in being a ninja? Perhaps Uchiha Tunin changed the topic too quickly, Guan Guifeng was stunned and said in disbelief. Me? Surprise appeared on his face, but then he lowered his eyes and shook his head. I heard that ninjas need talent. I don't think I have talent in this area. As Uchiha Tunin ate, he said lightly, What is talent? Constitution, personality, and the way of thinking when exploring things. These things are called talent. However, these things can all be changed. Guan Guifeng frowned when he heard this. He said in a low voice, Lord Tunin, do you mean to change through hard work? Uchiha Tunin chuckled and shook his head. I've seen a pair of father and son. Their talent is very poor. But in the eyes of others, they are more hardworking than anyone else. Their daily training is terrifying. But that was not called hard work. They were more touched and self-hypnotized. They could endure the pain of their bodies, but they could not endure the pain in their minds. As I said, talent contains the way of thinking of constitution, character, and exploration of things. They are just blindly pursuing constitution. Of course, there was still a reward. But in this world, and even every individual, they were all multidimensional. When a person found that he had worked hard but had not received the expected reward, then he should think about whether there was a problem. There are many strong people in this world, and every one of them can be used as a reference to understand their own shortcomings. However, most people chose to ignore them. I admit that there is a saying that is right, that is the best for those who are suitable for themselves. However, there are a few people who have tried to understand other things. They are mostly guarding the only thing they have, and they use this sentence to comfort me. One road leads to death. Achiha Tunin said so much, and seeing that Guan Guifeng seemed to have heard it, he picked up the tea beside him and took a sip, continuing. You have actually already taken the two most important things of talent. Personality and way of thinking. A calm personality is always more suitable for living in this world than a loose personality. As for the way of thinking, it is the exact opposite. You have already done these two things. In a comfortable situation, you still want to use knowledge to constantly change yourself. Humans always want to change the world, but it is difficult to calm down and change themselves. This is nature, and also shackles. Only people who are mature and rational can break the shackles. When Guan Guifeng heard this, he frowned and said, Why do people have this kind of shackle? Achiha Tunin let out a long sigh and said, Without this shackle, when a person's temperament is not mature enough, he will go crazy. I don't know if you have noticed, but there are some people who won't admit it even if you tell them that you did something wrong. In fact, he knew in his heart that he was wrong, but he couldn't break the shackles in his heart. And some people would frown and think about it, and finally tell you, Hey, you are right. I did make a mistake before. Self-denial is humane, but reason can suppress this kind of human nature. Guan Guifeng heard this and nodded in realization. He stared at Achiha Tunin with a face full of worship and said, Every time I meet Lord Tunin, I can always hear the wisdom that I usually can't hear. These words are really amazing. Achiha Tunin smiled and wiped the corner of his mouth with a tissue. Ninjas can be said to be the highest class in this world. You are only one step away from ninjas, and that is physique. I can help you with this. 
Joy appeared on Guan Guifeng's face, but then he frowned and said in a deep voice, Lord Tunan, it was all thanks to you last time that I was allowed to be a new person. I can no longer repay your kindness. Uchiha Tunan chuckled and shook his head. Since you are willing to wait for me in the fire capital for so long, I have to express my gratitude to you. Don't be so shy. When you have the strength, it will be easier to repay me. Guan Guifeng nodded heavily and said, Lord Tunan, thank you. You are really a good person. Hearing this, the smile on Uchiha Tunan's face grew wider. He waved at Guan Guifeng and said, Come over here. Guan Guifeng immediately leaned forward and moved closer to Uchiha Tunan. Bear with it. It hurts a little. As soon as he finished speaking, Uchiha Tunan's right hand was already pressed on top of his head. Guan Guifeng's eyes suddenly widened, and his entire body slammed back into the chair. His hands covered his head, and he began to twitch and wail under the intense pain. Uh. Ah. Oh. Uchiha Tunin shook his head lightly, looked at the unfinished food in front of him, and picked up his chopsticks to eat gracefully. After all, Guan Guifeng had long recognized him. Since he wanted to repay him, Uchiha Tunin naturally gave him this opportunity. It could be considered an investment in advance. He hoped that he could be a dark horse and become famous. A quarter of an hour later, Guan Guifeng was sitting on the chair, his dry and cracked lips trembling slightly. He said in a voice so thin that it could not be heard, Lord Tunin, I already have the physique of a ninja. At this time, Uchiha Tunin had already finished eating and was drinking tea while looking at the scenery outside the window. Hearing Guan Guifeng speak, Uchiha Tunin turned around and pushed the things in front of him to Guan Guifeng. These ten chakra potions and this secret technique are for you. I hope that the next time I see you, you will make me look at you in a new light. When you feel that your strength has reached the level of Jinan, you can become a vagrant ninja. Be careful, the war is about to begin, don't lose your life. Guan Guifeng heard this and stared at the things on the table, his eyes bursting with fanaticism. He knew that from today on, his fate had been changed. He was no longer the ordinary person who was running around for his livelihood. All of this was due to the gift from the man opposite him. Guan Guifeng supported his weak body and came to the aisle. He knelt down in front of Uchiha Tunin and cowed out three times. Thank you, Lord Tunin. Chapter 225 Prelude to War Five days later On the shaded path near Kanoha, Uchiha Tunin walked leisurely, ignoring the ninjas that were passing by him. He saw groups of ninjas rushing out from the boundary of Kanoha's village. The two of them were standing outside the boundary. One by one, the Hyuga Hyundai opened his eyes and checked the ninjas who set out one by one, shouting non-stop. Quick, 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 Jianin, bring the supplies to the border first. Chunin and Jinin, follow behind and don't exhaust too much energy. Be careful not to fall behind alone. Intelligence personnel spread out. When the enemy village spies are found, send a signal immediately. Don't fight. Go back and ask the medical class what is going on. Our team is going to battle the Hidden Sand Village. Why is the antidote so little? Achiha Tunin came to the entrance of the village and smiled warmly at Hyuga Hizashi. Lord Hizashi, have we already started a war with Hidden Sand Village? Hyuga Hizashi glanced at Uchiha Tunin. Although the two races had always been at odds with each other. But considering Uchiha Tunin's amazing achievements, Hyuga Hizashi's usually expressionless face couldn't help but reveal a gentle smile. He said in a friendly manner. Yes, according to the information, Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Rock Village have formed an alliance. The main force is about to arrive at the border of Rain Country. They intend to enter through the border between Rain Country and Fire Country. Achiha Tunin nodded and said, It seems that this battle will be led by the Hyuga clan. As a big clan in Kanoha, naturally they have to stand on the front line. I was in charge of defending against the Sand Hidden Village, and Shikaku is in charge of the Rock Hidden Village. Your Achiha clan was arranged to guard the coastline the day before yesterday to defend against the Mist Hidden Village. 
the corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth slightly curved, and he was not surprised by Haruzan Saratobi's arrangement. He lightly said, I don't know who is the commander of the Hidden Cloud Village. After all, Kanoha's Sanin were fleeing for their lives, and there were only a few people in Kanoha who wanted to take the lead. Of course, the best choice would definitely be himself, but the war had just begun, and the outcome was hard to predict. Hiruzen Saratobi was definitely afraid that he would gain a lot of merit points and threaten his position. The main ninja clan is the Saratobi clan and Shimura clan, led by Jianin Minato. He will tell you the details after you meet the Hokage. Uchiha Tunin nodded thoughtfully and said, You go ahead. After saying that, he stepped into the enchantment and walked toward the Hokage building. On the side, Hyuga Hizashi kept staring at the back of Uchiha Tunin. He could not help but come over and ask in a deep voice, Chief, you seem to value that little brat Uchiha very much. Hyuga Hizashi narrowed his eyes and said, Little brat? I'm afraid that after the war ends, you won't dare to call him that. Hearing this, the Hyuga messenger raised his head and stared at the back of Uchiha Tunin. The feeling of Byakugan staring at him was immediately noticed by Uchiha Tunin. He saw Uchiha Tunin immediately stop, but he did not look back. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin was so alert, he quickly looked away. After all, it was very impolite to look at others with a Byakugan. The messenger lowered his head and whispered, Orochimaru. Hyugen Hizashi nodded, then shook his head and said in a deep voice, I don't even know which one is real. In front of the Hokage building, Hiruzen Saratobi was giving a pre-war speech to this group of troops that were about to enter the battlefield. Always remember the will of fire. In front of you is the battlefield. Behind you are your family and companions. They are waiting for you in the village. Suddenly, there was a slight commotion at the back of the team. The crowd spontaneously split into a path, and the ninjas lowered their heads with respect in their eyes. Lord Tunin. Lord Tunin. Uchiha Tunin smiled and nodded at them. He walked to the front of the group and looked up at Hiruzen Saratobi, who was wearing a royal robe. Hiruzen Saratobi took a deep breath and said with a kind smile, Tunin, you are back. Facing Hiruzen Saratobi, Uchiha Tunin had no respect on his face. He lightly said, I wonder how the Hokage-sama arranged for me in this war. Hiruzen Saratobi was slightly annoyed by Uchiha Tunin's attitude, but at this moment, he could only suppress it. He said in a low voice, The troops of Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Rock Village have gathered at the border of the Rain Country, preparing to break through the Rain Country and attack the Fire Country. The pressure on the battlefield over there is the greatest. Your strength is obvious to all, so I put you under the command of Lugio. Uchiha Tunin nodded thoughtfully and said, so I didn't go to the same battlefield as my clansmen. Hiruzen Saratobi narrowed his eyes and said meaningfully, with great power comes great responsibility. Uchiha Tunin nodded and said, I understand, but I have to spend a day preparing. The situation is urgent. I hope you won't delay the battle. Hiruzen Saratobi pretended to be dignified and took the opportunity to test Uchiha Tunin. However, in this situation, Uchiha Tunin was fearless and naturally would not let Haruzan Saratobi ride on his head. His expression immediately became cold and he quietly watched Haruzan Saratobi. The two of them stared at each other for a long time. In the end, for the sake of the overall situation, Haruzan Saratobi had no choice but to give up and give Uchiha Tunin a way out. Deal with your personal affairs as soon as possible. If you need anything, just let me know. Uchiha Tunin chuckled and said, No need to trouble Hokage-sama, it's just a small matter. After saying that, he turned around and walked away. Soon, Uchiha Tunin arrived at Kushina's residence. As the Kyubi Jinchuriki, Kushina Uzumaki's resident was not inferior to the Hataki families. Uchiha Tunin remembered that Naruto's home was Minato's small house on the second floor. It seemed that this old guy, Hiruzen Saratobi, had also occupied someone else's yard. Uchiha Tunin gently knocked on the door. Soon, Kushina came to the door with little Yanba in her arms and opened the door. 
As soon as she saw Uchiha Tunin, a look of surprise appeared on Kushina's face. She wanted to say hello, but was interrupted by Lilian Ball in her arms. Papa! Maybe Lilian Ball was too excited, but his voice was a little sharp. He stretched his hands forward, his little legs kicking about, as if he wanted Uchiha Tunin to hug him. Uchiha Tunin's face was full of love. He gently rubbed Lilian Ball's head, and then looked at Kushina. Nasan, has Minato Sensei and the others already set off? Kushina nodded and said, Yeah, he left yesterday. Kakashi and the others followed him. Come in and talk. No, I'll leave after a few words. I'm going to the battlefield soon. Achiha Tunin shook his head and said, During the days when I wasn't around, please help me take care of the Welfare Institute. Kushina patted her chest and said, No problem. Achiha Tunin smiled and took out a storage scroll from his storage bag. He handed it to Kushina and said, Take this money. If there are orphans, send them to the orphanage in time. Kushina took the scroll and said with a puzzled face, This is. Achiha Tunin reached out and adjusted his glasses, This is 500,000 new coins, it should be enough. Hearing that, Kushina immediately opened her eyes wide and said, Isn't that equivalent to 5 billion? Achiha Tunin nodded and said, It was given to me by the daimyo. Yes. I heard that you saved his highness. Kushina carefully put away the scroll, even though she had never been worried about eating or drinking since she was a child, but she had never seen such a huge sum of money. Five billion, how many S-level quests would that take? Then I'll be leading first. Time is a bit tight. After giving his instructions, Achiha Tunin reached out and pinched Lillian Ba's chubby cheeks, turning around and leading without any reluctance. Kushina looked at Uchiha Tunin's back and shouted, Tunin, you must be careful when you go to the battlefield. Uchiha Tunin paused slightly and nodded without looking back, I know. Chapter 226, Strategical Scheme Half an hour later, on the rooftop of the Hokage Rock Cliff, the blue sky wall was decorated with marble-like clouds, and from time to time, there would be a few birds cutting through the clouds. The leaves were scattered, and the breeze gently brushed the trees on the top of the mountain. A few leaves slowly floated down, flying towards Kanoha. Achiha Tunin came to the fence and closed his eyes. He opened his arms and took a deep breath. Then he slowly opened his eyes and looked at the busy pedestrians on the street below. Danzo had been waiting here for a long time. He tapped the railing with his fingers and said, The war came faster than I expected. Achiha Tunin arched his body slightly and put his elbows on the railing, saying slowly, What should come will always come. The longer you suppress it, the more fierce it will be. Danzo glanced at Achiha Tunin and said in a deep voice, You don't seem to be worried about Kanoha's situation at all. This time, the four countries are attacking the fire country. In the past few years, we lost so much of our top forces. Even I feel a lot of pressure. Achiha Tunin chuckled and said, Even Hokage-sama is not worried, why should I, Achunin, worry? Danzo hesitated for a moment and then said in a deep voice, Your ninja level has been promoted to Jounin. Now is the time of war, and Hiruzen Saratobi's right to speak is far greater than mine. Because of your existence, he specially arranged for Achiha's clan to attack Hidden Mist Village. The entire coastline was a defensive line, and with Jounin's ability to restrain, Achiha's clan could only adopt a defensive strategy. In this way, it would be very, very difficult for Achiha's clan to make contributions. Achiha Tunin narrowed his eyes and immediately said, Then transfer me under Shikaku's command and make the Achiha clan lose their high-end combat strength. No matter how many contributions I make in the Rain Country battlefield, Shikaku, the commander-in-chief, will take most of it. Victory. That was Nara Shikaku's command. I was defeated because my subordinates were not strong enough. As long as Kanoha can survive, his position will be more stable. The credit for defeating the enemies was Shikaku's privilege. Winning against the Hidden Sand Village, the credit goes to Hyuga. 
winning against the Hidden Cloud Village, the credit goes to Minato Sensei. The Inoshika Cho and the Hyuga clan are all loyal supporters of the Hokage. Even if Minato Sensei is close to me, he is still loyal to the Hokage Sensei. His arrangement is very good, isn't it? Danzo was silent. Ordinary ninjas would not think too much about these methods. Even if they knew that there was a problem with the strategy of Uchiha's clan against Miss Village. However, it was Uchiha's clan that was not likable in the village. No one would be willing to help them. Regardless of whether they were ninjas or civilians, most of them were willing to see Uchiha's clan suffer a setback. Hiruzen Saratobi made a simple plan and immediately became invincible. Danzo took a deep breath and looked at Uchiha Tunin. Although I am not on good terms with Hiruzen. But in this situation, I don't want to see you do anything against Kanoha. As long as the war is over, I am willing to fight for the benefits of the Uchiha clan. Hearing this, Uchiha Tunin sneered and looked at Danzo with a strange look. Danzo-san, you may be mistaken. I care about Kanoha, not Uchiha. Most of the Uchiha clan are rebellious. I never thought of fighting for any benefits for this clan. My heart is filled with the entire Kanoha, not a narrow clan. Danzo was happy to hear that. He had always hated the Uchiha clan. But because of Uchiha Tunin, he had to restrain his disgust. Unexpectedly, Uchiha Tunin actually had no sense of belonging to Uchiha's clan. This way, it would be great. A smile that had not been seen for a long time appeared on Danzo's cold face. Tunin, this old man really didn't misjudge you. Looking at the scenery below, Uchiha Tunin narrowed his eyes and said slowly, Danzo-san, even if Kanoha does not lose this war, it will still suffer great losses. There was obviously something wrong with the Hokage's strategy, but no one pursued it. However, if the losses were too great, the responsibility would have to be shouldered by someone. After Achiha Tunin's reminder, Danzo seemed to have grasped a key point and whispered, You mean? Sometimes, words were too clear to say. Achiha Tunin raised his palm and gently picked up a leaf with two fingers. He put it in front of his nose and sniffed. He smiled and said, When the time comes, I will fully support you to become the fourth Hokage. Danzo felt his heart burst open, and his breathing became slightly cramped. Do you have any requests? Achiha Tunin spread out his hands and said with a face of disbelief, What are you saying, Danzo-san? Everything I did was for the prosperity of Kanoha. Am I, Achiha Tunin, the kind of person in your heart who can't wait for profit? Danzo raised his eyebrows slightly, not knowing what to say. It should be said that Achiha Tunin had selfish motives. Whether it was the contents of the diary or the way he always acted, no one could find anything wrong with him. But to say that he was not selfish, Danzo could not believe it. After all, the knowledge and schemes that Uchiha Tunin usually showed were not something that ordinary ninjas could compare with. Danzo did not think that a smart person would be completely fearless, so he should have his own thoughts. Seeing that Danzo did not speak, Uchiha Tunin said in a low voice, I hope that after Danzo becomes the Hokage, do not forget me. I have always been eager to serve the villagers and get their approval. This is the value and significance of my life. If possible, the leader of Root and the leader of the Umbu are all good positions for the villagers. Achiha Tunin opened the Manjikyu and looked at Danzo. He pointed to his eyes and said, By the way, during the war, I suggest that you pay attention to not let Achiha clan suffer too many casualties. After all, with my eyes, we only need to mobilize a little, and Achiha clan will be used by us. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin had opened his Mangekyo, Danzo instinctively narrowed his eyes, avoiding Uchiha Tunin's line of sight, and silently nodded. What a joke, that was Mangekyo Sharingan, who dared to look straight at it. Seeing Danzo being so cautious, Uchiha Tunin smiled and shook his head, then turned and walked towards the sky. By the way, there seems to be a lot of capable people hiding in the village. I suggest that Danzo-san pay more attention to them and recruit them as soon as possible. With people like you as the Hokage, Kanoha will have bright a future. 
Achiha Tunin had come to talk to Danzo so much, naturally he did not really want to help Danzo ascend to the position of Hokage. However, he wanted Danzo to understand that the Achiha clan was one of the people he could use. He wanted Danzo to help him in logistics in case too many people of the Achiha clan died. These were all reserves of grain. If too many died, Achiha Tunin would feel guilty of wasting food. After a long time, Danzo breathed heavily and raised his palm to make a gesture. The next moment, a cat-faced ninja appeared behind Danzo, kneeling on one knee, and said, Danzo-sama, go and investigate the villagers of Kanoha. Those who have reached the level of Jinan, call them to root. Yes. The cat-faced ninja immediately used the skill to leave. Only then did Danzo turn around, raising his head to look at the statue on the rock, his eyes burning, muttering, Hiruzen, I am the best candidate for the Hokage. Everything was for Kanoha. Chapter 227 Future Planning On the way home, Achiha Tenen stopped by Fuyue's house to visit Achiha Makoto. He delayed Achiha's apprenticeship and asked her to help him purchase a batch of important materials. Ever since the Great Elder was forced to commit suicide, Achiha's clan has yet to elect a new Great Elder. After Achiha Fuyue, the clan leader, went to the battlefield, Achiha and Makoto were in charge of managing the clan's matters. As for Achiha Shershue, Achiha Tunin did not want to have too much contact with him, fearing that it would affect the formation of other gods. After returning home, Achiha Tunin comfortably soaked in a hot spring, sweeping away all the exhaustion in his body and mind. Then he began to clean the house, as well as trim the weeds in the courtyard. He took out all the dirty clothes and clothes that he wanted to take away from the wardrobe and washed them off. This time, he would probably not be able to come back for a year or so. Although ninjas should not be so pretentious, Achiha Tunin always had a slight obsession with cleanliness. On the battlefield, it was inevitable to kill a few people casually. If the blood splashed on the clothes, it would have to be cold water to wash them. There should be no tap water on the battlefield, so there would be more bacteria in the cold water in the river. It would be too troublesome to wash clothes with cold water. It was better to bring a few more clothes and change. After all, Achiha Tunin, who had gone to the fire capital, was not short of money. After carefully wiping the floor, Achiha Tunin raised his head and looked at the rows of wooden sculptures on the altar. He saw that the fruits placed in front of the wooden sculpture had already turned moldy. Achiha Tunin got up and threw the moldy fruits into the flowers to make fertilizer. He could not help but frown, it seems that I have to find someone to look after the house. It took an entire afternoon. Only then did Achiha Tunin finish cleaning up the room and put the clothes he wanted to take away into the storage scroll. Because he was in a hurry to go home. He did not buy any food. Achiha Tunin made a few rice balls to fill his stomach and lay down early to rest. After all, for the next period of time, he probably wouldn't have a chance to sleep well. The three battles had started, which meant that the general trend had arrived. He estimated that he wouldn't be able to stop in the future. Moreover, he had to plan the overall situation in a short period of time. With his current strength, there was basically no danger on the battlefield. No matter what he did, he had to consider whether he could gain benefits for himself. In Kanoha's ninjas, he had performed several times and had gained a part of the recognition. Then this war was worth considering. It was best to obtain recognition first, and then find a way to help these comrades to die. In the end, he would turn the tide and seize battle achievements. In this way, with strength and battle achievements, wouldn't it be a win-win situation? However, the war lasted for a long time, and it was impossible to always be in battle. During those free time, Achiha Tunin also planned to use it. He wanted to practice some celestial spells, and then do some scientific research to enrich his knowledge system. He believed that under his own stirring, Kanoha would definitely suffer heavy casualties. At the end of the war, he would be able to mobilize the drum regiment to force Haruzen Saratobi to abdicate. Of course, Danzo couldn't be promoted. Achiha Tunin was worried about such a bad guy being the Hokage, so wouldn't he push Kanoha's breeding farm into a pit of fire? 
he couldn't be promoted either. If he was promoted, then the Echiha clan would immediately take off. How could he play with the extermination of the clan and use his eye power to stack the eternal Mangekyo? He couldn't just raise his butcher's knife and cut down all of his clan members. Being poked in the spine was a small matter, and it would affect his future bewitching Naruto and Sasuke. And Hiruzen Saratobi and Shimura Danzo were the swords that Uchiha Tunin had exterminated. However, Uchiha's clan could not be completely destroyed, so he had to leave his bloodline behind just in case. If not for enough to kill all the eye power, then it would be a big loss. He couldn't do things to the extreme, he had to be careful and slow. After the war was over, he could take the initiative to transfer the leaked seedlings to the fire capital and let Naraku nurture them. Then he would find a chance to cut the mature leak. In this way, the first to take the position was still Minato. Moreover, he had to do his best to ensure the safety of Kanoha until Kushina came out with Naruto. Then he let Abito kill Minato and Kushina. In this way, he would be able to obtain the sealing technique and flying thunder god of the Uzumaki clan. Of course, the most important thing was that he had a relationship with Minato. With the convenience of being the director of the orphanage, he could naturally become Naruto's guardian. To be the father of this world's protagonist. The plan was quite good, but he still needed to pay attention to Obito. If there was a deviation in Obito, he wouldn't want to associate with Uchiha even if he didn't awaken his godlike Mangekyo. Then he would have to disguise himself as the masked man and kill Minato and Kushina. Of course, it would be better if Abito followed the original work. When Minato and his wife died, he would kill Abito and put on his mask. Thinking a little far, it was better to be down to earth. Lying on the bed, the corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curved up slightly. He turned over and fell into a deep sleep. Early the next morning, the sky was still dark. Uchiha Tunin got up and washed up, handing over new incense to the wooden sculpture on the altar. Please bless my plan. If nothing goes wrong with this plan, I promise you that after I learn Edo Tensei, I will summon you from the Pure Land and bring you to my Paradise Realm. Uchiha Tunin bowed to the wooden sculpture and turned to sit under the eaves, waiting quietly. Soon, someone knocked on the door. Uchiha Tunin immediately stood up and opened the door. Uchiha held two scrolls in her hands and said, Tunin Kuen, these are the things you asked me to prepare for you yesterday. The time was too short and most of the supplies were purchased. But you also know that in the war period, medical equipment is too scarce. Those precise instruments cannot be bought, and most of them are eliminated products. But it is still useful, but it is not so convenient to use it. Achiha Tenen reached out to hold a pair of glasses and said with a grateful face, It doesn't matter. Thank you so much. This is the medical ninjutsu collected by the Achiha clan as well as all kinds of medical knowledge. Most of these ninjutsu are relatively basic. The profound medical ninjutsu is in the medical class, and Uchiha can't get it. Uchiha Tunin took the two scrolls and stuffed them into his bulging ninja bag. I'm just worried that there won't be enough medical personnel on the battlefield, so I want to learn a few skills myself so that I can help my companions. Tunin Kuin is really thoughtful. Makoto narrowed her eyes. Uchiha Tunin seemed to have thought of something and said warmly, By the way, when Itachi grows up a little, you can let him get closer to Shershue. That child Shershue is very talented and has a good character. Achiha Makoto thought for a moment and nodded. Shershue? I got it. Achiha Tunin pointed at the house and said, I'm leaving. Please help me to issue a long-term mission in the Hokage building when you have time. My house needs someone to clean it for a long time. I put the reward on the table in the living room. No problem. After everything was settled, Achiha Tunin no longer delayed. His figure flashed, and he ran towards Kanoha's defense line. Chapter 228 Pre-War Meeting From Kanoha to the border of the rain country, it would take Jounin about two days to go at full speed. As for the Jinin who carried supplies, it would take about ten days to arrive. Not all supplies could be carried with storage scrolls. 
It must be known that storage scrolls were expensive, and it was impossible to equip every ninja. Uchiha Tunin had always used storage scrolls because Uchiha Tunin had always been relatively rich. From the beginning of his career, he had obtained a huge amount of pension. Not to mention now that Uchiha Tunin had a filial disciple like Naraku. He only needed to inform her that he was in a bad mood when he had no money. The money hit the card the next day. In the original work, after Orochimaru betrayed the Akatsuki organization, he had to rely on the name of Country of Heaven to get money in order to do research. The one with the most money was still the daimyo. Achiha Tunin did not quickly catch up with Jounin's team, but slowly fell behind the ninja team. There was nothing important to do if they went early. Most of them were on alert missions to prevent spies from the enemy from entering the border of the rain country. Nine days later. At the border between the rain country and the fire country, there was an orange mountain. The huge commander department was already built on the top of the mountain, surrounded by tents of various sizes. Judging from the number of tents, there were about 8,000 ninjas in the western front this time. In the commander tent, the new head of the Nara clan, Shikaku, was sitting in the main seat, while the left hand was sitting on the Hyuga Hizashi as well as the representative of the Aburim clan. The right hand was sitting on the head of the Yamanaka clan, Yamanaka Inoichi. This was the main ninja of the resistance to Hidden Rock Village and Hidden Sand Village. The members of the five great families were flourishing, and most of the clansmen with combat strength were mobilized to this side. The number of them reached around 2,000. Most of the Aburim clansmen were transferred to the defense line of Hidden Cloud Village by Haruz and Saratobi. After all, Hidden Cloud Village was under the greatest pressure. It did not mean that Hidden Cloud Village was stronger than Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Mist Village. Instead, it was the Hidden Cloud Village's line of defense, the Plains. However, on this side of the line, Kanoha had the unique natural natural protection. As long as the Kikyo Mountain can be defended, the coalition forces of the two major ninja villages will basically be unable to get through, and at most a few J, Nin will be missed. However, the rule of the ninjas was that they could not attack the civilians of the other countries during the war, and could only attack the ninjas. At most, Jaunin would only try to get some information, but he didn't dare to go to Kanoha to cause any trouble. If he went, he would just be sending military merits to the people left behind. Of course, there were more than ten representatives of other ninja clans sitting on the table. For example, the Kurama clan, the Inazuka clan, the Saratobi clan, the Shimura clan, etc. This was because every ninja had their own characteristics, so they sent a few people over just in case. When Choza saw that everyone was here, he shouted at the top of his voice, Shikaku, everyone is here. Hurry up and talk about the battle plan. Shikaku Nara sat in his seat and shook his head. Wait a minute, there's still someone who hasn't come. The sun messenger folded his arms across his chest and looked sideways at Shikaku Nara. Who else is there? Inoichi glanced at the representatives who were present one by one and counted their fat hands. A confused expression appeared on his face. The representatives of the various clans are here. The representatives of the various clans were all puzzled. Suddenly, a light laugh came from outside the tent. Such a big war, how can we lose the number one clan in Kanoha, the Uchiha clan? The curtain of the tent was lifted, and Uchiha Tunin, dressed in a white shirt and gold-rimmed glasses, walked in with a smile on his face. Reaching out to hold his glasses, he glanced around the crowd and said slowly, Everyone, I'm sorry for my tardiness. The moment the Hyuga saw Uchiha Tunin appear, his pupils suddenly shrank, and he recalled the situation at the boundary of Kanoha that day. Uchiha Tunin. Tunin. Tunin Kuin. All the representatives nodded to Uchiha Tunin kindly. After all, no one was an idiot to be able to get to this level. They would speak rudely to Uchiha Tunin. Moreover, the village had always said that Uchiha Tunin had the combat strength to rival the Sanin. With Uchiha Tunin joining in, it was also a good thing for them. Everyone liked to have a godlike teammate who could take them away. Shikaku immediately stood up from his seat the moment Uchiha Tunin came in. 
the Inoshikacho had always advanced and retreated together. When Yamanaka Inoichi saw that Shikaku Nara valued Uchiha Tunin so much, he immediately stood up. The hand under the table quietly pulled the elbow of Choza Akimichi. Although Choza Akimichi did not understand what was going on, he obediently stood up. Seeing this, the others also stood up. Shikaku put his hands on his knees and bowed deeply to Uchiha Tunin. Welcome to the Frontline Strategic Camp, please sit. The others also bowed to Uchiha Tunin. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly, and he wasn't humble either. He just sat directly across from Shikaku Nara. During a war, being modest, polite, and easygoing was completely useless. Strength was the key. The more arrogant he was, the more confident his teammates were. Everyone sat down one by one. Shikaku Nara coughed and said, Since everyone is here and we have enough time, let me tell you about the battle plan. Then, he came to the map behind him and said, This is the topographic map of the ninja realm. Everyone could see that when the country of river and the country of earth crossed paths, the terrain here suddenly rose. They passed through the border between the country of grass and the country of earth. As they continued to the country of rain, the terrain slightly lowered. The largest river of the country of earth also flowed from here into the country of rain. As for the wind nation and the land of rain, they were blocked by mountains that stretched for thousands of miles and also extended to the kingdom of rain. The land of rain was low in terrain and was located in a basin. The terrain was shaped like the mouth of a bottle. This was also the reason why every time there was a war in the ninja realm, there would be a war in the kingdom of rain. The place where we are now is called Kikyu Mountain. Here, Mount Kikyu just happened to be the tip of the slender bottle in rain country, like a bottle cap. As long as Mount Kikyu did not fall, the coalition forces of the two countries would not be able to attack. But even so, Mount Kikyu is not very steep. It is not a big obstacle for the ninjas. So we can't just defend here. We must push the front line forward and push it to the center of rain country. This is the location. This is the narrowest place at the other mouth of the bottleneck. We have to stop the allied armies of the two countries here and make them give up on the main forces to advance so that they can start fighting with us. But there is a problem. Our forces are too far from the allied armies of the two countries, so we must hold on for this battle. If we lose, we have to split up our forces and start the team combat mode to attack. Achiha Tunin suddenly interrupted, How many ninjas are there in the coalition army of the two countries this time? As soon as he finished speaking, everyone shifted their gazes to Shikaku Nara. Shikaku Nara was silent for a moment, and his eyes were solemn as he said, Close to 30,000, and among them, there are close to 20,000 ninjas from Hidden Rock Village. Originally, Shikaku did not intend to say this news, and was prepared to get away with it. After all, the difference in strength between the two sides was too great. Once it was said, it was very likely that the people on his side would lose their fighting spirit. Sure enough, when everyone heard this news, their faces all showed a dignified expression. The atmosphere in the tent was oppressive. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. His fingers tapped on the table and he said forcefully, There are so few people. Then hurry up and fight. I agree with this plan. A trace of surprise flashed in Shikaku's eyes when he heard this. He looked straight at Uchiha Tunin and said, Don't you need to think about it again? Everyone looked at Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Tunin shook his head indifferently, as if he did not care about the 30,000 Alliance army at all. I agree. Akimichi Choza raised his hand and said. Hyuga Hizashi also said, I agree. I believe in Shikaku Nara. Chapter 229 To the Battlefield Soon, all the representatives agreed with Shikaku's battle plan. Shikaku took a deep breath and announced, All right, everyone, let's take a break today and mobilize the troops to enter rain country tomorrow. Everyone got up and went back to their families to inform the ninja gathering place. However, Shikaku had left Uchiha Tunin alone. Shikaku Nara said with a serious face, 
The reason why I propose that plan is mainly because you have the combat ability to rival the Sanin. But I don't know you well, so I want to ask your opinion. Because in a head-on battle like this, losing would greatly affect morale. Of course, for us, we only need to persevere and not be defeated. As long as they find that the front is unable to break through our defense line, they will choose to retreat to the rear to find an opportunity. At this time, it will be the second stage of the war, the stage of the team battle. The two sides send out combat squads to enter the rain country to assassinate each other. Achiha Tunin did not directly answer Shikaku's question. Instead, he pointed to the ground and said, The commander department will be set here in the future, right? Shikaku hesitated for a moment and nodded, yes. Then I will go and prepare my laboratory. As for tomorrow's battle, Achiha Tunin turned and walked out. When he lifted the curtain of the tent, Achiha Tunin paused for a moment, and then he looked sideways and said slowly, Prepare the team to fight. A moment later, Achiha Tunin arrived at the foot of Mount Kikyo. He made a series of hand seals and patted the mountain wall in front of him. Because he had learned the special chakra control technique on the scroll of the column. It can allow chakra to change shape according to one's mind, and it can affect the corresponding substance. However, this move can only be used against solid or liquid. For example, earth or water. For example, lightning, wind, and fire, there was no way to do it. Achiha Tenen's chakra quickly spread out, controlling the nearby soil, and then using his mind to control the soil to move. Two hours later, a passage the size of a person appeared on the mountain wall in front of Achiha Tenen. Achiha Tenen withdrew his palm and walked in. After winding along the passage for a while, Achiha Tenen came to an empty secret room. It was pitch black inside. Achiha Tenen took out a few glowing gems from the fire capital from the scroll and embedded them on top of his head. Only then did the secret room light up. This secret room was just an ordinary cave. The walls and ground were a bit uneven. Seeing this, Achiha Tenen couldn't help but frown and touch his chin, muttering, it seems that the cultivation time is too short and the control is still a lot lacking. Finished speaking, Achiha Tenen continued to release ninjutsu and began to cultivate in this new laboratory. The battlefield was most suitable for human experiments and there were available human materials everywhere. Achiha Tunin had already learned enough ninjutsu. There was no way to surpass the predecessors just by learning the things of the predecessors. In this aspect, Achiha Tunin had to learn from Orochimaru. Thinking of this, Achiha Tunin reached out and patted his forehead, and a look of regret appeared on his face. Why did you want to cut the weeds and eliminate the roots? It's good to leave a line behind. The number one scientist in the ninja world was killed by him just like that. Thinking about it now, it was really a pity. If he had known earlier, he should have let Orochimaru go and then capture him alive after he became stronger. Even if he couldn't get approval, it would be great to search Orochimaru's soul after he killed a few of the Yamanaka clans and learned how to search his memories. It was a waste. With this in mind, Achiha Tunin had already expanded several secret rooms in the belly of the mountain. The passage was wide and open. As for whether it was safe, leaving a shadow clone was safer than anything else. After all, his shadow clone also had the Vajra unbreakable body. After spending half a day, it was already late at night. Achiha Tunin did not stay up to work, but returned to his tent to rest. In tomorrow's battle, he still needed to rest. Don't look at how confident Achiha Tunin was in front of Shikaku. However, the other side was the 30,000 ninjas, so Achiha Tunin wouldn't look down on them. It was said that this time, Anoki and Sandame Kazakage personally went on stage as the leader. Early in the morning the next day, the horizon on the horizon lit up with a layer of gold, and the dazzling Venus was suspended on top of Mount Kikyo. Under the arrangement of Shikaku, the Kanoha Ninja army crossed the border of Rain Country and set off for the battlefield. Only less than a thousand logistics troops were left to guard Mount Kikyo. As soon as they stepped into the Rain Country, Achiha Tunin found that there were swamps and rivers everywhere. 
He didn't know if it was because Uchiha Tunin and the others were lucky that they didn't encounter any rain on the way here today. Just like that, Uchiha Tunin followed behind Shikaku and ran. Suddenly, Shikaku looked back at Uchiha Tunin and said in a low voice, Tunin, when the two armies meet, don't rush up directly. Wait until the other side's experts take action first and use up their strength, then you can take action. This kind of battle was not afraid of casualties. As long as one could kill a strong person, the increase in morale was far more than killing hundreds of ordinary ninjas. Similarly, if they found that they could not win, they would immediately retreat. Once you die on the battlefield, we can only ask for reinforcements. Uchiha Tunin raised his eyebrows and said with slight surprise, I didn't expect Lord Shikaku to actually trust me. Shikaku nodded and said, That time when you were fighting Tsunade, I saw you using a very strong defensive ninjutsu from a distance. The Buddha that this ninjutsu summons is big enough. I believe that on the battlefield, it can also bring great deterrence to the enemy. What you need to be careful of is the ninjutsu of the sand-aimed Suchikage. According to the previous information, his dust release was extremely lethal, and you could only dodge it. At this moment, the Izashi Hyuga in front slowed down and came to Uchiha Tunin's side. He said worriedly, Remember not to be too far away from me when you make your move. Your ninjutsu should consume a lot of chakra, so I think you won't be able to last long. If you can't hold on any longer, run to my side immediately. Nara Shikaku said with a solemn face. That's right, the Great Hyuga Clan's ability to reverse the situation can be called absolute defense. When the time comes, remember not to force yourself. Uchiha Tunin nodded lightly and said, All right, I understand. A moment later, his Ashi Hyuga hesitated for a moment, but he still asked the question in his heart. Speaking of which, will Hanzo the Salamander stop us like he did in the last battle? Shikaku shook his head and said, At the beginning of the war, Hanzo announced that the rain country was neutral and would not participate in the war between the five major countries. So we don't have to worry. After all, he is a man known as the legendary Shinobi, and he will not go back on his word. Hizashi Hyuga heaved a sigh of relief and said, That's good. This way, I will be more at ease. Chapter 230 The War Begins in the distance, a fiery red sun rose in the purple fog, erupting dazzling flames around it. The golden light was like a magical giant hand, slowly pulling apart the soft fog curtain, and the whole earth suddenly opened up. After half a day of rushing, the Kanoha army finally arrived at the camp. On the left was a mountain range that seemed to be cut by a sharp sword, and on the right was a magnificent river. From the tall mountain in the distance, it flowed down. On the flat ground in front of them, the two armies of Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Rock Village had been waiting there for a long time. Obviously, they thought of the same thing as Shikaku. The two allied forces wanted to rely on their numerical advantage to defeat the Kanoha army in one go and then cross the Kikyu Mountain to attack Kanoha. In order to make them retreat, Shikaku chose to start the team battle mode. Achiha Tunin stood in the middle of the army, activated his three Magnetama Sharingan, and looked into the distance. Above the army of Hidden Sand Village, a man was holding his arms in front of his chest and was lifted in the air by a pitch black sand iron. Hidden Rock Village's Inoki was even more excessive, floating in the sky, looking down at the people below. The two could be said to be acting tough. Inoki glanced at Shikaku and the others in the middle of the army and sighed. It seems that Kanoha really has no one left. At first glance, the commanders are all juniors. Sandame Rakage coldly snorted and said, One of Kanoha's Sandin died, two defected, and their Hokage is getting old. It seems that there is no suspense in this battle. Anoki looked at the Rakage and said, Don't take it lightly, after all, it is Kanoha. The two of us will wait and see. If we find a strong person, we will attack together. The sand-aimed Sushikage obviously did not take Anoki's words seriously, he shrugged and said, it doesn't matter. At this time, Shikaku took a deep breath and shouted, My two lords, are you really not going to care about the alliance and start a war? 
Anoki was about to say a few high-sounding words, but was interrupted by the Sandame Rakage. Don't talk to them. The information shows that they have less than 10,000 people. Let's end this quickly to avoid any accidents. Anoki nodded heavily and said, Okay. Attack! As the order was issued, the hidden sand village ninjas rushed toward Kanoa's army. Who? Shikaku breathed out heavily and shouted, Remember not to rush forward blindly. Don't mess up the formation. Everyone, go! As soon as his voice fell, Kanoa's ninjas also rushed out. At the same time, Inoichi came to Shikaku and put his hand on his forehead. With the Yamanaka clan, he used the mind transmission technique and transmitted Shikaku's command to every Kanoha ninja present through his mind. The distance between the two armies gradually closed, and they were already within the range of ninjutsu. However, the Sandam Kazakage shouted, Wind Escape Troop. The next moment, the momentum of Hidden Sand Village slowed down a bit, and the Wind Escape Troop ninjas rushed to the front, their hands forming a seal in unison. However, they heard a shout from the battlefield. Wind, air wave! As soon as the Wind Escape squad began to form hand seals, Shikaku quickly commanded in his heart. Kanola's formation also changed. Water escape, water wall. In the direction of the Hidden Sand Village, a dense amount of air bombs were coming towards the Kanoha army. At the same time, Kanola's water escape ninjas shift in front of them spat out water. The water fell to the ground, forming a water wall that was more than 10 meters tall. The air bombs hit the water wall, causing a series of explosions, splashing everywhere, but they failed. Shikaku asked Inoichi in his mind, are the remaining ninjas ready? Inoichi replied in his heart, ready. More than a hundred ninjas formed a square with their hands and aimed at their targets. The Sandame Rakage frowned and said, not good, that's Kanoha's Yamanaka clan. Anoki stroked his beard and said, I've been prepared for this. Earth Chakra Troop, do it. The rock ninja running in front quickly made a series of hand seals. Earth Release, Myriad Earth Flow Wall. Just before the mind-controlling jutsu was activated, a wall of earth that was dozens of meters tall and hundreds of meters long blocked the two armies. At this time, the Yamanaka clan also released their ninjutsu. In an instant, the hundreds of mountain ninjas all fainted to the ground. There was no change in Shikaku's expression. He asked in his heart, How long until they wake up? About five minutes. Shikaku nodded his head, seeing that the two armies were about to meet, and the earth flow wall was also rapidly declining because of the loss of maintaining its chakra. However, Shikaku shouted in his heart, Akimichi clan, act according to the plan, remember not to roll in a straight line, you have to roll in an arc. As soon as his voice fell, the Akimichi clan that was rushing at the front jumped up one after another and launched the Nakudan Sencha. The Nakudan Sencha abruptly pierced through the earth current wall that was not maintained by Chakra and made large holes in the earth current wall. Now is the time. Shikaku shouted in his heart. Hundreds of fire escape ninjas in the second echelon all made hand seals. Fire escape, great fireball technique. The big fireball smashed into the earth flow wall and evaporated the water in the blink of an eye. The earth flow wall also hardened into an earth wall. At the same time, the Nara clan behind them all raised their seals and shouted, Shadow imitation! One black shadow after another rushed forward, just passing through the big hole in the earth wall. Only then did Uchiha Tunin notice that the sun was behind Kanoha, pulling everyone's shadows longer. Shikaku used the position of the sun to increase the length of the shadow imitation of the Nara clan. After the shadow imitation passed through the earth wall, it borrowed the shadow behind the earth wall and increased its length again. It was a very good tactic, but how did he calculate the reaction of the enemy? Uchiha Tunin looked meaningfully at the solemn expression of Shikaku. However, after the Nara clan shadow imitation passed through the earth wall, they immediately controlled the front row of ninja coalition forces behind the earth wall. The Nakudan Sensha of the Akimichi clan rushed into the crowd and wreaked havoc. After turning a circle, they rolled back from the big hole in the earth wall. 
Achiha Tunin's eyes narrowed slightly, and he was even more satisfied with the performance of the Inoshikacho combo. In the eyes of Achiha Tunin, such a unique ninja clan had always been high-quality food. These are all treasures. Now then, it's my turn. Achiha Tunin would not forget his plan. The current Kanoa ninjas could not afford too many casualties, and most of them had yet to offer their approval. Achiha Tunin had always remembered that the system had three ways of agreeing, emotional recognition, ideology recognition, and strength recognition. Achiha Tunin had used the most emotional recognition, and his experience was the most profound. The best way to gain emotional recognition was to take advantage of others when they were in a difficult situation and take advantage of others when they were alone. In this way, the recognition of strength was to make others stand up when they found that they were not strong enough. The battlefield was the home field where strength recognized. How to set up a battlefield character By referring to Achiha Madara Chapter 231 Overwhelming In the distance, seeing that Shikaku's tactic was effective, the Sanding Kazakage did not have much of a reaction. Although Shikaku's tactic was very fancy, he only lost a few hundred of ninjas controlled by the shadow. And most of these ninjas were Jinin. They were originally considered cannon fodder. As for the other Chinin and Jounin, apart from a few who had no choice but to resist due to not having enough space to dodge, they were injured. The others had already dodged. The Sandang Kazakage coldly snorted with disdain. Humph, no matter how good the tactics are, they will immediately start close combat. As long as they started close combat, then the Kagutsu of Hidden Sand Village would be useful. A Hidden Sand Village ninja, with several or even dozens of Kagutsu Master, would be able to take on several Kanoha ninjas at the same time. Of course, this did not include the Hyuga ninjas. After all, the Hyuga was good at close combat, and with the Byakugan that could detect any chakra inside any object, they were simply the natural enemies of the puppet ninjas. At the same time, Achiha Tunin slowly reached out and took off the gold-rimmed glasses. He handed it to Shikaku Nara who was beside him and said, Take it. Shikaku Nara subconsciously took the gold-rimmed glasses and said with a puzzled face, What are you doing? The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly, and he loosened the buttons on his shirt. He said lightly, It's time to start the dance. Then, he squatted down slightly. Shikaku Nara frowned and explained loudly, Tunin, we still have a follow-up battle plan. It is not the time for you to make a move. Achiha Tunin's expression froze in an instant, and his body burst out with a strong chakra airflow, and his momentum instantly swept a radius of hundreds of meters. The ground under his feet cracked, and spiderweb-like cracks spread on the ground. His eyes instantly changed from three Magatama to a Manjikyu, and his legs suddenly exerted force. Bang! A large circular pit suddenly appeared on the spot. Achiha Tunin turned into a black shadow and rushed straight into the sky. Anoki, who was far away, narrowed his eyes and said in a low voice, Who is that? The Sandane Kazakage narrowed his eyes and said with a serious face, The speed is too fast to see clearly. It should be a physical skill master. Achiha Tunin's figure became higher and higher, and in the blink of an eye, he had already surpassed the height of Anoki. In the eyes of Achiha Tunin, the people on the battlefield gradually became as small as ants. A sneer flashed across the corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth. He formed seals with both hands and shouted, Immortal Technique, Flame of Annihilation. Boom! The sky was filled with flames as they rushed towards the allied forces of the two countries. Everyone on the battlefield was attracted by this huge scene at the same time. Retreat! Anoki, Sandin Kazakage, and Shikaku shouted at the same time. He ordered the ninjas to retreat. However, the fire was extremely fast. In the eyes of Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Rock Village ninjas, it was simply an existence that covered the sky. At this critical moment, the leader of Hidden Rock Village's Earth Escape Troop said with an ugly expression, You guys retreat first, Earth Escape Troop will block it with me. Hundreds of members of the Earth Escape Troop activated their jutsu and shouted in unison, Earth Release, Myriad Earth Flow Wall. 
they desperately release their chakra in an attempt to block the terrifying fire. The earth flow wall formed in an instant. Finally, when Uchiha Tenen's flame of annihilation reached its peak, it blocked the outside. As soon as they came into contact, they saw that the earth wall was burned to the point of rolling white smoke. The high temperature seemed to burn the air. It's so hot! Many ninjas near the earth wall couldn't stand the residual heat, and they screamed and retreated. Retreat! The ninjas of Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Rock Village turned around and ran. Behind the red flame curtain, Achiha Tunin's indifferent voice came out. Immortal Technique, Nine Rock Pillar Technique. Rumble! Nine enormous stone pillars rose up from the ground. One of them firmly caught Achiha Tunin, who was about to land, and lifted him to the highest point in the audience. Achiha Tunin folded his arms across his chest and looked coldly at the fleeing sand village and rock village ninjas. He had no intention of continuing to attack. After all, the main theme of this battle was to act tough. And to destroy their enemy's morale. Gulu. One after another, the sound of saliva swallowing could be heard from among the Kanoa ninjas. Everyone looked up at the unreachable figure on the stone pillar, their minds buzzing and blank. He has become stronger than what we had expected. What a terrifying talent. Shikaku, who had collected information about Uchiha Tunin, muttered, his eyes looking a little dull. The Sand Village and the Rock Village ninjas retreated a kilometer before stopping, standing in place and gasping for breath. Many of the Jinin and Chunin who had never seen the world were shocked. They said foolishly, What kind of monster was that just now? Is it the Hokage? We are not on the same level at all. How much chakra does that ninjutsu cost? After a moment of chaos, everyone looked at Uchiha Tunin. They saw that Uchiha Tunin's eyes were slightly lowered, looking at the earth wall just now. The earth flow wall had completely solidified after being baked by the high temperature of flame of annihilation, and its surface seemed to be a little clean. The earth flow wall was a little high, so Uchiha Tunin could not see all the enemies in front of him. An eyesore. In front of everyone, Uchiha Tunin spat on the earth flow wall in front of him. The saliva hit the wall of earth and created a small hole. In an instant, spiderweb-like cracks spread around the center of the small hole. Crash! The sound of porcelain shattering rang out and the earth wall collapsed like a domino. It turned out that after the soil wall had been baked, it had been baked into a texture similar to that of ceramic. The visual impact of this scene was a little too strong. It immediately shocked everyone on the battlefield. In the distance, Jounin of Hidden Rock Village, who was standing in front of him, did not know if he wanted to brush up his presence and shouted, Damn it! Who are you? Achiha Tenen slightly raised his eyebrows and secretly used the sound of wind to transmit his voice to everyone's ears. He said arrogantly, The weak are not worthy to know my name. As his voice fell, he saw the kaleidoscope in Uchiha Tunin's eyes burst out a dazzling red light. The Sandang Kazakage quickly reminded, Don't look at his eyes. Ah! Ah! Suddenly, more than a hundred ninjas in the Allied army cried out in pain and fell to the ground. This included the hidden rock village's Jounin. Anoki looked very serious and moved closer to the Sandang wreckage, whispering, he should be the first genius of Kanoha who killed Orochimaru and defeated Tsunade, Achiha Tunin. The little ghost of the Achiha clan? The Sandin Kazakage said with a gloomy face. He seems to be stronger than the Sanin. He should be the trump card sent by Kanoha. It's time for us to make our move. The two quietly looked at each other and secretly began to activate their jutsu. Chapter 232 Overwhelming 2 on top of the towering stone pillar, Achiha Tunin unbuttoned the buttons on his shirt as he spoke in a clear voice. From the moment I stood here, I have the final say on when the war will end. With that, he tore off his shirt and threw it behind him. The light of the sun shone on Achiha Tunin from behind, illuminating his back and shoulders with a golden glow. In the eyes of Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Rock Village ninjas, because of the light, they could only see the majestic black silhouette on the towering stone pillar and a pair of scarlet Mangekyo Sharingan. 
The visual explosion of Uchiha Tunin's figure formed a sharp contrast with the previous gentle image. At this time, Anoki's original body quietly used the super light rock technique, moving a boulder from the distant mountain top to the clouds above Uchiha Tunin. Die, little devil. From everyone's point of view, the huge rock suddenly shot out from the clouds and smashed down towards Uchiha Tunin's head. As the huge rock got closer and closer to the ground, the shadow became bigger and bigger. Be careful. Shikaku's pupils suddenly shrank as he shouted. At the same time, he quickly sent a message to the Akimichi clan. Quick, use the Baika no Jutsu to hold on. Akimichi Choza had a panicked expression as he replied in his heart, This won't do. The stone pillar is too high and the Baika no Jutsu won't be able to reach it. However, Achiha Tunin only glanced sideways and glanced at the huge rock that was smashing down. At this time, Anoki's eyes were cold, he made a hand seal and said, Earth, super heavy rock technique. The speed of the giant stone suddenly increased a bit, and under the gravity of super heavy rock technique, the kinetic energy contained in it increased by countless times. In a flash, the giant stone was about to touch Achiha Tunin's head. Anoki had a proud smile on his face. He didn't dodge. He was simply courting death. He really thought it was just an ordinary stone. Seeing this, the same thought flashed through the minds of the ninjas on Kanoha's side. Finished. Achiha Tenen gently raised his right hand and made a gesture of knocking on the door. In a flash, he gently knocked on the heavy boulder. Bang! A shocking scene occurred. With a light tap, Achiha Tunin smashed the boulder into pieces. Countless pieces of gravel splashed and fell on the ground, creating deep pits. Anoki's eyes almost popped out as he exclaimed in disbelief, How is this possible? Ding! Obtain the recognition of Hyuga Satoru. Ding! Obtain the recognition of Akimichi Ibra. Ding! Obtain the same recognition as Isuzu Nara. Ding! Gain the recognition of Hyuga Kojiro. Ding! Gain the recognition of the mountains Akimichi Rinjo. A series of system notifications kept ringing in Uchiha Tunin's heart. Too, too strong. This is the strength that can rival the Sanin. Speaking of which, I also participated in the last ninja war. The three of them did not seem to be so exaggerated. This guy seemed to be using Tsunade Sama's physical force just now. Sheesh. Achiha Tunin patted the dust on the back of his right hand, raised his head and sneered. Little old man, at such an old age, you still play the trick of smashing stones. After saying that, Achiha Tunin ignored the angry eyes of the Rock Village Ninja and turned to look at the Kanoha Ninja behind him. He waved his hand and said with a gentle face, Mr. Shikaku, command our troop to get back and don't interfere with my killing. Uh, oh. It was only then that Shikaku Nara recovered from his shock. He immediately nodded his head and ordered, Everyone, retreat and give Lord Tunin space to display his abilities. From the moment he appeared, Achiha Tunin had always been extremely arrogant. However, the feelings of different positions were different. For Kanoha's ninjas, they would only feel extremely good. Think about it, your teammates are killing in all directions, pressing the enemy into the ground and rubbing against each other, constantly spouting some vulgar words to ridicule the other. Do you hate it? You will only feel a sense of security. At this time, the Sandan Kazakage was secretly using sand iron to spread towards Achiha Tunin from underground. No ordinary ninja could detect the movement of his sand. However, the Sandan Kazakage knew that someone at Achiha Tunin's level, he would definitely be the first to notice. Therefore, this required someone to be the bait to attract Achiha Tunin's attention. He is only one person, and his chakra is limited. As long as we kill him, we will definitely win this battle. Everyone, don't be afraid. Charge! Following the Sandane Kazakage's command, even though the Sand Village Ninja was afraid in their heart, they still forced himself to rush towards Achiha Tunin. The Sandane Kazakage naturally did not want to only let the ninjas of his village act as cannon fodder and let the ninjas of Rock Village watch the show. 
he immediately looked at Anoki, who was flying back to the village, and said coldly, Suchikich Sama, we are allies. Anoki naturally understood the meaning of the words, and immediately shouted, Ninjas of Rock Village, attack together. As soon as he finished speaking, a dense torrent of ninjas rushed towards Uchiha Tunin. Charge! Kill him! Uchiha Tunin, who was on the stone pillar, crossed his arms before his chest and quietly watched the stream of people rushing towards him. He muttered. Sure enough, those who can become the Kage of a village are all ruthless characters. The sand and iron in the depths of the ground was simply too conspicuous for Uchiha Tunin, who had the addition of the Byakugan. The battlefield was too big, and ordinary people could not see that far. But don't forget that the visual distance of the Byakugan was linked to strength when the vast crowd was about to reach them. Only then did Uchiha Tunin unhurriedly form a seal. Then, he shouted, Immortal Technique, Earth River. Rumble! The entire battlefield suddenly shook. The ground that had been burnt to a crisp by the flame of annihilation actually softened at a speed visible to the naked eye. The next moment, mud gushed out from the bottom of the stone pillar like a tide and rushed towards the crowd that was rushing over. The dark brown mud flowed like waves, rolling and beating continuously. Earth escape, thousand mile earth flow wall. However, the moment the ten thousand mile earth flow wall appeared, it was destroyed by the incoming mud flow. The power of immortal arts was not something that ordinary ninjutsu could compare with. This was a qualitative difference. Seeing that the ten thousand miles earth flowing wall, which had been built repeatedly, was useless, the group of ninjas were immediately dumbfounded. They all stopped. Some chose to turn around and run, while others chose to use ninjutsu to resist. Earth escape, earth flowing wall technique. Water escape, water array wall technique. Damn it! I only know fire escape technique. It's too late. Let's go up the mountain. However, no matter what kind of escape technique they used, they just hesitated a little and missed the best chance to escape. The earth flow that was like a giant thunder was like an army of thousands of men and horses. It was extremely violent and roared as it ran. It chased after the ninja army that was running back. In every blink of an eye, countless ninjas were submerged. The mud flow continued to rush towards the positions of hidden rock village and hidden sand village ninjas amidst countless cries and whines. Chapter 233 Overwhelming 3 Of course, most of Jounin was relatively alert, and each used a variety of methods to avoid the sweeping of the mudslide. But those ordinary Chunin and Jinin were miserable. Save me! Give me a hand! No, I can't pull it! Let go, I'm going to fall! Bastard! Many Jin and S were swept up by the mud current, and they stretched out their hands with great difficulty, asking for help from their companions on the mountain wall on the left side of the battlefield. However, the huge pulling force quickly pulled the Jin who had extended a helping hand into the mud stream. In the end, none of the other ninjas who had attached their chakra to the mountain wall dared to help, and could only watch helplessly as their companions were swallowed up by the flood. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin alone was able to defeat tens of thousands of ninjas, the Kanoha ninjas were all excited to the point that their faces turned red, and their eyes were filled with worship. In the world of ninjas, the respect of the strong was engraved in the bones. Especially in the battlefield. Ding obtained the recognition of Saratobi Hiroshi. Ding obtained the recognition of Shimura Atari. Ding obtained the recognition of Aburame Kazuo. From the beginning to the end, the system notifications from the bottom of Uchiha Tunin's heart never stopped. Even he didn't know how many Kanoha ninjas recognized him. However, when the number reached a certain level, the repeated blood and secret techniques were just adding flowers to the brocade. This time, Uchiha Tunin's main target was still the Ino Shikacho and Hyuga clan. Thinking about it now, he couldn't wait to taste it. A strange smile appeared on Uchiha Tunin's lips. At this time, the vast and mighty mud current was about to reach the enemy army camp. Anoki glanced at the Sandame Kazakage and saw that the Sandame Kazakage quietly nodded to him. He immediately clapped his hands and shouted, 
Earth release, multiple Earth nuclei. The ground in front of the Allied army camp collapsed toward the ground, forming a huge trench that connected to the river on the right side of the battlefield. When the mud rushed here, it poured into the trench and rushed along the trench toward the river. At the same time, the sand and iron of the Sandane Kazakage had been spread all over the ground near Uchiha Tunin. Attack! The Sandane Kazakage shouted and rushed toward Uchiha Tunin under the support of the sand and iron. Anoki's hands turned into shadows as he shouted, Earth Escape Earth Stone Dragon Technique. Roar! The earth trembled as a huge earth dragon broke through the earth. It roared towards Uchiha Tunin. At the same time, a large amount of sand and iron broke through the soil and turned into a pair of giant hands that grabbed Uchiha Tunin's figure. Nara Shikaku opened his eyes wide and shouted, Be careful! A sinister smile appeared on the Sandane Kazakage's face. He laughed loudly and said, Die, arrogant little Uchiha brat! Magnetic Sand Escape, Sand Burial the pitch-black sand iron hand that wrapped around Uchiha Tunin twisted forcefully. The gap between the iron and sand suddenly tightened, turning into an airtight iron ball, trying to crush Uchiha Tunin with great pressure. At the same time, the huge earth and stone dragon was already close. It's over! Shikaku's hands trembled, his knees went soft, and he knelt down powerlessly. The group of Kanoha ninjas also revealed sorrowful expressions. It was because of this level of ninjutsu and the height of the stone pillars that they couldn't help at all. At this critical moment, Achiha Tunin's indifferent voice came from the iron. Is that all? Suddenly, a golden hand of chakra materialized out of the iron and grabbed the nose of the earth dragon. For a moment, the earth dragon struggled and roared, but it could not move. You can't please me at all. As his voice fell, the golden hand gently squeezed. Bang! The earth dragon instantly disintegrated into huge pieces of rock, falling towards the ground. The next moment, rays of golden light shot out from the gaps between the sand and iron, as if a small golden sun was wrapped in the sand iron. What's going on? The sand in Kazakage was sweating profusely. His right hand was in the shape of a tiger's claw and he wanted to clench his fist tightly. However, there seemed to be a huge repulsive force in his palm that he couldn't squeeze no matter what. Bang! An earth-shattering explosion sounded, and countless grains of sand and iron were blown away. A golden warrior that was even larger than a mountain stood proudly in the arena, and his entire body seemed to be burning with a golden-colored chakra flame. Meanwhile, Achiha Tinan stood in front of the golden warrior with his hands crossed over his chest and looked at the allied forces of the two countries as if he was looking at an ant. What kind of monster is this? The Sandane Kazakage exclaimed and extended his wings made of sand and iron, retreating far away. Anoki looked at the behemoth in front of him, his pupils trembled and his face showed fear. I remember this. This is... Achihas Manjiku Technique Susanu The Sandane Kazakage said with an ugly expression, This thing seems very strong, do you know the weakness of this thing? Anoki seemed to have thought of something terrifying, his whole body slightly trembled, staring at the golden warrior, his complexion was very serious, this thing has no weakness. It seemed that he was ready to retreat at any time. Before that, he would find an opportunity to fight. Anoki said in a deep voice, Mr. Sandane Kazakage, this battle is not something ordinary ninjas can participate in. Later, I will use the dust explosion to see if I can defeat him. I need you to help me attract his attention. The Sandane Kazakage looked at the oppressive golden warrior and swallowed his saliva. His eyes narrowed as he took a deep breath and said, No problem. Immediately, the two of them shouted, Ninjas of Rock Village, Listen up, retreat to the camp, and wait for orders. Ninjas of Sand Village, listen up, retreat. The ninjas of the two countries ran away, leaving only Anoki and the Sandane Kazakage floating in the sky. Ding, obtained the recognition of. Ding, obtained the recognition of. Ding, obtained the recognition of. Achiha Tunin had his back to Kanoha's ninjas. 
listening to the endless system notifications, an intoxicating expression appeared on his face. It should be about time. If I show my might again, this battle is over. Thinking about it, Achiha Tunin's eyes suddenly narrowed, and his expression instantly became indifferent and emotionless. The white clouds above his head began to rotate rapidly, and the clouds in the sky seemed to have received a great attraction, quickly gathering towards the sky above the battlefield. Rumble. The angry thunder came from the clouds, and the mountains echoed for a long time, and the sound was like the sound of thousands of drums. Blue electric arcs began to appear on the body of the golden warrior, and they started to move around on the surface of the solidified chakra. In the next moment, Achiha Tunin controlled the golden warrior to lift his leg and move forward. In the forehead of the golden warrior, Achiha Tunin's black hair was flying in all directions. Because he had activated the soul of Thunder God, there was no trace of human emotion between his eyebrows. He coldly said, Today, I will show you what real ninjutsu is. Dance, please me to your heart's content. On the peak of the mountain far away, a red-haired teenager was lying on the ground, sticking his head out of the cliff, looking at the battlefield with a fascinated face. On Kanoha's side, Hyuga Hizashi saw Uchiha Tunin showing his power, and the enemy was hurriedly retreating. He immediately suggested to Shikaku. The enemy is retreating, should we chase? Shikaku shook his head. Don't go. If we go up, I'm afraid that Tunin won't be able to go all out because he cares about us. After he finished speaking, he shifted his gaze to that huge monster and thought to himself. I wonder how long can you last maintaining such a powerful ninjutsu. Chapter 234 Overwhelming 4 Uchiha Tunin was controlling the golden warrior to walk step by step towards the Sandain Kazakage and Inoki. Because of its huge size, it always gave people the illusion of being clumsy and slow. The rapidly spinning dark clouds in the sky caused the entire battlefield to fall into a deathly silence. In the beginning, everyone might not have noticed it, but at this time, everyone understood that Uchiha Tunin was controlling the climate. The Sanden Kazakage and Inoki were ready for battle. Only the two of them, who faced the Golden Warrior directly, knew how suffocating this pressure was. In order to find an opportunity for Inoki, the Sanden Kazakage dispersed his iron, turned into a pair of black wings, and flew high. He shouted at Uchiha Tunin, Damn brat, today I will let you see the strength of the Kage. With that, the Sanden Kazakage formed a seal with both hands. Clusters of iron floated around him, gradually condensing into the shape of a thousand needle. Magnetic sand escape, sandstone rain. A dense mass of pitch black needle shot towards the golden warrior. It was just like the name of this ninjutsu, like tiny raindrops hitting the surface of the golden warrior. The solidified chakra didn't even ripple. Achiha Tunin glanced at Inoki, who was gathering power, out of the corner of his eye. He instantly understood the idea of the Sandane Kazakage. The corners of his mouth couldn't help but curve up slightly. You want to use yourself as a bait to attract my attention? Very well then, I'll bite. Immediately, Achiha Tunin controlled the Golden Warrior to walk towards the Sandane Kazakage. Very good, he had fallen into a trap. The Sandane Kazakage was secretly delighted and continued his performance that was like a clown in Uchiha Tunin's eyes. Magnetic Sand Escape, Iron Sand Assault Balls of sand that were bigger than before floated and quickly condensed into the shape of various weapons, shooting towards Uchiha Tunin. However, the Golden Warrior was the fourth form of Uchiha Tunin's Mangekyo, and was on the same level as the complete form of Susanoo. This move of the Sandane Kazakage was no different from the move of an ordinary kunai stabbing at Susanoo. One by one, the weapons condensed from sand and iron smashed into the surface of the Golden Warrior like eggs smashed into a mountain, turning into a puddle of sand iron. Achiha Tunin crossed his arms over his chest, not forgetting to ridicule, that's it? The Sandane Kazakage couldn't bear it anymore. Although it was a bait, this situation showed that he was too incompetent. He immediately circulated his chakra and condensed a huge amount of iron in front of him. The gap between the iron and sand quickly shrank and finally turned into a huge iron cone. The third wind shadow shouted, 
magnetic sand style, iron sand realm. The giant iron cone turned into a black shadow and descended from the sky, speeding towards the golden warrior. In the blink of an eye, its speed had broken through the sound barrier, and a sharp and ear-piercing sound broke through the battlefield. However, Uchiha Tunin did not take this thing seriously at all. He controlled the golden warrior to raise his left hand and grab forward. He held the black iron cone firmly in his hand as if he was playing with a toy. Damn it! It's futile. The Sandame Kazakage's face was extremely gloomy and he said unwillingly in his heart. Uchiha Tunin controlled the golden warrior to weigh the iron cone and said lightly, interesting. Then he raised his eyes and looked at the third generation wind shadow with a cold expression. Try my ninjutsu too. Thunder. Rumble. Suddenly, the dark clouds in the sky seemed to be enraged. The thunder moved and the whole sky lit up with a dazzling blue light. Blue lightning spread in all directions in the shape of strange branches, as if it were foregoing to cut the entire sky apart. Looking at this destructive scene, a figure suddenly appeared in the Sandane Kazakage's mind. W. White Fang. The Sandane Kazakage's pupils suddenly shrank. A chill ran down his spine, and his heart subconsciously beat quickly. He instinctively felt that a disaster was coming. He immediately flapped the iron wings on his back, not daring to stay where he was, and flew off into the distance without looking back. The dark clouds in the sky that seemed to be soaked in ink roared. Countless lightning dragons broke through the clouds and gathered towards the palm of the golden warrior's left hand, merging into a thunderbolt the size of a small mountain. Under the control of Uchiha Tunin, nature's lightning was compressed crazily, turning from blue to dazzling white. Uchiha Tunin opened his arms, looked at the fleeing Sandame Kazakage, and shouted, If you can survive this attack of mine, I, Uchiha Tunin, am willing to call you the strongest Kazakage. The Sandame Kazakage was shocked when he heard this. His eyes widened and he shouted, Tsuchikage, save me! Raikiri! The golden warrior suddenly jumped and turned into a flash of lightning. It was as if he had crossed through space, and the distance between him and the third generation wind shadow rapidly closed. Magnetic Sand Style, Iron Defense The Sandane Kazakage used all his chakra in one breath, controlling the iron to form a semicircular shield between himself and Uchiha Tunin to cover half the sky. He could not wait any longer. Anoki also knew that the situation was urgent. If the Sandane Kazakage was seriously injured or died, then the situation of this ninja world war would be unfavorable to Hidden Rock Village. He immediately acted like a horse, secretly praying that Uchiha Tunin did not notice him, so as not to avoid his ultimate move. Anoki pushed his hands forward, and a round white light plate appeared in front of his palms, aiming at the shield summoned by the Sandane Kazakage. In this place, Uchiha Tunin would definitely stop for a moment. Dust style, atomic dismantling jutsu. A white cylindrical laser suddenly burst out, and in the blink of an eye, it had already reached the shield. At this time, the golden warrior who had reached the limit of his speed just happened to appear in front of the shield. I have been waiting for you all this time. Out of the corner of his eye, Uchiha Tunin saw that the atomic dismantling jutsu was very close to him. Under the terrifying dynamic vision of Mangekyo level, the speed of this white laser was only a bit faster than the speed of the water dragon bullet, yet he was completely calm. How could the atomic dismantling jutsu resist? There were four methods in the original work, sealing technique, chakra absorption, space ninjutsu, and Uchiha rebound. However, there was another method for Uchiha Tunin. The golden warrior suddenly pulled out his spirit weapon, Demon Blade Miramesa, and blocked Anoki's attack. Demon Blade Miramesa immediately collided with the white light. In the blink of an eye, the color of the Demon Blade that was burning with golden flames changed to the same color as dust. Using the same law to break the law. No matter how strange your ninjutsu was, in front of Demon Blade Miramesa, it would ultimately end up as the most basic of chakra. At the same time, the huge thunder ball in the palm of the golden warrior heavily smashed against the huge iron shield. Thunder countered earth, let alone a high-quality conductive metal like iron. Bang! 
In a flash, the entire iron shield was smashed into nothing. The remaining power of the lightning was still more than half, turning into a straight lightning pillar that instantly caught up with the sand in Kazakage that had flown far away. Ah! Oh. In just an instant, the sand in Kazakage was submerged by the heavenly thunder pillar. Escape! Anoki saw that the atomic dismantling jutsu was easily blocked by Uchiha Tunin, so he immediately turned around and flew high into the sky. In the distance, he saw the figure of the Sandem Kazakage emitting black smoke, falling straight down from the sky. Uchiha Tunin withdrew from the state of Thunder God's soul and narrowed his eyes. He saw a thin figure catching the corpse of the Sandem Kazakage and fleeing far away. That red hair was really a bit conspicuous, coupled with the puppet controlled by the figure, Achiha Tunin recognized this scum character in the original work at a glance. Oh! That Sasori picked up a great loot. Chapter 235, Tough Bargain At the end of the battle, the entire battlefield was almost completely devastated by Achiha Tunin alone. In the slowly flowing mud, many ninjas were buried. The ninjas on the mountain wall were also captured by the Kanoha ninjas of Shikaku. Uchiha Tunin dispersed his form and landed firmly on the ground. He turned around and walked toward Kanoha's camp with a calm face. The Kanoha ninjas all showed respect in their eyes and wanted to cheer for Uchiha Tunin. But they were a bit unfamiliar and a bit respectful. The difference in levels was too great, making everyone feel that they were several levels lower than Uchiha Tunin, not daring to be rash. They could only stand in place and stare at Uchiha Tunin. Ding, obtained the recognition of. Ding, obtained the recognition of. Ding, obtained the recognition of. When Uchiha Tunin approached Kanoha's camp, a group of Kanoha ninjas spontaneously stepped aside and stood on both sides, holding their breath, their eyes following Uchiha Tunin. Shikaku quickly came up and bowed to Uchiha Tunin with his hands on his knees. Lord Tunin, I really have to trouble you. Uchiha Tunin nodded lightly, reached out to take the gold rimmed glasses from Shikaku, put them on, and silently walked away. Everyone watched as Uchiha Tunin left. After a long time, Uchiha Tunin's figure completely disappeared into the jungle. Only then did the Kanoha ninjas let go of their chatter and discuss. He is too handsome. He didn't even say a word. He's so cool. Don't make a fuss. Experts are all like this. What kind of ninjutsu was that giant just now? Do you know? I have never seen it before. It feels a bit bigger than the summoned beast of the Sanin. Did you know? When that giant appeared, I didn't even dare to breathe. It was too depressing. Did you hear about the ninjutsu that Lord Tunin used to kill Sanin Kazakage? It seems to be called Raikiri. It might be the forbidden technique of the Uchiha clan. Forbidden technique? Will Lord Tunin be okay? Probably not. Shikaku looked at the dense forest and touched his nose. He seemed to be thinking about something, and his expression was a little unpredictable. All right, leave some people here to guard, and wait for the logistics to build a stronghold. The others go back to Mount Kikyo first. We won the Battle of the Position, and the next battle is the team battle. After Shikaka gave the order, he looked at Yuga Hizashi and said, Lord Hizashi, I'll have to trouble you to stay here for a while. I'll go back first. Yuga Hizashi looked at the people around him and moved closer to Shikaku Nara. He lowered his voice and said, Is there a problem? Is it about Lord Tunin? Shikaku Nara's expression did not change. He patted Hizashi on the shoulder and said, don't worry about him, he should be fine. At the edge of the cliff next to the Kanoha encampment of Mount Kikyo, Uchiha Tunin had his hands behind his back and was looking at the mountains and rivers in the distance. The fiery red setting sun made his glasses reflect a little, making it impossible to see his eyes. At this time, Shikaku walked alone behind Uchiha Tunin and said respectfully, Lord Tunin, are you waiting for me here? Uchiha Tunin looked down at the magnificent setting sun in the distance and said slowly, I am waiting to answer your question. Shikaku was silent for a moment before asking, Are you injured? 
The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly as he nodded, yes, he said. It's a very serious injury. Unless it's a big battle, I can only try my best not to make any moves. I understand. Shikaku didn't ask much and directly agreed. Uchiha Tunin looked at Shikaku and gently pointed at his eyes. It doesn't matter if I tell you. The ninjutsu I use today is the dejutsu of this pair of Mangekyo Sharingan. However, the Mangekyo Sharingan had a fatal flaw. Once used too much, it would become blind. I am afraid that if I participate in this kind of intense battle again, I will be completely blind. Hearing this, Shikaku frowned and carefully looked at Uchiha Tunin's expression. However, there was no trace of worry on Uchiha Tunin's face. After thinking for a while, he continued to follow Uchiha Tunin's topic. Is there no solution? Uchiha Tunin chuckled and turned to look at the setting sun. He said in an unpredictable tone, yes and no. In short, you don't need to know, and it's even more impossible to help. Shikaku Nara nodded and bowed deeply to Uchiha Tunin. I understand. Thank you for your help today. In the evening, a small sea of clouds appeared on the orange mountain, setting off the dazzling sunset. The slowly sinking sun seemed to have a sad and sad beauty, burning the surrounding sunset clouds into blood red. Uchiha Tunin did not reply. He slowly closed his eyes and opened his hands, as if he wanted to embrace the beauty of this moment. Shikaku stood in the same place, quietly watching Uchiha Tunin's back because he knew that the chat just now was just a prelude to the topic. You are a smart person. Uchiha Tunin closed his eyes, as if he was talking in his sleep. Nara Shikaku looked at his nose for a long time, his nose looked at his heart, and he replied indifferently, I can't compare with Lord Tunin. Uchiha Tunin took back his hands and sighed. He pushed up his glasses with his index finger and said, When I had little money in the past, I always like to put money in my wallet and carry it with me. Only in this way would I feel safe. Later, I had too much money and couldn't put my wallet down. I was worried about leaving it at home. It was a bank, but I was worried that someone would investigate it or one day the bank would go bankrupt. So I later divided the money into several portions, bought land, and bought some valuable jewelry. I put them at home, saved my money in the bank. In this way, even if there was an accident in one of the places, at most, it would hurt the muscles and bones so that the family would not be destroyed and the people would die. Nara Shikaku's eyes narrowed slightly and he immediately understood what Uchiha Tunin meant. This was an undisguised threat. Uchiha Tunin was talking about money, but in fact, he was referring to the entire Nara clan. The money was only in his wallet, which meant that the Nara clan had always been loyal to Haruzen Saratobi. Nara Shikaku could tell that Haruzen Saratobi had broken off with Uchiha Tunin. Now that Uchiha Tunin had told him so much, it was to let him think about it. Even if he continued to be loyal to Haruzen Saratobi, he should not put the eggs in one basket and go against Uchiha Tunin. If he followed Uchiha Tunin's suggestion, then no matter who won or lost, the Nara clan would only have one backer. But if he was loyal to Haruzen Saratobi and went against Uchiha Tunin, once Haruzen Saratobi lost his power, the Nara clan would suffer Uchiha Tunin's revenge, and the result would be the destruction of their family. To be honest, the Nara clan had been loyal to Haruzen Saratobi for so many years, and for a long time, the Nara Shikaku did not know whether he should agree to Uchiha Tunin or not. In any case, since Uchiha Tunin did not make it clear, it meant that he had the full strength to refuse. If he did not agree, he would just casually give a perfunctory answer. Presumably, Achiha Tunin would not fall out with him immediately. The two of them were still friendly on the surface. Of course, he would definitely remember the grudge. But if he agreed, if Hiruzen Saratobi found out, Achiha Tunin naturally saw that Shikaku was still weighing the gains and losses and immediately added, You said, the value of my land has doubled several times. Is there any room for appreciation in the future? Shikaku Nara was shocked and immediately knelt down on one knee. He said in a low voice, What Lord Tunin said is very reasonable. 
and I know for sure what to do. The land refers to Uchiha Tunin himself, and the value of Uchiha Tunin lies in strength. He was still young, and his strength would definitely rise. Uchiha Tunin chuckled, turned around, and patted Shikaku on the shoulder. Right, I've been studying medical ninjutsu recently, and I need some materials. Shikaku's pupils suddenly shrank, and he suddenly raised his head. He looked at Uchiha Tunin in disbelief and said, Lord Tunin, human experiments are forbidden in the ninja world. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He took a light breath and said slowly, You smell the air here. Is it fresher than Kanoha? It seems like there is an extra sense of freedom. The implication was that this was a battlefield, a place beyond the law. If Shikaku Naran did not agree, then the consequences would be hard to say. However, Shikaku Nara's forehead was covered in sweat, and he was struggling in his heart. Finally, he let out a long sigh, lowered his head, and said in a deep voice, Lord Tunin can take whatever you need, as long as the headquarters has it. I will inform Inoichi. Achiha Tunin was very satisfied with the attitude of Shikaku Nara. With his hands behind his back, he walked towards his laboratory. Such a smart person was the best at judging the situation and changing his mind. He promised his pirate ship in front of him. What if he sold him? Since Shikaku had already agreed to board the ship, he had to show his sincerity. Human experiments were the most taboo in the world. As the commander, Shikaku Nara allowed Uchiha Tunin to use prisoners for human experiments. In the future, once the incident occurs, Nara Shikaku will be finished. Chapter 236 The Akatsuki Trio Late at night, Uchiha Tunin was still carefully modifying his laboratory. This world had extraordinary energy like chakra and nature energy. But life was the carrier of all extraordinary energy. During the day, Uchiha Tunin had already obtained enough recognition. He only needed to wait for Kanoha's ninjas to slowly fight with the other two villages. At that time, Uchiha Tunin would be able to continuously obtain all kinds of secret techniques and blood. Uchiha Tunin already knew enough ninjutsu. He believed that his theoretical knowledge would not be less than anyone in the world of ninja. However, this knowledge belonged to the predecessors. If he wanted to surpass the predecessors, he needed to study it himself. Moreover, Uchiha Tunin mainly knew a lot of knowledge, and this knowledge could be used to complement each other. Many things could not be relied on thinking alone, so he had to use live experiments. Uchiha Tunin was using Earth Release Ninjutsu to reinforce and modify the laboratory. Suddenly, Uchiha Tunin paused, raised his head, and revealed his three Tomo Sharingan. Using Sharingan, he observed Shikaku Nara who was writing intelligence in the commander tent. He saw Shikaku holding a pen and was writing the battle process of today on the scroll. After writing the process, Shikaku hesitated for a moment. But in the next moment, Shikaku wrote. Achiha Tunin used Mangekyo Sharingan forbidden technique, his vision decreased, and he was seriously injured. This subordinate guessed that if Achiha Tunin used his full strength a few times, then he might lose his sight. I hope that the Hokage-sama will support us according to the situation. After writing this, Shikaku stopped writing and closed the scroll. He summoned the summoned beast and stuffed the scroll into the mouth of the summoned beast. What a smart person. Achiha Tunin nodded in satisfaction and continued to work hard. The next day. The sun was like a dazzling shrine that finally showed its face on the horizon. After completing the laboratory modification, Achiha Tunin came to the temporary prison. With the company of Inoichi, he chose the first warrior to become his guinea pig. Hmm. In the rough iron bars prison, these captives had their acupuncture points sealed by the Huga clan and were trapped like dumplings with iron chains. There was even a closed iron ball stuffed in their mouths. Seeing someone come in, the captives showed resentment in their eyes, as if they wanted to eat Achiha Tunin and Inoichi. Achiha Tunin was like a butcher picking fresh pigs and sheep in a slaughterhouse, saying slowly, This is my first time practicing. I want to find a strong body. It would be best if it was Jounin. 
the Inoshika Cho had always advanced and retreated together. Obviously, Shikaku Nara had convinced Inoichi. Inoichi immediately led Uchiha Tunin to the other side and said, Lord Tunin, there are Jown in here, but there are not many of them. You can choose as you like. After you choose, I can send my clan ninja to send them to you. If you need them in the future, you just need to send someone to inform them. Uchiha Tunin smiled gently at Inoichi and said, How could I? I've really troubled you too much. Inoichi shook his head and said, No trouble. This war is all thanks to Lord Tunin. Otherwise, I don't even know how many more of us will die. Uchiha Tunin was very satisfied with Inoichi's attitude. He turned his head and looked at a ninja in the cell who was constantly twisting and trying to break free. Woo! The prisoner ninja also noticed that Uchiha Tunin had shifted his gaze to him. He immediately looked back with resentment, and the veins on his face bulged. Uchiha Tunin touched his chin with great interest and said, This one seems to have a strong vitality. Inoichi smiled and said, He is Jounin of Hidden Sand Village, and he is good at physical skills. Uchiha Tunin nodded and pointed at the ninja, It's him. Inoichi immediately opened the iron door and dragged the ninja to Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Tunin reached out and grabbed the iron chain at the waist of the ninja, lifted him up, and turned to walk outside. Lord Tunin, don't you need to pick a few more? Inoichi asked with concern. Uchiha Tunin shook his head and said, No need, my place is small. I'll tell you to send it over when I'm done. The ninja who was being carried seemed to understand Uchiha Tunin's meaning and immediately struggled even harder. The expression on his face gradually changed from anger to fear. Woo! Uchiha Tunin frowned and glanced at the struggling ninja. He said unhappily, Why are you so excited? I won't let you go. With that, Uchiha Tunin glared at the ninja and put him inside his jinjutsu. Then, he swaggered out of the prison with the ninja in his arms and headed for his laboratory. As for what to do if this scene was seen by others. It doesn't matter, all the way from the prison to the laboratory is the temporary station of the Inoshika Cho. Inoshika Cho will take care of it. As Uchiha Tunin walked, he suddenly stopped, and the corners of his mouth revealed a meaningful smile. Then, he changed his direction and walked towards the commander's tent. Not long after, Uchiha Tunin saw two teenagers and a young girl being pushed out of the commander's tent by two Nara clan ninjas. The features of these three people were a little conspicuous. They had yellow hair, red hair, and blue hair. Correspondingly, they were Yahiko, Nagato, and Conan of the Akatsuki. From this scene, it was estimated that Yahiko had brought Nagato and Conan to persuade Shikaku to stop the war. Needless to say, Yahiko's childish thoughts could not be heard by Shikaku. He directly kicked the three out of the door. Yahiko was still shouting loudly. Mr. Shikaku, as long as people can understand each other, they can avoid war. War is meaningless. If hatred continues, people will only live in the abyss of suffering. Let go of hatred, then everyone will understand each other. At this moment, the two Nara ninjas who pushed Yahiko saw Uchiha Tunin walking towards them. They immediately lowered their heads with reverence and said in a low voice, Lord Tunin. Lord Tunin. Yahiko also stopped shouting and turned around with Nagato and Conan. He sized up Uchiha Tunin and asked, You are? The two Nara ninjas felt that the three of them did not respect Uchiha Tunin enough, so they immediately shouted, This is the genius from Konoha. He defeated the allied forces of the two countries by himself and killed the Sandame Kazakage, Lord Tunin. Yahiko immediately bowed to Uchiha Tunin and said, Lord Tunin. Uchiha Tunin had a faint smile on his face and nodded gently. Yahiko, on the other hand, had a straightforward personality. Seeing the captive in Uchiha Tunin's hand, he immediately asked, Forgive me for being presumptuous, but this hidden sand village ninja should be a captive, right? Yahiko, Conan stretched out his hand and tugged at Yahiko's sleeve, a look of worry appearing on her face. Uchiha Tunin did not blame Yahiko. Instead, 
he said with an amiable expression. Yes, this is Jounin from Hidden Sand Village. His status is not low. I want to interrogate him about information about the war. To Uchiha Tunin, lies were not a burden at all. As expected, the three were convinced. Suddenly, Yahiko thought of the two Nara ninjas' attitude towards Uchiha Tunin. Then Uchiha Tunin must have a very high position in Kanoha. He immediately said, Lord Tunin, what do you think of the war this time? The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He did not answer Yahiko, but handed the captive to the Nara clan ninja beside him and said, Send this person to my medical research room. I will interrogate him after I treat his injuries. Yes. The Nara ninja immediately left with the captive. Yahiko watched this scene and combined with Uchiha Tunin's words, his good feelings for Uchiha Tunin rose by several levels. Lord Tunin is obviously a kind-hearted person. Uchiha Tunin smiled humbly. Kanoha's purpose has always been to treat prisoners well, and I only do things according to the rules. By the way, you just asked me what I think about war. To be honest, I have never experienced war before, so I really don't know much about it. Just now, I seem to hear that you have a very unique opinion about war. Can I ask for your advice? Perhaps it was the first time Yahiko had met such a nice senior in the big village. For a moment, he was a little reserved. He scratched his head with a silly smile and said, Not really. I just want to pass on my own ideas. Uchiha Tunin immediately turned around and waved to the three of them. Let's talk as we walk. After all, this is Kanoa's camp. It's not good for you to stay here all the time. Chapter 237 Harsh Truth The four of them silently walked down Mount Kikyo and headed towards Rain Country. Uchiha Tunin felt that there were too many people here to talk about. Nagato and Conan did not have any opinions and were just two silly little attendants. As for Yahiko, who had always been cheerful and outgoing, he seemed to be a little concerned about Uchiha Tunin's identity and attitude. He looked like he wanted to say something but hesitated. After all, he was used to being rejected by others in the past. It was really a little uncomfortable to suddenly meet someone with a good attitude. Just like that, the four of them came to a small bridge. Uchiha Tunin was the first to sit on the railing. He patted the railing with his hand and gestured for the three of them to sit up. The three of them looked at each other. Yai smiled kindly at Uchiha Tunin and sat down. Nagato and Conan also followed suit and sat on the railing, looking at Uchiha Tunin curiously. The grass here was leisurely, and the river was gurgling under the bridge. The sound was like whispering, but also like a laughing stock. The sunlight was like specks of gold, flickering on the surface of the river, mottled and jumping, so dazzling that people could not open their eyes. Uchiha Tunin saw that Yahiko kept smiling at him, but he did not say anything. He immediately prepared to start the conversation. Regardless of that, he first came up to try to get closer to each other. If the communication was smooth, then he would act according to the situation and see if he needed the brainwashing technique. This exchange was naturally aimed at the long door with the Rinnegan. If Uchiha Tunin's memory was correct, the original idea of Nagato was to make the world feel pain, and then because of fear of pain, they did not dare to start a war. This idea was suppressed after knowing Yahiko. After Yahiko died, Nagato had this idea again. Since that was the case, then let's go along with his idea. But seeing Uchiha Tunin take off the gold-rimmed glasses, he sighed and gently wiped the lenses with his sleeves. Do you know why I am willing to communicate with you? The three of them shook their heads together. They saw Uchiha Tunin staring at the glasses in his hand with a look of reminiscence on his face. When I was seven, I was still in the ninja school. My parents died on the battlefield of the last ninja world war. All of a sudden, I became an orphan and lived alone from then on. As expected, the three of them looked at Uchiha Tunin with sympathy. Yahiko frowned and said softly, I'm sorry for reminding you of a sad memory. Uchiha Tunin smiled and squinted at the sun in the sky. He said with a relaxed face, It doesn't matter. I should, 
perhaps have forgotten the pain. Yahiko nodded silently, but he thought that Uchiha Tunin was pretending to be relaxed. After all, they were also like this. Yahiko took a deep breath and asked doubtfully, If that's the case, why don't you think of a way to stop the war? You are so strong that you are more capable than us in doing this. If there was no war, such a tragedy would not have happened again. Uchiha Tenen shook his head in disappointment. War is unavoidable. Only when more people feel the pain of war will they cherish the value of peace. After saying that, Uchiha Tenen glanced at Nagato from the corner of his eye. But Nagato was completely dumbfounded. There was no reaction at all. Uchiha Tenen secretly frowned in his heart. There was no reaction at all. This guy's philosophy was not firm. It seemed that he was not idealist, but a man purely moved by his emotion. That was right, if he was so rational, he would not be persuaded by Naruto. It seemed that it was not the right time. Uchiha Tenen quietly looked at Yahiko and Konan. Emotions of humans are a difficult thing. It would be too troublesome to interfere. The only way was to take advantage of this opportunity. It seemed that after the war ended, he had to go back and talk to Danzo about the Akatsuki organization so that he could start early. In a few seconds, Achiha Tenen had already made up his mind, and he no longer had any meaningless entanglement with them. At this time, Yahiko had already opened his mouth to refute. In fact, the reason for the war is because there are differences in opinions. This can be discussed on the negotiation table. Achiha Tunin put on the gold-rimmed glasses, stared at Yahiko, and asked which pre-war negotiations were successful. Yahiko was slightly startled, and then immediately explained. That's because no one put themselves in the other's shoes and considered it. As long as everyone understands each other, the negotiation will be successful. Achiha Tunin smiled indifferently and said slowly, But everyone has their own thoughts. How can you let them understand others? What's more, how do you know that everyone doesn't know the other party's difficulties? I understand why the four countries want to attack the fire country. Yahiko frowned and asked with a puzzled expression, Why? Achiha Tunin pushed up his glasses and began to explain. Because the population and resources are seriously uneven. Let's change the meaning of your understanding. For the time being, treat resources as food. Take wind country as an example. After so many years of peace, the population has skyrocketed and the food needed has also increased. However, wind country does not have enough grain, while fire country has abundant grain. What should we do? Yahiko immediately said, fire country can sell the excess grain to wind country. Achiha Tenen raised his eyebrows and found that Yahiko did not understand what he meant. He immediately explained. In resources, they're in wealth. You may not understand what I mean. The wind nation is lacking in everything right now. There is no food or money to buy resource. Yahiko was silent for a moment. He scratched his head in frustration. After thinking for a long time, he said weakly, If the fire country wants to avoid war, they can also give the extra grain to the wind country. Only then did Uchiha Tunin realize that this guy in front of him was too naive. How could such an adult say such naive words? On what basis? Just like the food in my fields, I painstakingly grew it under the wind and sun every day. I used my own labor to exchange for food and sold the extra food. I could also buy some decent clothes for my family. If I were to give it away for no reason, then why would I work so hard next year? I might as well just plant the food that my family just had enough to eat. In any case, it was useless to do more. Once that was the case. Next year, wind country would still be poor, and fire country would just be satisfied. Then what should he do? I. Achiha Tenen's words instantly made Yahiko not know how to answer. A qualified villain would definitely be able to suppress the masses in terms of speech. Why? Because villains were all ambitious and idealistic, and if they had something in their hearts, they could talk endlessly. Those who only knew how to kill were not worthy of being called villains. 
they could only be called pitiful worms who were tortured to madness by life and pain. There were too many such pitiful worms in this world. Achiha Tenen glanced at Nagato and Conan who were confused and thought of sending them away. He sighed heavily and patted Yahiko on the shoulder. I understand. We can't eat it as food. Yahiko houred his head and gripped the corner of his clothes with both hands. He said in a deep voice, But don't you think that war is too cruel? With so many people dying, especially those commoners, there was no way they could avoid it. The atmosphere became heavy. Nagato and Conan also lowered their heads, a sad expression on their faces. How could Uchiha Tunin be affected by them? He immediately shouted, Wrong! They can completely avoid it. It's just that they are unwilling. I know that you are all from the rain country. The rain country has been in a state of war since the warring states period. If people are afraid of war, why don't they move out? Haven't you thought about it? The three of them looked at each other, and then Yahiko looked at Uchiha Tunin solemnly and said, Because this is my hometown. Uchiha Tunin sneered. He pointed his finger at the ground and said fiercely, Because this place is full of food, you can make it out by taking a gamble. Have you read a book? Do you know that the population of the rain country has risen sharply at the end of the war? Do you know how many civilians live in the rain country every year? As soon as he finished speaking, the three of them asked in disbelief. Why? Aren't they afraid of death? Achiha Tenen grabbed Yahiko by the collar and leaned his head closer. There is plenty of rain here, and the weather is warm. Food was cooked three times a year, and there were many fish and shrimp in the river. In the family, even if there was only one labor force, it could ensure that the whole family would not starve to death. This kind of condition was too good. For the civilians, this was simply heaven. Dying in war was only a possibility. But without food, one would die without a doubt. Risk and opportunity coexisted, and this was a process of mutual gamble. Obviously, for most people, the opportunity here was far greater than the risk. It was the first time that Yahiko heard such logic. He felt that his worldview was about to collapse, and his pupils kept trembling. How can this be? This can't be true. Achiha Tenen slammed Yahiko heavily onto the bridge. Nagato and Conan quickly came down from the railing and helped Yahiko up. Achiha Tenen came down from the railing and looked down at the three of them. Let me tell you, there are many places without war. Do you know that in the western region of the Wind Country, there has never been a war since the Warring States period? But there is almost no one there. Why? Because there is a drought all year round, yellow sand filled the sky, people can't live. Do you know how a large number of people died in the Wind Kingdom every year? They ate sand to make themselves die. When they died, their fingers were stuck in their mouths. Because the sand was too dry, they couldn't swallow it, so they had to continuously stab it with their fingers. They couldn't find the soil that they wanted to plant in water, which was pitiful. So, the meaning of war, is it just plunder? Yahiko's voice gradually weakened, and his face was lost. Suddenly, Yahiko thought of something. He raised his head and said firmly, No, if the war is just for plundering. And every time the Ninja World War was a victory for the Fire Country. The other countries didn't get anything either, but they still survived. Achiha Tenen chuckled and shook his head. Of course it's not just plundering. The truth behind this is more cruel than you think. There were two people in the past, but only one person could eat food. Now that one person died on the battlefield, wouldn't the food be enough? As soon as these words came out, the three of them collapsed on the ground as if they were struck by lightning. How could this be? How could they do this? The purpose of the war is to let our companions die. Achiha Tenen slowly squatted down. He put his left hand on Conan's shoulder and his right hand on Nagato's shoulder. He leaned his head close to the three people and said in a low voice, This world is so cruel, and war is a necessary evil, natural selection is needed. If there is no external war, internal strife will break out in the country. 
once the order is chaotic, this is much more terrible than war. That is the hell on earth. Listen to my advice, read more books when you have time. Don't just look at the results, think more about the reason. Don't think too stupid of others. Most of the group behavior was based on objective reasons. It could only be dealt with from objective perspective, not by making them change their subjective ideas. After saying that, Achiha Tunin slowly got up and turned to walk in the direction of Kikio Mountain. Lord Tunin! Yahiko roared loudly, kneeling on the ground and kowtowing heavily towards Achiha Tunin. Since you know so much, then do you know how to change this world? Nagato and Conan saw this and knelt down without hesitation. For the two of them, Yahiko's dream was their dream. Achiha Tunin turned his head and saw this scene. He felt pity in his heart. If he replaced Yahiko and Nagato, Achiha Tunin would be happy to continue chatting with them even if he had to teach them some real skills. As for now, he might as well let Yahiko continue to be wrong. A gentle smile appeared on Achiha Tunin's face as he encouraged them. What you do is not completely meaningless. A spark can start a prairie fire, and the strength of the group is infinite. When more and more people love peace, I believe that one day, there will be a person who will change the world on your side. What you need to do is to attract more people who love peace. You may not be able to be the savior, but you can be the one to discover the savior. Hearing this, Yahiko's eyes lit up. He stood up and clenched his fists. I understand. I will do my best. Ding, obtained Yahiko's approval. Achiha Tenen nodded slightly and turned to leave. Now, he definitely could not tell them the solution to the war. It was to control the population and increase productivity. Once he told them, maybe the Akatsuki organization would turn into an agricultural organization. A large group of people would run to the harsh environment to explore and even go to research hybrid rice. In this way, how could they be afraid of a group of farmers? Without the Akatsuki organization, who would collect tailed beasts, how could Kagaya come out? Achiha Tunin was not afraid of hard work, if the situation needed, he could rebel between justice and evil. But on the surface, there had to be a good person and a bad person. He had to be a good person. A bad person could only be wronged by Nagato. In short, after Achiha Tunin found that Nagato could not be recognized by his ideals, he felt that he had to be a good person. He immediately lost the will to communicate with the three of them. After the war ended, Yahiko was killed by Hanzo and Danzo, and then he would think of a way to take advantage of the situation to make things simpler. As the saying goes, every righteous person kills many dogs, yet their heart is always a scholar. Looking at the substance through appearances, it removed the literal meaning of praise. A person without enough knowledge and knowledge could only indulge in the world of emotions all day. Because this was all his spiritual food. Without spiritual food, people could not live. Achiha Tenen also did not want the three of them to listen to him and take time to read more books. After all, it was easy to make use of people who were stupid. Chapter 238 Experiment Material Half a month later In Achiha Tenen's underground laboratory Woo! Under the warm pink light her slender waist kept twisting. Achiha Tenen gently placed the kunoichi in his hand on the soft white bed and let her sit on the side of the bed. Then, he reached out and lifted the kunoichi's chin, carefully sizing her up. It was as if he was admiring a precious item. He saw that this female ninja had black hair like a waterfall. Her eyes were sparkling and her eyelashes were fluttering. She looked lovely and moving. It was really heartbreaking. Achiha Tenen gently stroked the female ninja's hair and then reached out to remove the iron ball from her mouth. Huff, huff. The female ninja took a few deep breaths and calmed down to look around her surroundings. It looked like the bedroom of a wealthy family. There were sofas, soft beds, glass coffee tables, and other furniture in the room. There was even a phonograph at the head of the bed. Under the pink light, the female ninja quickly calculated the purpose of the other party. She said lightly, Actually, you don't have to bring me here. 
you can completely release me. I won't run. Uchiha Tenen chuckled and went to the coffee table. He unscrewed the glass bottle containing the red liquid on the coffee table and poured a third of it into the goblet. I like your kamas very much. The female ninja's expression did not change. She looked at the furnishings and the charming atmosphere in the room. She had already guessed the situation in her heart. She immediately swallowed and pretended to be calm. Achiha Tenen leaned against the sofa, gently shaking the goblet, and said slowly, Your body is also very attractive to me, making me have an impulse to explore it. Because of these two reasons, I fell in love with you in the crowd. This time, the female ninja was even more certain of her guess, but she revealed an indescribable smile and said, It's really hard to imagine that you are two different people in private with the battlefield. Achiha Tunin smiled and shook his head. That's different. I am a ninja. Fighting is my job. When it comes to work, I must show my proper attitude. But in private, I am still very easygoing. In other words, the current you is the real you. The female ninja used words to attract Achiha Tunin's attention while secretly mobilizing her chakra. Unfortunately, the acupuncture points of the Hyuga clan were not so easy to unlock, especially when the whole body was bound by iron chains. In this case, the female ninja could only try to exert force on her wrist to see if she could break free. Because she was worried that the little trick behind her was discovered by Uchiha Tunin. The female ninja immediately pretended to stretch, trying to shift Uchiha Tunin's gaze. The tightly bound iron chains suddenly highlighted the female ninja's curvaceous figure. Isn't it a bit tight? Do you need to undo it? Achiha Tunin stared at the proud female ninja with great interest. The female ninja was immediately stunned. Her movements behind her also stopped, and she said with a suspicious expression, Aren't you afraid that I'll run away? Then, he said with a look of realization, That's right. How could a strong man like you be afraid of a woman like me? This move could be considered a little goading. If Achiha Tunin was a little proud, he would definitely release her. Sure enough, Achiha Tunin gently placed the goblet on the tea table, then got up and went to the kunoichi, reaching out to untie her chains. You are right, especially such a beautiful woman. The chain that had tied her up for so many days was untied, and the kunoichi only felt unprecedentedly relaxed. With her hands on the bed sheet, she raised her head, squinted her eyes, and muttered. So comfortable. He wanted to fight back and try to escape. However, when he thought of Uchiha Tunin's terrifying strength on the battlefield, he gave up on this idea. She would definitely not be able to sneak attack a powerhouse of this level. For now, he could only act according to the situation. Speaking of which, your position in Kanoha should be very high. I think no one will stop you if you take me away. Achiha Tunin returned to the sofa and sat down. He continued to hold his goblet and shake it. On the battlefield, the winner should get his spoils of war. Beautiful women were also a type of spoils of war. So, you already belong to me. The female ninja slightly despised this seemingly refined man in front of her, but in fact, he was a hungry ghost. She tried to circulate her chakra, but she did not expect that the originally blocked acupoints had already been opened. She said in surprise, You are looking down on me too much. Are you really not afraid of me resisting? Achiha Tunin stared at the red liquid in the goblet and did not answer her. After a long time, Achiha Tunin slowly got up, came to the front of the female ninja, and handed the goblet out. Here, drink this. The female ninja's eyes narrowed, but she still took the goblet and said vigilantly, What is this? Hearing this, Achiha Tunin touched his chin and said, Hmm? How should I put it? It's similar to a stimulant. Don't worry, it won't hurt your body. It's just that you will feel a little tired after the event. The female ninja thought that this guy in front of her looked gentle and had such a disgusting hobby. Achiha Tunin raised his hand and gestured, Drink it you have no choice. The female ninja brought her wine glass with her left hand to her lips and slowly stretched her right hand behind her. 
She looked at Uchiha Tunin with a charming gaze and said in a soft voice, How old are you? You're so good at playing. What's the point of drinking this? Do you have some kind of weird taste? Uchiha Tunin smiled gently and bent down. He reached out his hand naturally and pulled the Kunoichi's right hand away. Then he touched the Kunoichi shirt from bottom to top. Walking along his back to between his shoulder blades, he took out a thousand glittering silver books and shook them. The one in charge of searching your body is also a female ninja, right? It should be the first time on the battlefield, so I don't have enough experience in searching your body. It's better for me to keep such a dangerous thing for you. When the female ninjas saw that her little actions had been caught, a sense of powerlessness rose in her heart. The corner of her mouth revealed a forced smile. She looked at the red liquid in her cup and took a deep breath. All right, I have to tell you. Even if I am a captive, you have to take responsibility. You won't kill me after this, will you? Achiha Tunin spread out his hands with an innocent look on his face. I am a strong person. My reputation is very important. The female ninja knew that she had no chance to escape. In order to live, she could only sacrifice her beauty. He immediately stopped pretending and muttered, You look so refined, but your hobby is so abnormal. You have to be gentle. After saying that, the female ninja closed her eyes and drank the red liquid in the goblet. Not to mention, it tasted sweet and sour, and it was quite delicious. Don't worry, I will. Achiha Tunin reached out and adjusted his glasses, his eyes burning. After a few seconds, the female ninja reached out with the back of her hand and touched her face. There was a blush on her face, and there was some sweat on her forehead. She bit her lips and said, Uh, ah, uh, so hot, so hot. Achiha Tunin smiled and took a step forward. He held her shoulders with both hands and gently pushed her onto the bed. The female ninja narrowed her eyes and quietly looked at Achiha Tunin's angular face. Not to mention, Looking at it carefully, it was so handsome. Is it going to start? Chapter 239, Carrying Out Experiment After Achiha Tunin put the female ninja down, he tilted his head and said, The effect is faster than I thought. According to the records, you are a chunin. You are good at puppets and intelligence analysis. You have been a spy before. You are not very good at physical skills. This medicine can quickly consume your physical strength. After three minutes, you will be exhausted and unable to move. The female ninja felt that Achiha Tunin's words were a little strange. She immediately frowned and said, What are you going to do? Achiha Tunin leaned down and gently stroked the female ninja's hot face. He said gently, Don't be afraid. This isn't poison. Would a strong person like me lie to you? If you are tired, then go to sleep. This bed is very soft. Moreover, the temperature here is very suitable for resting. A few minutes later, the female ninja stopped moving. Only her eyes seemed to have narrowed into slits, but the light in her eyes was somewhat unfocused. Seeing that the medicine was almost ready, Achiha Tunin began to slowly undo the buttons on his shirt. The body is dormant on its own, but the spirit is not consumed, so it is now in a nightmare state. You can hear and see, but you can't control the body. If I didn't talk to you next to me, you would even think you were dreaming. You want to talk, want to move. Your brain keeps sending messages to your body, but there is no feedback from your body. This will make your brain instinctively think that your body has died. This will produce a special fear. Even if you keep comforting yourself, you can't restrain the birth of this fear. With that, the last gap in the female ninja's eyes slowly closed. At the last moment when she closed her eyes, she only saw Achiha Tunin take off his shirt. However, the next moment, Achiha Tunin took out a neatly folded white coat from the drawer beside the bed and put it on. He also put on a medical mask and gloves. Then, Achiha Tunin pressed the invisible mechanism on the wall. With the sound of the mechanism turning, the wall on the opposite side of the sofa in the room rose, revealing the laboratory filled with instruments behind it. 
However, Uchiha Tenen knew that her current state was like a soul trapped in a dead body. Under the effect of the medicine, this body turned off all information transmission to her. Uchiha Tenen came to the laboratory, took out a needle filled with green liquid, and went to the bedside. While pushing the piston and expelling the air in the needle, he said to himself, The body energy represents the yang escape, and the spiritual energy represents the yin escape. At this moment, the power of the yang escape almost completely disappeared, leaving only the power of the yin escape. No, it doesn't count as disappearing. It just said that the yang and yin escape have lost connection. They have been separated. Next is the solidification of the connection, recording data. After thinking about it, he inserted the needle into the arm of the female ninja. Then he took out a large number of instruments and began to check the body data of the female ninja. At this time, the female ninja only felt that she was locked in a sealed dark room. No matter how she shouted in her heart, it was useless. She instinctively felt great fear in her heart. In the end, she curled up in the darkness and waited silently. After an unknown period of time, the female ninja suddenly felt a wave of dizziness. Where am I? The female ninja slowly opened her eyes to sleep, only to find that her vision was pitch black. However, the sensation on her face made her realize that she was wearing an eye patch. And he seemed to be lying on the bed. You just fell asleep. A magnetic and gentle voice sounded in her ears. The memory of the female ninja revived and remembered the scene in front of her eyes. After you, insulted me. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tenen's innocent voice sounded in his ears. No, I just purely tested your data in your nightmare state. Then I gave you a sleeping needle, allowing your brain and body to rest well. You slept very soundly. You slept for about seventeen hours. The female ninja tried to move her fingers, but found that there was no feeling below her neck. Her voice trembled a little. Why can't I move? There was a rustling sound in her ears, and the female ninja did not know what Uchiha Tunin was doing. Don't worry, calm down. The area below your neck has been anesthetized by me, so you can't move it. Pa. A crisp slapping sound rang out. Do you feel anything? The female ninja was slightly stunned and instantly thought of something. No, you pulled off my pants? After what he said that he didn't want to insult me. It's good that you don't feel anything. Uchiha Tunin's satisfied voice sounded from below him. Beep 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 beep. At this moment, the female ninja heard the alarm of an instrument. It seemed to be coming from the other side of the room. This old thing is always problematic. I tried to repair it several times, but the parts inside are too precise. High technology is a bit beyond my knowledge. Uchiha Tunin's voice had already appeared on the other side. Bang! Along with the sound of slapping, the alarm disappeared. Sure enough, it will be normal after a pat. I'll play some music for you to ease your emotions. There's really no need to be so nervous. The phonographer at the head of the bed transmitted the music played by a music master from the snow country. It was unknown where Uchiha Tunin got the music, but it sounded especially soothing. The female ninja's fear gradually disappeared. Since she had no strength to resist, she decided to let others do what they wanted. Okay. Uchiha Tunin's satisfied voice came from below. You still have a feeling above your neck. There might be some errors. But I have to observe your reaction, so. I am very sorry. The female ninja felt an unprecedented excitement in her mind. She asked, What exactly did you do to me? Then, the female ninja found that she had been turned over and was lying sideways on the bed. Then, the blindfold was also removed. Achiha Tunin, who was wearing a white shirt, looked at the delicate face of the female ninja with a smile and said gently, I did something very meaningful, very crazy. This guy is even more abnormal than I thought. However, it seems to be normal compared to the plot in the book. The female ninja thought of this and pursed her lips. Then how will you deal with me in the future? Achiha Tunin leaned over and pressed his forehead against the female ninja's forehead. 
At the same time, he stroked her face with his palm and said, Looking at your performance, you have always been easy to talk to. You probably won't be able to return to the wind country in the future. Do you have anything you want to say to your family? I will help you write a letter and send it back. The female ninja only felt a hot male scent coming towards her face, and her mentality also changed. Her eyes were hazy as she said, You want to take me back to Kanoha? Uchiha Tunin did not reply. He slowly got up and picked up the paper and pen prepared by the bedside. He returned to the sofa and sat down, his eyes signaling. The female ninja looked at Uchiha Tunin with a complicated expression, and then she sighed as if she had accepted her fate. I don't have parents. Chapter 239 Carrying Out Experiment After Uchiha Tunin put the female ninja down, he tilted his head and said, The effect is faster than I thought. According to the records, you are a chunin. You are good at puppets and intelligence analysis. You have been a spy before. You are not very good at physical skills. This medicine can quickly consume your physical strength. After three minutes, you will be exhausted and unable to move. The female ninja felt that Uchiha Tunin's words were a little strange. She immediately frowned and said, What are you going to do? Uchiha Tunin leaned down and gently stroked the female ninja's hot face. He said gently, Don't be afraid. This isn't poison. Would a strong person like me lie to you? If you are tired, then go to sleep. This bed is very soft. Moreover, the temperature here is very suitable for resting. A few minutes later, the female ninja stopped moving. Only her eyes seemed to have narrowed into slits, but the light in her eyes was somewhat unfocused. Seeing that the medicine was almost ready, Achiha Tunin began to slowly undo the buttons on his shirt. The body is dormant on its own, but the spirit is not consumed, so it is now in a nightmare state. You can hear and see, but you can't control the body. If I didn't talk to you next to me, you would even think you were dreaming. You want to talk, want to move. Your brain keeps sending messages to your body, but there is no feedback from your body. This will make your brain instinctively think that your body has died. This will produce a special fear. Even if you keep comforting yourself, you can't restrain the birth of this fear. With that, the last gap in the female ninja's eyes slowly closed. At the last moment when she closed her eyes, she only saw Uchiha Tunin take off his shirt. However, the next moment, Uchiha Tunin took out a neatly folded white coat from the drawer beside the bed and put it on. He also put on a medical mask and gloves. Then, Uchiha Tunin pressed the invisible mechanism on the wall. With the sound of the mechanism turning, the wall on the opposite side of the sofa in the room rose, revealing the laboratory filled with instruments behind it. However, Uchiha Tunin knew that her current state was like a soul trapped in a dead body. Under the effect of the medicine, this body turned off all information transmission to her. Uchiha Tunin came to the laboratory, took out a needle filled with green liquid, and went to the bedside. While pushing the piston and expelling the air in the needle, he said to himself, The body energy represents the yang escape, and the spiritual energy represents the yin escape. At this moment, the power of the yang escape almost completely disappeared, leaving only the power of the yin escape. No, it doesn't count as disappearing. It just said that the yang and yin escape have lost connection. They have been separated. Next is the solidification of the connection, recording data. After thinking about it, he inserted the needle into the arm of the female ninja. Then he took out a large number of instruments and began to check the body data of the female ninja. At this time, the female ninja only felt that she was locked in a sealed dark room. No matter how she shouted in her heart, it was useless. She instinctively felt great fear in her heart. In the end, she curled up in the darkness and waited silently. After an unknown period of time, the female ninja suddenly felt a wave of dizziness. Where am I? The female ninja slowly opened her eyes to sleep, only to find that her vision was pitch black. However, the sensation on her face made her realize that she was wearing an eye patch. And he seemed to be lying on the bed. You just fell asleep. 
A magnetic and gentle voice sounded in her ears. The memory of the female ninja revived and remembered the scene in front of her eyes. After you, insulted me. As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tunin's innocent voice sounded in his ears. No, I just purely tested your data in your nightmare state. Then I gave you a sleeping needle, allowing your brain and body to rest well. You slept very soundly. You slept for about 17 hours. The female ninja tried to move her fingers, but found that there was no feeling below her neck. Her voice trembled a little. Why can't I move? There was a rustling sound in her ears, and the female ninja did not know what Uchiha Tunin was doing. Don't worry, calm down. The area below your neck has been anesthetized by me, so you can't move it. Pa. A crisp slapping sound rang out. Do you feel anything? The female ninja was slightly stunned and instantly thought of something. No, you pulled off my pants? After what he said that he didn't want to insult me. It's good that you don't feel anything. Achiha Tunin's satisfied voice sounded from below him. Beep, 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 beep. At this moment, the female ninja heard the alarm of an instrument. It seemed to be coming from the other side of the room. This old thing is always problematic. I tried to repair it several times, but the parts inside are too precise. High technology is a bit beyond my knowledge. Achiha Tunin's voice had already appeared on the other side. Bang! Along with the sound of slapping, the alarm disappeared. Sure enough, it will be normal after a pat. I'll play some music for you to ease your emotions. There's really no need to be so nervous. The phonograph at the head of the bed transmitted the music played by a music master from the snow country. It was unknown where Achiha Tunin got the music, but it sounded especially soothing. The female ninja's fear gradually disappeared. Since she had no strength to resist, she decided to let others do what they wanted. Okay. Achiha Tunin's satisfied voice came from below. You still have a feeling above your neck. There might be some errors. But I have to observe your reaction, so. I am very sorry. The female ninja felt an unprecedented excitement in her mind. She asked, what exactly did you do to me? Then, the female ninja found that she had been turned over and was lying sideways on the bed. Then, the blindfold was also removed. Achiha Tunin, who was wearing a white shirt, looked at the delicate face of the female ninja with a smile and said gently, I did something very meaningful, very crazy. This guy is even more abnormal than I thought. However, it seems to be normal compared to the plot in the book. The female ninja thought of this and pursed her lips. Then how will you deal with me in the future? Achiha Tunin leaned over and pressed his forehead against the female ninja's forehead. At the same time, he stroked her face with his palm and said, Looking at your performance, you have always been easy to talk to. You probably won't be able to return to the wind country in the future. Do you have anything you want to say to your family? I will help you write a letter and send it back. The female ninja only felt a hot male scent coming towards her face, and her mentality also changed. Her eyes were hazy as she said, You want to take me back to Kanoha? Achiha Tunin did not reply. He slowly got up and picked up the paper and pen prepared by the bedside. He returned to the sofa and sat down, his eyes signaling. The female ninja looked at Achiha Tunin with a complicated expression, and then she sighed as if she had accepted her fate. I don't have parents. Achiha Tunin raised his eyebrows and nodded, it's normal. The female ninja thought for a moment and recalled, write a letter to the chief and say, as the female ninja explained, Achiha Tunin quickly recorded it on the paper. After a long time, Achiha Tunin looked up at the clock on the wall. He put down the pen in his hand and said lightly, Let's say this much. The female ninja who was talking thought that Achiha Tunin was tired of writing, so she stopped talking. She looked at Achiha Tunin quietly. This is the man I have to rely on in the future. Hey, why aren't you talking? Achiha Tunin stared at the clock and put his index finger in front of his mouth. SHH, there are still 10 seconds. The female ninja frowned and asked, 
What do you mean? As soon as she finished speaking, the female ninja's pupils suddenly contracted, and she felt her mind buzzing. Uh, uh. Seeing the female ninja's face gradually twist, Achiha Tunin put down his disguise and crossed his arms in front of his chest. Thank you for your contribution to the improvement of the ninja realm. The thing I gave you at the beginning can quickly consume your body's energy. From then on, your body will be dormant and will no longer give any feedback to your brain. This way, your brain and body will lose connection. After that, I gave you another needle and solidified the connection. Life experiment is really wonderful. Especially in this world, there are actually things like Yang and Yin escape. But unfortunately, the yang and yin escape of the human body are constantly affecting each other. It's too troublesome to study the records. So I thought of separating them for the time being to record the data. The data recording process is not bad. It will help my research. The needle just now was the crazy potion I learned in pharmaceutics. I have seen madmen before, but I am curious about what the world of madmen is like. With the spirit of exploration, I want to experience it myself. At the same time, record the medical process. You are the calmest one among all the captives. Stable emotions can make me better observe data and lower the error. That's why I kept comforting you. As he spoke, Achiha Tunin raised his head and looked at the screen of the apparatus on the side. So that's how it is. Has the frequency of brainwaves become irregular? The amplitude of the peaks and the valleys are also uneven. At this moment, the image on the instrument screen twisted and the alarm sounded. Beep, beep, beep. What a waste. This kind of thing happened at the critical moment. Achiha Tunin frowned. He got up and walked to the instrument, slapping it a few times with his palm. Bang, bang, bang. The screen of the instrument instantly turned black, and a puff of black smoke appeared. Who? Achiha Tinan exhaled heavily, his face ugly. It seems that I really can't use it. I also don't know this kind of high-tech. Ah! At the same time, a high-pitched scream sounded. The female ninja jumped up from the bed and stretched out her claws. With a ferocious smile on her face, she grabbed towards Achiha Tinan. However, in the next moment, the female ninjas seemed to have been cast with a paralysis spell and her entire body froze on the spot. On the ground, Achiha Tunin's shadow was stretched out all the way to the feet of the female ninja. Achiha Tunin reached out and touched his chin and said thoughtfully, Has it reached the limit? I can't believe she can break through the limit of the potion. Let me see the senses world of the madman. After saying that, he stretched out his right hand and covered the female ninja's head. Mind reading technique. In the enclosed space, half was a warm pink room and the other half was a laboratory under a blazing white light. Strange music was playing in the phonograph. Time passed. After a long time, Achiha Tunin withdrew his palm and said excitedly, So that's how it is. No wonder people are the most likely to go crazy when they are frightened and in great grief because this kind of stimulation will cause the soul to have the instinct to escape. The origin of the soul that is constantly consuming wants to break free from the body, causing the spiritual energy to rise sharply and invade the divine sense. No wonder most of the ninjas who are good at using Yin escape ninjutsu are relatively calm. So it was because they were good at controlling spiritual energy. After saying that, Achiha Tunin frowned again and thought in his heart, he still hadn't found a way to combine yin and yang. Could it be that he had to rely on the power of six paths to do so? What about the principle? There must be a principle in everything, right? The only instrument was broken, so how could he continue to study it? After thinking about it, Achiha Tunin looked at the female ninja who was frozen. This experimental material had been destroyed. With a thought, the dark shadows spread to the neck of the female ninja, turning into a pair of black hands, and gently twisted. With the sound of something heavy falling to the ground, Achiha Tunin came to the side of the burnt instrument and looked at the nameplate behind the instrument. It was marked with the words, Made in Wind Country. Achiha Tunin immediately touched his chin and muttered, 
Yes, those guys who play with puppets should know how to repair this thing. It seems that I have to go out to exercise my muscles and bones. In this half month, as the three villages continuously entered rain country to assassinate each other, Achiha Tinan also obtained the abilities of the Inoshikacho and Aburaim. Especially the shadow model of the Nara clan, it was completely a pure in style ninjutsu. The current Achiha Tunin was already able to control the power of Yang and Yin style as he wished. However, he was unable to merge Yang and Yin style to form Yin and Yang style. Chapter 240 The Impending Doom The rain country was located in the basin, and the northwest was the plateau of the earth country. The southwest was the mountain range that pierced through the wind country. The warm and humid air from the north and south of the continent of the Ninja Realm was trapped here after arriving in the rain country. The cold wind in the northwest passed through the gap between the plateau and the mountain range and met the warm air flow in the rain country. This was also the reason why the rain country had heavy rain all year round. Boom! In the evening, the sky was covered with dense clouds, and lightning cut through the haze in the sky like a poisonous snake in a small village at the border of the rain country and the wind country. Because of the war, the villagers here temporarily moved elsewhere. Under the dim yellow sky, there was only one house that was still lit up. The warm yellow bedside lamp shone on the narrow bedroom. Outside the window, the rain was quietly weeding a thin gauze that was like smoke and fog, covering the sky and the earth. A little boy with silver hair leaned in the woman's arms with a pale face, staring at the comic book in the woman's hand. He did not know most of the words in the comic book, so he could only look at the illustrations and imagine the scene in the book from the woman's words. The little duck swam like this. Finally, it came ashore and found the duck mother. The woman had just finished speaking when the little duck found the duck mother. The little boy held the woman's hands more tightly. Cough, cough. The little boy showed a painful look and coughed heavily. The woman immediately put down the comic book in a panic and patted his back with her palm. She said with a distressed face, Is it starting to hurt again? Dad should be coming back soon. There will be medicine later. The little boy nodded with a pale face. He looked up at the woman and said, Mom, am I going to die? The woman shook her head and forced a smile. She gently stroked her back and said, No, you just need to rest and you will get better soon. The little boy's eyes were misty. He stared at the woman's eyes seriously and said with a crying voice, When I die, you must be as obedient as me and accompany you for me. The woman felt something stuck in her throat and held the little boy in her arms. She slowly shed tears and forced a smile. Don't think about it. You will soon get better. Cough, cough. Listening to the weak cough of the little boy in her arms, the woman felt a heart-wrenching pain. The little boy had a rare disease, and the old doctors in the village were helpless. They could not even find out the cause of the disease. At the beginning, the family conditions were not very good, and they thought that they would recover slowly. The disease would always heal itself. However, when the little boy turned three years old, his condition quickly worsened. He could not walk normally. He could not stand in the wind or bask in the sun. Coincidentally, during this period of time, the Third Ninja World War had begun. The villagers had all left. However, in order to accompany the child for the last journey, the parents of the family chose to stay. Not long later, they heard heavy footsteps coming from outside the house. Squeak! Dad is here to buy medicine. You will get better soon. When the woman heard the sound of the door opening, a look of hope appeared in her eyes. She quickly got up and went to welcome him. However, when the woman came to the living room, she saw that her husband was drenched in rain. His hands were empty as he stood at the door. His eyes were red and his face was haggard. The man just lowered his head like this, as if he didn't dare to look at his wife. The hope in the woman's eyes faded, and she said softly, Have the people from the other villages moved away as well? The man did not reply. He slowly squatted down, one hand on his knee and one hand on his forehead. He nodded silently. The woman pursed her lips, took a deep breath, and choked. 
It doesn't matter if you can't buy it. Go and see the child. The man sighed silently and stood up with his shoe cabinet. He dragged his tired body to the bedroom door. Then he raised his head and took a deep breath. He patted his cheek and smoothed his messy hair. He pulled himself together and walked in with a smile. The little boy had been staring at the bedroom door. Seeing his father walk in with a relaxed face, he immediately opened his hands and shouted, Dad! The man came to the bed and wiped his pants with his right hand without leaving a trace. Then he reached out and gently rubbed the little boy's silver-gray hair. The little boy narrowed his eyes and his face was filled with a cheerful smile. The woman leaned against the bedroom door and watched the scene. Her heart was slightly sour. He gently wiped the tears that were about to overflow and said softly, I've been tired for a day. I'm going to cook. The man withdrew his right hand when he heard this. He turned around and walked to his wife. He held her hand and looked at her belly. I'll go. You have to take care of yourself. The woman looked down slightly and then nodded. The man looked back at the little boy and then silently went to the kitchen to prepare dinner. Dada! The heavy sound of cutting vegetables came from the kitchen. Woo! The wind rose, and it seemed that someone was pushing the window hard. The rain was shaking in the wind, and it was getting denser and stronger. It had become a downpour. The originally misty water vapor seemed to be blown away by the wind, and the world outside the window became dim and clear. The man put down the kitchen knife and went to the kitchen window. He reached out his hand and was about to close the window. Suddenly, the man's eyes narrowed. He saw abnormal flames in the distant forest. Oh no, this is a ninja's ninjutsu. The man quickly closed the window and then closed all the lights in the room. The woman came out of the little boy's bedroom and asked with a puzzled face, What's wrong? The man said with a serious face, Hide. I saw a ninja fighting in the distance. The two of them quickly acted together. The man was responsible for closing the doors and windows and closing the curtains. The woman was responsible for wrapping the little boy in a quilt and putting him in a narrow wardrobe. No matter what happens later, you can't make a sound, understand? Although the little boy did not understand what happened, he still nodded sensibly. The wardrobe was dark, and the little boy felt a little scared. Fortunately, there was still a gap in the wardrobe door, and the little boy could see the scene in the bedroom through the gap. He only saw his mother hurriedly leave the bedroom and close the bedroom door. After the sound of the door closing faded, the whole room fell into a dead silence. Time passed by bit by bit. The little boy gradually fell asleep. Bang! The violent kicking of the door woke the little boy from his sleep. But he remembered his mother's instructions to him before that he could not go out no matter what happened. He immediately shrank into the quilt wrapped around him and stared at the gap in the wardrobe. However, he heard the sound of rummaging through boxes and cabinets outside the bedroom, as well as the strange conversation. What kind of weather is this? It's always raining. It's either a heavy rain or a light rain. I'm about to get moldy. This place is already considered good. We're close to the wind nation. We can still see a few sunny days. Let's find something to eat. I'm going to vomit from eating the military grain pills. Captain, there's someone here. Look at the vegetables on the kitchen plates that have just been cut. Kuzwa, check them with your perception ninjutsu. Find them out and ask for information. Yes, Captain. Fellow ninjas, I'm sorry. I just slept for a while and didn't find you. For a moment, the little boy heard his father's familiar voice. Chapter 241 Despicable In the living room, for Kanoha ninjas were leaning against the sofa, looking at the trembling man kneeling on the ground with great interest. These four people were Nara Sando, Yamanaka Tsukuzo, Akimichi Yank, and Saritobi Masato. Among them, Nara Sando was the captain of this combat team, while Akimichi Yank was the jinin who graduated from the same year as Uchiha Tunin. Of course, Akimichi Yank was two years older than Uchiha Tunin. 
The reason why the team had an additional Saratobi Masato was because both of them were biased towards control. As for Akimichi Yank, he was too young and was just a genin. With no other choice, the team temporarily had an additional Saratobi Masato to make up for the damage output. Nara Sando sniffed his nose and wiped the kunai in his hand with a tissue. He said coldly, What a strong smell of medicine. Are you the only one here? The man gave a flattering smile and said, Yes, yes, I am the only one here. I was going to move out, but I was a little sick recently. It's raining again. I'm worried that my body won't be able to withstand it. Nara Sando sneered. He leaned forward slightly and picked up a long hair from the coffee table. He said slowly, It seems that you are not honest. Such long hair is also yours? The man suddenly became nervous and stammered, This. Nara Sando glanced at the layout of the room and pouted at Saratobi Masato. Search the room and find the person. The man's heart skipped a beat. At this moment, the door of a room opened and a woman walked out timidly. She knelt down in front of the four people in the living room and lowered her head deeply. My four lords, I am really sorry. I was a little timid, so I never dared to come out. The man quickly introduced, This is my wife. The moment the woman appeared, other than the youngest Akimichi Yank, the eyes of the other three lit up. After hearing the man's introduction, the three of them quietly looked at each other and revealed indescribable smiles. Captain, I am hungry. Akimichi Yank suddenly shouted. He rubbed his stomach in a daze and looked around. The man immediately said with a flattering face, If you don't mind, please stay here. I will get some food for you. Nara Sando waved his hand and said, Don't worry. Before that, we have to make sure that you are not spies from the Hidden Sand Village. The man heard this and waved his hand nervously, We are really villagers from this village, not ninjas. Masato, who was wantonly sizing up the woman's figure, sneered. Spies are not all ninjas. They can also be civilians. We have to carefully search. Captain, I am so hungry. Akimichi Yank stretched out his hand and tugged at Nara Sando's sleeve. Nara Sando was slightly helpless. Pigs and butterflies had always been the best combination. However, his own teammate was a little foodie, this was a little annoying. Nara Sando impatiently pointed to the man kneeling on the ground and said, Go make us something to eat first. Yank, you keep an eye on him. As for your wife, let's search her first. The flattering smile on the man's face instantly froze, and then a worried expression appeared on his face. Your Excellency, this is not appropriate. Masato coldly snorted, This is an order. If you don't want to die, be obedient. The man clenched his fists and finally lowered his head helplessly. Yes. When Akimichi Yank heard that the man in front of her was going to cook for her, he immediately jumped up from the sofa and grabbed the man's arm, pulling him towards the kitchen. Hurry up, I'm starving to death. It would be even better if there was meat. The two of them entered the kitchen just like that. Saratobi Masato, under the signal of Nara Sando, came outside the kitchen and slammed the kitchen door shut. The woman trembled all over, her heart filled with extreme fear. She trembled and said, My lord. When the three of them saw the nervous look on the woman's face, a raging fire ignited in their hearts, and they all revealed evil smiles at the same time. Nara Sando slowly stood up and said meaningfully, Take her to the room and search. That silly kid Yank is still young, and he is not suitable for this task. Saratobi Masato and Yamanaka Tsukuzo immediately picked up the woman from the left and right and headed to the bedroom. Squeak! Bang! The little boy who was hiding in the wardrobe suddenly saw his mother being pushed into the bedroom by three strangers through the gap. He was both worried and afraid and did not know what to do. However, when he thought of what his mother had told him before, he curled up and did not dare to move, nor did he dare to speak. The woman clasped her hands in front of her chest and said with an uneasy expression, My lord, just ask what you want to ask. I won't hide it. 
Sarutobi Masato rubbed his hands and walked forward with a smirk, I don't want to know anything about a commoner like you. This place can be considered as the territory of the wind country. Your wind country has caused us to risk our lives to fight to the death. Today, I will take some interest from you. Yamanaka Tsukuzo said as he stretched out his hand. The woman instantly understood the situation she was in for. She staggered back and avoided their outstretched hands. However, she suddenly bumped into the edge of the bed. She sat down by the bed and shook her head. No. I beg you, please don't. The woman begged in a low voice, but she did not dare to be too loud, afraid that she would alarm her husband. Sarutobi Masato could not wait to tear off the woman's coat. The woman immediately turned over and crawled to the other side of the bed, but her ankle was grabbed by Yamanaka Tsukuzo. Sarutobi Masato jumped onto the bed and held the woman's left hand and neck respectively. He turned around and said to Nara Sando, Captain, use the shadow technique to control her. I want to try a new style. Nara Sando slowly took off his clothes and said lazily, Masato, you make me feel disgusted. I don't want to waste my chakra on a commoner. Yamanaka Tsukuzo looked at the struggling woman, and a trace of nostalgia flashed through his eyes. Speaking of which, I also played with a few civilians in the last ninja war, but none of them had the taste of this woman. This kind of good thing was naturally something that Nara Sando, as the captain, would not let go of. Nara Sando took off his shirt and turned off the light. Perhaps it was because there were two other people present that caused him to feel a bit distant in his heart. Rumble. The dazzling blue light of lightning suddenly flashed by, the world outside constantly flashing, and the room was also quickly changing between the light and the dark. Crack! Crack! The giant thunder rumbled, shaking the hearts of people and shaking the earth. In the wardrobe, the little boy was so scared that his body trembled slightly. Through the gap, he could only see his mother's disheveled hair and tears. He raised his head a little and was facing himself, shaking his head continuously. Don't, don't. The dark clouds that covered the sky seemed to have accumulated for too long, and the rain kept falling, and it was getting bigger and bigger. Soon, the sound of a kimichi yank chewing came from outside the bedroom. At this moment, the bedroom door was suddenly opened. Bang! The scene seemed to have stopped. The man stood at the door in a daze, looking at his wife who was being humiliated. His entire body trembled, his fists clenched tightly, and his eyes filled with blood. Sarutobi Masato, who had just arrived, seemed to be affected. He got up with a displeased expression and shouted angrily, Yank, why did you let this guy in? What a waste. The woman turned her head numbly. She looked at her husband who was standing at the door and cried. You can go. I beg you to go. We won't retaliate against you. Two streams of tears rolled down the man's face. In the end, he was still unable to control the anger in his heart. He shouted, bastard. I will kill you all. Puff. A line of blood splashed on the woman's face and the wardrobe. The woman opened her mouth in horror, but found that she had lost her voice. At this time, a kimichi yank, who was outside, heard the movement and came to the door of the bedroom. He was shocked by the scene inside and was at a loss. He said, Captain, Senior Tsukuzo, Senior Masato, what are you doing? Ho ho ho. A strange voice gradually came out of the woman's mouth, like a mad demon, but she was held down by Sarutobi Masato and could not move. The three of them looked at each other, only to see Tsukuzo walk to Yank, whose face was covered with oil stains, and put his arm around his shoulder. Yank, you are still young and ignorant. This kind of thing is very common on the battlefield. After all, we are on the edge of life and death, and we have always been tense. We need to vent. Yank only felt his world shatter. The education he had always received, Kanoha ninjas, were all symbols of justice and beauty. But the scene in front of him completely broke his understanding. Yank's mind was in chaos, but it's not right to do this. Ryo patted him on the shoulder and said, It's okay. 
I used to be like you. I can't accept it for the first time. Don't worry, we will guide you to adapt. Captain, will you help him or will I help him? Nara Sando shrugged and said, You do it. Tsukuzo immediately gestured to Yank and shouted, Heart turn technique. Tsukuzo fell to the ground, and Yank quivered. His eyes changed as if he was a different person. He smiled and said, Yank, you just stay at the side and feel well. Let me teach you. After saying that, he controlled Yank's body to walk towards the naked woman. Ah! Oh. A heart-wrenching scream was accompanied by a roaring thunder. Half an hour later, the two corpses in the bedroom were stacked together and the blood spread around the floor. The three of them looked at Yank, who had a look of reminiscence on his face, and revealed a meaningful smile. Suddenly, Nara Sando frowned and muttered, No, this man is strong. He doesn't look like he's sick. The smell of medicine in this room is so strong. There might be someone else. The little boy in the closet was curled up in a daze. He didn't cry or shout. Instead, he had a silly expression. The four people outside were preparing to search the house. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning tore through the sky, illuminating the world. A figure shone through the bedroom window onto the floor. Who is it? The four of them turned their heads to look. They saw an expressionless red-haired youth standing outside the window. He raised his hand and controlled the two puppets to prepare for action. However, in the next moment, the red-haired youth's expression changed as if he was afraid of something. In an instant, he disappeared without a trace. Captain, are we going to chase? Sarutobi Masato turned to look at Nara Sando. The other party was obviously a Saiyan village ninja, and there might be an ambush nearby. Nara Sando was about to give the order to chase when he suddenly heard heavy footsteps. Step, step, step. A series of footsteps sounded outside the room, and then there was a knock on the door. Sorry, the rain is too heavy. Can I come in to avoid the rain? Nara Sando immediately made a gesture, and the four people quietly left the bedroom and gently closed the bedroom door. Then the four people quietly hid in every corner of the room, staring at the door that had been unlocked because of the violent kick. No, 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 I am not the same as them. It's okay, I can open the door myself. Thank you. The person outside the door said strange words and gently pushed the door open. Chapter 242 Took Shelter from the Rain Squeak Perhaps it was because the door had been deformed from the violent kick. When it was pushed open, a sharp sound was heard as the horn scraped the floor. Boom! A blue bolt of lightning tore through the deep space, illuminating the outside world. A black figure stood at the door with an umbrella in hand. The black figure opened the door while keeping the umbrella. The four people in the room were blocked by the umbrella for a moment, so they could not see the person's specific appearance. However, from the position he was standing, they could feel an elegant and calm aura. After the black umbrella was put down, everyone could clearly see the true face of this person. The first to bear the brunt was that pair of scarlet red and bewitching Mangekyo Sharingan. Lord Tunin! Nara Sando exclaimed and jumped from the chandelier on the ceiling to the ground. The other three also appeared in the living room and knelt down on one knee to Uchiha Tunin. Uchiha Tunin did not have any special leadership status. The reason why they were so odd was ultimately because of his shocking strength. Uchiha Tunin glanced at them, smiled and said, It turns out to be Kanoa's compatriots. I thought there was an enemy hiding in the house. Lord Tunin, we are also here to avoid the rain. Sarutobi Masato was obviously a little guilty and shivered. After all, Uchiha Tunin had always been the kind of person who had a strong sense of justice in their minds. He could even go against the powerful Sanin for the sake of irrelevant civilians. Fortunately, they were smart enough to close the bedroom door just now. Sarutobi Masato only hoped that the other party would just sit in the living room and leave. Damn it, why is it raining? An easygoing smile appeared on Uchiha Tunin's face. He waved his hand and said, I have no interest in what you are here for and what you have done. 
Please do not disturb my conversation with the host. This is very impolite. The four of them looked at each other in confusion, completely unable to understand what Uchiha Tinan was saying. They saw Uchiha Tinan sit down on the sofa, his eyes staring at the empty living room floor, leisurely saying, Justice? What benefits are there? There are no benefits. Why would I waste my time? I can only apologize on their behalf. After Uchiha Tinan finished talking to himself, he pointed to the messy tea table and said, It's a mess. You don't even know how to clean up after eating. Yes, yes. The four of them quickly got up. The two of them cleaned up the remaining food on the coffee table and the two of them were in charge of wiping the table. Uchiha Tinan crossed his arms and leaned against the sofa. He pointed at his arms and said, Speaking of which, is the level of Kanoha's ninjas so bad now? You can't even find the children hiding in the room. Have you forgotten the most basic breathing perception? As soon as he finished speaking, the four people who were cleaning up the coffee table were shocked. What? There are still people? The four of them followed Uchiha Tunin's gaze and looked towards the tightly closed bedroom door. Their hearts shook. No, they could not let him in. Nara Sando and Masato looked at each other and quickly got up, walking towards the bedroom. Wait a minute. Achiha Tinan suddenly shivered, sat up straight, and shouted to stop the two of them. He saw that Achiha Tinan was looking straight at the bedroom, as if he could see everything inside through the door and the wall. His face gradually revealed a surprised expression. What a rare disease. It was a little like an innate genetic defect. It seemed to be a product of close relations reproduction. It was really pitiful. It could be considered a good material. Oh, there was also an embryo that had just been born. What kind of good day is it today to meet two rare materials in one go? After saying that, Achiha Tenen slowly got up and strode towards the bedroom. When the four people saw that Achiha Tenen was going to the bedroom, they were immediately scared out of their wits. If he only saw the corpse, he could still use it to deal with spies. However, the female corpse still had evidence of their crimes. Masato was the first to stand up and run to Achiha Tenen. He trembled and said, Sir, please sit down. Leave this small matter to us. Achiha Tenen stopped and the joy on his face disappeared. He turned his head and stared coldly into Masato's eyes. From the moment I entered the door, you kept interrupting. Do you understand what it means to respect the strong? As soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tenen immediately sent Masato a hell vision technique. Uh, Masato's pupils suddenly shrank, as if he had seen something terrifying. He fell to the ground and foamed at the mouth. The remaining three people subconsciously swallowed their saliva and stood in place trembling, not daring to move. Just like that, Achiha Tenen pushed open the bedroom door and walked in. As soon as he opened the door, a fishy smell assaulted his face. After Achiha Tenen started experimenting with the human body, he had seen all kinds of scenes and had no expression on his face. Looking at the two corpses in the room, Achiha Tenen shook his head with a face full of regret and said, The war is really cruel. After that, he took out a storage scroll from his ninja bag and opened it, taking out all kinds of tools from it. While fiddling with the tools, he said without raising his head, Two people, carry this female corpse on the bed. Yes. Nara Sando and Sakuzo saw that Achiha Tunin did not make any trouble, he was relieved and quickly carried the female corpse on the bed carefully. Achiha Tunin put on his medical gloves and mask and stood in front of the female corpse with a scalpel. He took a deep breath and said, This is my first time doing a caesarean section, and it is for the corpse. I am a little nervous. With that, Achiha Tenen became serious and began to perform a caesarean section for the female corpse. The sharp blades slowly cut open the abdomen of the female corpse. Perhaps it was because Achiha Tenen's technique was too good, but there was not much blood flowing out of it. A moment later, Achiha Tenen took out a palm-sized baby from the female corpse's abdomen. The baby was not fully formed yet. There was only the outline of a human being and two black eyes. 
The vocal cords had not developed yet, so it was naturally impossible for him to cry like the other babies. The hemp rope is specially picked out to cut. Misfortune is always looking for people who suffer. Innate genetic defect, rebellious child, coffin child, premature child. This little guy definitely wasn't a good thing in his previous life. How lucky you were to meet me in this life. Achiha Tunin used a clean disinfectant handkerchief to wipe the blood off the baby. He held the baby in one hand and examined it carefully. At the same time, he used the palm technique to nourish the baby's body and muttered, Life is fragile and tenacious, isn't it? Lord Tunin is right. Nara Sando said with a flattering smile. Achiha Tunin nodded in satisfaction. He carefully placed the baby into a container filled with green solution and said with a nostalgic expression, This little guy is too precious. If Orochimaru-sama was still here, he would definitely go crazy for him. Unfortunately, Orochimaru-sama died young and missed. Rumble! A bolt of lightning tore through the sky, as if confirming what Uchiha Tunin had said. Chapter 243, Justice Squeak! At this moment, the wardrobe door was pushed open. The little boy came out of the wardrobe with a numb expression. He stared at the little baby in the container and staggered over. Achiha Tunin took off his medical gloves and looked at the little boy who was coming towards him with interest. Why did you come out? Didn't your mother tell you not to come out no matter what? That's not right. Your illness should have caused you to lose your ability to move. You actually broke through the body restrictions. Not bad. The little boy's world seemed to only have a baby in a container. He turned a blind eye to everything around him and went straight to the container. He stretched out his arms and gently hugged the container. He leaned his head against the glass wall and looked at it in a daze. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. You like him very much too, right? Seeing that the little boy did not reply, Uchiha Tunin leaned over and stretched out his hand. Using his index finger and thumb to open the little boy's eyelids, he carefully observed his eyes. However, Uchiha Tunin analyzed as he observed. A young spirit does not have the ability to withstand extreme fear and hatred. It instinctively chose to escape, clearing up most of its memories. What exactly is the mechanism of the soul? Why are there people who are crazy but some people who have amnesia? I will slowly study it when I go back. After saying that, Achiha Tunin took his hand and placed it on the little boy's head. He gently rubbed it and said, Your parents protected you. Now you want to protect your brother? Even if you lost your memory, you still have a sense of responsibility. What a good child. Seeing that Achiha Tunin was so gentle to the little boy, Sando immediately whispered, Lord Tunin, do you want to take him in? Achiha Tunin nodded in satisfaction. Yes, I want to take them back and use them for live experiments. If they can survive, I will grant them the right to continue living. Hearing Achiha Tunin say the words live experiment without any hesitation, the eyes of the three people present all jumped and a great panic rose in their hearts. Nara Sando really didn't expect that the easygoing and righteous Kanoha hero that everyone talked about was actually the demon who conducted living experiments in secret. And now, Achiha Tunin told everyone this secret. In that case, it was very likely that in Achiha Tunin's eyes, they were already dead. Nara Sando immediately swallowed his saliva. His right hand quietly slipped into his ninja bag, and his face was embarrassed as he said, if Sir has no other instructions, we will go on a mission first. Achiha Tunin chuckled and said slowly, You're free to go. At the last moment of life. I still need to struggle symbolically. Otherwise, you won't have the chance. The moment the weak found out about the secret of the strong, their life and death could no longer be controlled by themselves. Besides, your death is more valuable to me. It can give me a perfect tool. Attack! Nara Sando shouted. He quickly formed a seal and said, Shadow imitation. Heart-turning technique. Sukuzo gestured at Achiha Tunin and said to Yank anxiously, Yank, what are you waiting for? 
If we don't kill him, we will definitely die. Yank hesitated for a moment, but still decided to attack Uchiha Tunin. Yank's body suddenly became bigger, turning into a ball and rolling towards Uchiha Tunin. Flesh Bullet Tank The first effect of the ninjutsu was the heart-turning technique of the Yamanaka. In an instant, the spiritual force of Tsukuzo poured into Uchiha Tunin's body. Seeing that Uchiha Tunin did not dodge, he was delighted. Success! In the next moment, his vision changed. However, Tsukuzo did not control Uchiha Tunin's body as expected. Instead, he appeared in a dark space. Tsukuzo tried to raise his hand and found that he was surrounded by a cage made of the power of the mind. He said in disbelief, This is Soul Prison. How do you know the secret technique of the Yamanaka clan? In the dark space, Uchiha Tunin sneered. Three people are attacking, but you want to give me a head first. The next moment, the spiritual force of Tsukuzo was drowned by the endless darkness. Ah! In the outside world, the body of Tsukuzo, who was lying on the ground, instinctively cried out in alarm. At the same time, the shadow under the feet of Nara Sando had already spread to the soles of Uchiha Tunin's feet. Just as Nara Sando breathed a sigh of relief, he discovered that his shadow had suddenly split apart and connected to the shadow of Yank's flesh tank. Yank's flesh tank instantly stopped, and his entire body was frozen on the spot. How? Is it possible? Nara Sando didn't quite understand what was going on. He clearly didn't control it, so why did it activate on its own? Could it be that there was something he didn't understand about this ninjutsu, which caused it to attack indiscriminately? As he was thinking, Nara Sando suddenly discovered in horror that he couldn't move. Achiha Tunin did not seem to be affected at all. He said slowly, I like the secret arts of the Nara clan very much. They are too useful. However, I will not kill you personally. As he spoke, he bent down and gently flicked the little boy's forehead. He said with a gentle expression, Little guy, they belong to you tonight. I will go and have a good rest. Then, Achiha Tunin put away the tools at a leisurely pace and then walked out of the bedroom and sat down on the sofa. He picked up the pen and scroll and began to record the experience of the Caesarean section. However, the shadow under Achiha Tunin maintained a state of extending out and controlled the Nara Sando. Soon, there was the wailing of a pig being slaughtered in the bedroom. Ah! Spare me! Shut up! Don't bite! Achiha Tunin wrote the experience of surgery on the scroll and glanced at the empty living room floor. In Achiha Tunin's vision, two pure white souls were continuously kowtowing to Achiha Tunin. The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly, and his left eye began to slowly spin. The two souls were pulled into Achiha Tunin's wine swallowing space under the attraction of the invisible force. No need to thank me. If you want to thank me, thank justice. Achiha Tunin chuckled. He suddenly thought of something and looked at the wall. Under the observation of his Byakugan, his vision penetrated through many obstacles. He saw the red-haired teenager hiding in the underground laboratory in the distance, tinkering with the charred corpse. Not long later, Achiha Tunin retracted his gaze. He saw a pair of bloody hands reach out from the bedroom door and grab the legs of Masato, who had fainted outside. Bit by bit, he was dragged into the room. Rumble. Outside the window was a dark night, and the howling of the wind was even louder. The sound made people feel as if the sky was about to collapse. Thick raindrops violently fell on the roof. The thunder and lightning, the violent wind and rain, covered up the shrill howls in the hut. The time and location are still consistent. It should be correct. Hmm. A very good assistant. Chapter 244 Blue Sky After the Rain The next morning. The soil after the heavy rain was full of damp and corrupt smell. As the sky turned white, thick morning fog rose up from the earth and shrouded the entire village. After a long time, a fiery red sun rose in the purple fog and erupted dazzling flames around it. As the temperature rose, 
the white morning fog melted into the air, and the whole world became clear and bright. Coo coo coo. Meep, meep, meep. In the sky, a few white pigeons happily tailed the birds that were fleeing in panic, enjoying themselves one by one. A few feathers fluttered as they fell towards the house below. One of the feathers brushed against the eaves of the house and landed on the windowsill. Sunlight shone through the corner of the curtain into the room. The person on the bed turned over and used her hand to block the light. She frowned and opened her hazy eyes. The first thing she saw was a gentle and calm side profile. You are awake. The magnetic and gentle voice sounded. Achi Hatunin, who was beside the bed, put down the book. He got up and went to the window, reaching out to pull open the curtains. The bright sunlight shone into the bedroom, making people feel a burst of warmth. The sun is good for the body. It is easy to grow taller. The little boy on the bed slowly sat up. Achiha Tinin picked up the container of the baby soaked at the bedside and gently put it in his arms. The little boy looked at the container in his arms and was stunned. The confusion in his eyes disappeared in an instant. The nightmarish scene from last night could not help but appear in his mind. His whole body began to tremble wildly, and his hands holding the container tightened. Achiha Tunin came to the bedside and sat down. He reached out to rub the little boy's silver-gray hair and comforted. Don't worry, your illness is a genetic defect, causing the skin and muscle joint function to be lost. Even if there is no medicine to cure the disease, it can be nourished through the palm technique to restore the organizational activity and reach the cure. It was not known whether it was Achiha Tunin's gentle action or the relaxed atmosphere at this time. The little boy gradually calmed down and raised his head to look around the room. The room was clean and tidy now, and the walls were snow white, as if they had just been washed again. The petals of the flowers on the windowsill were still glowing with small beads of water. A feather was lying quietly beside him, and the air was filled with a faint fragrance. The whole world seemed to be so harmonious and comfortable. It seemed that the hellish scene last night was just a nightmare. The little boy lowered his head and looked at the baby in the container in a daze. He muttered, Am I dreaming? Achiha Tunin smiled. He said gently, How could it be a dream? No matter how terrifying a dream was, it couldn't compare to the cruelty and despair of reality. You were busy last night until the middle of the night, and you fell because you couldn't take it anymore. When I came in, your entire body was covered in blood. The entire room was filled with blood and minced meat. I took advantage of the time when I was bathing you. I divided a few clones to clean up the room. I also buried your parents behind the room. Do you feel much more comfortable now? By the way, what is your name? I. The little boy gradually frowned, but he couldn't remember what his name was. Achiha Tunin smiled gently and reached out to hold the little boy's shoulder. He held him in his arms and patted him on the shoulder. You can't remember, right? Your memory is missing. But after my treatment, the situation did not continue to deteriorate. At the very least, you still remember your parents. When the little boy heard the word parents, his eyes sparkled and he muttered, Is my memory missing? Why don't I feel anything? Achiha Tunin patiently explained, People with amnesia generally can't feel their memory loss. It was like if no one had reminded him, people would never have thought that they had forgotten. The little boy quietly looked at the baby curled up in the green solution. He gently stroked the wall of the container and said, Thank you. You are a good person. Achiha Tunin raised his eyebrows and chuckled. I can't be considered a good person. I can only say that to you. I am one of your people. If you really think about it, I am much worse than those guys. I am a big bad guy. The little boy raised his head with a puzzled face when he heard this. He looked at Achiha Tunin's side profile that was illuminated by the sun and said, You're also a bad person? You don't look like one at all. Achiha Tunin shrugged and smiled. If there are only two definitions in this world, you can call me a bad person. Achiha Tunin did not intend to pretend in front of his future subordinates. In the beginning, Achiha Tunin and the Great Elder, 
who had a long-lost relationship, could open up half of their hearts to talk. Later, the great elder died, and Uchiha Tunin became good friends with Danzo. But the war would end sooner or later, and at that time, the two would inevitably have a conflict of interest, and the friendship between brothers would also break. Sometimes, Uchiha Tunin also wanted to have a partner to talk to to solve his social needs. Social needs were not necessary for Uchiha Tunin. But if there were, it would be better. Why are you helping me? I remember that they seem to know you. Aren't you two together? The little boy pondered for a long time and asked the question in his heart. Achiha Tunin pondered for a moment and said slowly, Good people will get along with good people and help each other. But between bad people, they will only use each other, and they have no value to me. So, so what if he was killed? In any case, in this world, other than his own life. Other people's lives are worthless. The little boy lowered his head when he heard that. His gaze was slightly dim as he said, So you want to use me? Achiha Tunin nodded and said, Yes, I want to use you. I saved you and your brother. Let the two of you have the right to breathe under the sun. One must have principles and learn to repay kindness. Besides, although I am using you, I have no intention of hurting you. You and your brother follow me, isn't it a good home? The little boy did not think for too long and nodded silently. Okay. The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled into a gentle smile. Let me introduce myself. My name is Achiha Tunin, Kanoha Ninja. In the future, you and your brother will follow me back to Kanoha. I will move you into the genealogy of the clan. This way, you will also have a noble surname. Now your name is E and your brother is Do. Hataki Do, Hataki E, it's a very good name, isn't it? Hataki Do. Hataki E. Hataki Do repeated the two names a few times. He looked up at Uchiha Tunin and said, Thank you. Will, will you survive? Uchiha Tunin pondered for a moment and touched his chin. He hasn't fully developed yet. The solution in this container is similar to the amniotic environment after my improvement last night. As long as a certain amount of nutrients is injected into the container every day, he will be able to grow up healthily. As for your congenital genetic defects, when I am done with my research, I can cure you at any time. After that, Achiha Tunin got up slowly and walked out of the bedroom. Come out and say goodbye to your parents. If you come again next time, you will probably have grown up. Hataki Do pursed his lips when he heard this, and a trace of determination flashed through his eyes. He immediately carried the container and got out of bed, following Achiha Tunin out of the room. Chapter 245 Abducted Successfully In the open space behind the house A new grave had already been piled up here. Achiha Tunin had considered that this couple was husband and wife. Therefore, he buried the two of them together. Hataki Do hugged the container and stood in front of the grave with Achiha Tunin. He did not cry or become hysterical. He just stood there quietly, as if he was in a daze, but also as if he was recalling something. However, Achiha Tunin knew that when everyone was in grief, the way they expressed their emotions was different. Some people would cry, some would laugh, and some would silently suppress all the grief in their hearts. Perhaps because of his illness, Hataki Do was much more sensible than his peers. In addition, he now had a younger brother who had yet to mature. He would subconsciously feel a sense of responsibility. A sense of responsibility would allow one's mind to grow rapidly and become more mature. After a long time, Achiha Tunin stretched out his hand and patted Hataki Do on the shoulder. He said softly, It's better to kneel to the relatives. This is etiquette. When Hataki Do heard this, he was stunned for a moment. Then, he nodded and placed the container on the ground. Then, he bent his knees and knelt down. After a long time, Achiha Tunin took a ninja pouch from his waist and handed it over. Don't be too sad. Open this and take a look. This is... Hataki Do opened the bag and took out two lifelike wooden sculptures. 
The moment he saw the wooden sculptures, his eyes turned red. There is a saying that makes one think of someone when they see something. Hataki Do choked and two streams of tears flowed down his cheeks. Uchiha Tunin slowly squatted down and reached out to stroke Hataki Do's hair. I'm worried that you will forget your parents because of your memory loss. That's why I carved wooden sculptures for them last night. This way, they can be by your side at any time. Watching you grow up healthily with your younger brother. At this moment, Hataki Do was already sobbing so much that he threw herself into Uchiha Tunin's arms and said, Thank you, Lord Tunin. Ding! Obtained the recognition of Hataki Do. Uchiha Tunin reached out and patted the back of Hataki Do. The corners of his mouth curled up into a smile as he said, This title of Lord is too distant. You and I will definitely get along with each other day and night in the future. Call me Mr. Mr. Tunin. After a long time, Hataki Do stopped crying and left Uchiha Tunin's arms. He saw Hataki Do organize his expression, turn his head and looked at the grave with a determined face. I will be a qualified brother and take good care of the orphan. You must be happy in another world. Don't worry about us. Uchiha Tunin smiled and said, As long as you are healthy, they will definitely be happy. After saying that, Uchiha Tunin looked up at the sky and said, You rest in the house for a while. I will deal with a small matter. I will pick you up and leave later. The village where Hataki Do lived was on the east side of the mountain range. The rain was abundant and the vegetation was lush and to the west of the mountain range was the territory of the wind country. The mountain range was like a clear dividing line, and the landscape on both sides of the east and west was like heaven and earth. To the east was a mountain forest, and to the west was a desolate desert. Deep underground in this desert, a wide laboratory was dug out. There was only an oil lamp burning in the laboratory, illuminating the entire space in a dim yellow. There were all kinds of strange parts on the ground, as well as a corpse that had been dismembered and soaked in a special container. A red-haired teenager was squatting on the ground, assembling the parts and broken arms one by one. His movement seemed a little urgent, as if he was worried about something. In almost a sealed space, besides the sound of assembling parts, there was only the sound of his own breathing. After a long time, an arm had been transformed. The red-haired teenager reached out and wiped the sweat off his forehead. Suddenly, the red-haired teenager's ears twitched. He paused for a moment and turned his head to look. A sandworm crawled out of the wall. Sandworms were a very common type of worm in the wind country. They survived by swallowing the micronutrients in the sand. The red-haired teenager breathed a sigh of relief and muttered, It seems that the man has a big impact on me. I'd be terrified if the alarms buried in the ground didn't warn me. The red-haired teenager continued to bury his head in the transformation of the next limb. For some reason, the red-haired teenager seemed to be a little absent-minded because of the movement just now. The invincible figure he saw on the battlefield kept appearing in his mind. The red-haired youth muttered as he transformed his limbs. Such a powerful ninja! How great would it be if I could transform him into a puppet one day? He would definitely be the world's greatest puppet. As he spoke, the red-haired youth felt the puppet components in his hand suddenly become less fragrant. It seemed like the strongest wind shadow was only that. Transforming a puppet was also a type of physical activity. The red-haired youth wiped the sweat off his forehead, his breathing becoming slightly hurried. After the transformation was completed, it was activated by injecting chakra. The red-haired youth held an arm component in one hand and injected chakra into it. The puppet arm began to move according to the red-haired youth's intention. A satisfied smile flashed across the red-haired youth's lips as he muttered, Not bad. Suddenly, the red-haired youth's pupils constricted. He felt as if his heart had suddenly been gripped. A thick sense of foreboding seemed to envelop him. There was someone behind him. The red-haired youth suddenly turned his head. He spread out his five fingers, and several puppets appeared around the red-haired youth, protecting him. The oil lamp swayed gently. In the dim yellow laboratory, various parts and equipment were placed everywhere. 
There was not a single trace of being moved. The red-haired youth frowned and muttered, Strange, it feels weird. I can't tell what is wrong. What is the problem? The red-haired teenager looked around the laboratory several times, but he did not find anything strange. But the warning in his heart kept reminding him that something had changed here. After a long time, the red-haired youth, whose mind was still tense, let out a long sigh of relief. He repeatedly told himself in his heart that there was no problem, and only then did he suppress the alarm in his heart. The puppets around him dispersed, turned around, and squatted down again, undergoing the transformation of the puppets. However, the red-haired youth had just squatted halfway when he was stunned. He raised his head and looked ahead. In front of him was the wall of the laboratory, which was illuminated by the oil lamp. Then, he turned around. The oil lamp behind him was still quietly burning. The red-haired youth took a deep breath. His eyes slowly moved down. There was no shadow under his feet. Only then did the red-haired youth discover where the abnormality was. There were so many parts in the entire laboratory, but these parts all had one thing in common. Their backs were facing the ground of the oil lamp, and there was no shadow. At the same time, a shadow spread from the back of the red-haired youth to the back of his neck, separating into a pair of hands that held the red-haired youth's neck. Chapter 246 Friendly Visit Uh! The red-haired youth widened his eyes, and his pupils trembled. In this moment of crisis, the red-haired youth's lowered fingers moved slightly. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh! The surrounding puppets opened their mouths at the same time, shooting out a dense thousand books at the red-haired youth. The tip of each thousand books was smeared with green venom, and it could be said that blood would cut the throat. It had to be said that not only was the red-haired youth's control technique ingenious to the extreme, but the precision of the puppets he made were also extremely meticulous. In the dense thousand books, every single one of them perfectly missed the red-haired youth's position, completely sealing off his entire body. Dada! Thousands of books, like raindrops, pierced into the wall. But the huge grip on his neck and the sense of suffocation did not disappear. The red-haired teenager moved his eyes to the corner of his eyes and saw the dark shadow on his shoulder. Were those Kanoha ninjas here? In other words, it was possible that the man was here as well. Damn it! When exactly was it? Shasha! At the same time, the sound of crawling could be heard in the laboratory. Sandworms broke out of the ground in the middle of the laboratory. These black sandworms were quickly devouring the soil on the ground. Gradually, the number of sandworms became more and more, like the number of grains of sand. The ground was swallowed into a circular pit and gradually expanded under the efforts of the sandworms. How cautious are you? There are explosion talismans and alarm devices everywhere. Uchiha Tenen's gentle voice came from the deep pit. He saw Uchiha Tenen standing on a circular stone pillar and slowly rising from the pit, as if he was riding an escalator. After the stone pillar had completely risen to the same level as the ground. Under Uchiha Tenen's control, the rock quickly transformed into a stone seat. Uchiha Tenen ignored the other party's vigilant gaze and sat down gently. Then, he waved his hand and said, Let's disperse. As soon as he finished speaking, the densely packed pitch-black sandworms burrowed into the ground. Only then did Uchiha Tunin carefully size up the red-haired youth who was controlled by the shadow imitation. He said unhurriedly, I advise you not to move. I'm not here to kill you. If you are willing to have a good talk, blink your eyes. The red-haired youth immediately blinked. The corners of Uchiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He controlled the shadow that was holding the red-haired youth's neck to fade away. The red-haired youth coughed heavily a few times. Then, he took a few deep breaths and stared at Uchiha Tunin. The two of them looked at each other in silence. After a long time, Uchiha Tunin said with certainty, Sasori. Sasori frowned and said in a deep voice, You know me? Uchiha Tunin nodded with a gentle expression. We've known each other for a long time. I heard that you're the most talented puppet master in Hidden Sand Village. Sasori lowered his eyes and moved his right foot a little away. 
he discovered that a small hole had appeared on the ground at some point in time. It must have been Uchiha Tenen who controlled the hole in the rockworm and then used shadow imitation O sneak attack him. Why are you looking for me? If you want the body, you can take it. Sasori had seen Uchiha Tenen's strength and knew that once the two fought, he had almost no chance of winning. He immediately expressed his willingness to give up the third Kazakage corpse that he had obtained with great difficulty. Hearing this, Achiha Tunin chuckled and shook his head. If he was alive, perhaps I would be a little interested. Moreover, I deliberately left the corpse for you that day. Consider it a gift for you. Actually, I came here to ask you for a favor. Sasori heaved a sigh of relief in his heart. His eyes narrowed slightly as he said, Go ahead. Achiha Tunin took out a storage scroll, took out the item inside, and placed it on the ground. It was the equipment that had been broken in the laboratory. This thing is broken, and I don't know how to repair it. Sasori raised his eyebrows slightly and said in surprise, You came to me just to ask me to fix this for you? Achiha Tunin shook his head and said, Of course not. I have always loved to study since I was a child. When you fix it, please teach me the principle of this thing. In the future, no matter how bad this thing is, I won't have to come all the way here to trouble you. Speaking up to this point, Achiha Tunin leaned forward slightly and said in a low voice, In addition, I want all the knowledge you have about puppet techniques, especially the human puppet you created yourself. Impossible. Sasori refused with a determined face, and his hands were in a combat posture. Achiha Tunin chuckled and waved his hand with an easygoing expression. Don't be so sure. Most of the things in this world have a price. Name your price. Ninjutsu, secret medicine, human material, money, you can bring it up. Knowledge is something that needs to be shared. What kind of monopoly is this? Sasori looked serious and said in a low voice, I don't want anything. You are a Kanoha ninja, and your strength is already so strong. Why do you want to learn puppet technique? Hearing this, Achiha Tenen touched his chin and muttered, I really didn't think about it. I just happened to meet you and saw that you were weak and easy to bully. If I didn't take something from you, I would feel that this trip was a loss. I learned this thing and it was purely to fill up the knowledge bank. When Sasori heard this, a hint of anger appeared on his face. He said coldly, Impossible. These are all secrets of Hidden Sand Village. Even if I die, I won't give them to you. Achiha Tenen spread out his hands and said lightly, Then there is nothing to talk about. So! A ghost-faced black puppet appeared behind Achiha Tenen. The puppet body stretched out six puppet arms, and a sharp blade appeared at the tip of each puppet arm, stabbing towards the back of Achiha Tunin's head. Bang! A sharp stone pillar rose up from the ground and pierced through the ghost face puppet, hanging it above. At the same time, Sasori had also launched an attack. It was unknown when he had jumped back onto the wall. His feet firmly stepped on the wall, threw out a scroll, and opened it. He shouted, Cataclysmic flow. A rapid stream of water suddenly burst out from the scroll and headed towards Achiha Tunin. Achiha Tunin quickly shook the storage scroll and stored the instruments on the ground into it. Then, he stretched out his palm and aimed at the water pillar. Achiha Tunin's palm rapidly expanded, completely covering himself behind it. Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
testing new technique. A moment later, the violent corrosion seemed to have been exhausted, and only then did Uchiha Tunin remove the multiplication technique. It had to be said that in this war, the greatest harvest for Uchiha Tunin was the secret arts and blood of the Inoshika Cho and other clans. Their ninjutsu might not be outstanding in terms of attack and defense, but they all had their own advantages. Uchiha Tunin even had a feeling that he seemed to have left the scope of ninja and became a cultivator in the novels of his previous life. After the floor of the laboratory was corroded by the violent corrosion, it was already full of potholes. The entire laboratory was filled with poisonous white mist. Sasori's figure had long disappeared, but when they fought just now, he found that the violent corrosion was ineffective against Uchiha Tunin. He decisively activated the mechanism and escaped through the secret escape tunnel. There was no trace of anxiety on Uchiha Tunin's face as he raised his palm to observe the remaining liquid in his palm. He sniffed it and then stuck out his tongue to lick it. He smashed it and said, The corrosiveness and toxicity look very good. It is quite convenient to turn into a corpse. Unfortunately, it is useless to me. Then, he slowly got up and walked towards the open secret passage. In nature, hunters would not directly hunt prey when they were full. Instead, they would constantly play with their prey in order to train their hunting skills. Achiha Tunin could use Sasori to familiarize himself with the new secret techniques he had recently acquired. If Achiha Tunin was really playing with Sasori, he would have activated the Manjikyu. It was completely possible to use a Manjikyu level illusion to make Sasori lose its combat power. In the dark secret passage, Sasori was fleeing in panic. The secret passage was like a maze. Only one path was correct, and the others were all dead ends covered with mechanisms. Step, step, step. The crisp and steady sound of footsteps echoed in the secret passage. Sasori was shocked to find that the voice seemed to have been following him not far away. Damn! How does he know the right way? Stimulated by the strong sense of crisis, Sasori's speed increased a little. You won't be able to escape. I advise you to think about it carefully. I have always liked to make friends and I don't like to have enemies. Between friends, you should be happy to share good things, right? How can the secrets of the village compare to deep brotherly love? A voice that seemed to want to claim his life echoed through the passageway, continuously entering Sasori's ears. Sasori only felt that these words were getting louder and louder, which meant that the distance between him and Uchiha Tunin was rapidly closing. At this moment, Sasori was already sweating profusely. As he ran, he would occasionally look back at the pitch-black passageway. It was as if there was a demon hidden in the darkness at the end of the passageway watching him. This passageway was clearly not particularly long, but Sasori felt as if it could not reach the end no matter what. Sasori, however, did not know that these sounds were merely Uchiha Tinin using the five senses illusion of the Yamanaka clan, affecting his hearing. At this time, Sasori's strength was not weak, but Uchiha Tinin was simply his natural nemesis. His ability was on poison and puppets. With these two things combined, he could kill more than 99% of ninja in the ninja realm under a sneak attack. Even the third Kazakage in the original work died under Sasori's hands. But unfortunately, Achiha Tunin's physical body was too strong. Not only was it incomparably hard, it was also immune to hundreds of poisons. Finally, after running for a seemingly long time, Sasori finally saw the light in front of him and immediately sped up to rush out. Goo goo. Outside the passage was the blue sky, white clouds, and a forest of trees. However, they had already reached the foot of a mountain in the east of the mountain range. In an empty area, Sasori finally breathed a sigh of relief. It was impossible to run away, and Sasori did not think that he could keep running. The main reason was that the space in the laboratory and the passage was narrow, preventing him from displaying his full strength. However, before the battle, Sasori still had a precious gift for Uchiha Tunin. Sasori turned his head to face the entrance of the cave, and a cold light flashed in his eyes. He formed a seal with his hands. Boom! A fire shot out from the entrance of the cave, as if it had fired. 
the entire mountain range shook violently, as if a volcano had erupted. Countless boulders rolled down from the top of the mountain. However, because the mountain range was large enough, there was no large-scale collapse. An earth-shattering explosion occurred in the cave, but Sasori's buried countless exploding talismans in the passage. Under the huge explosion, the passage quickly collapsed, burying Uchiha Tunin within. Pitch-black smoke continuously spewed out from the hole. Sasori supported his knees with both hands and stared at the black smoke at the hole. He gasped. Phew, this guy is almost dead. In order to be safe, Sasori took out his last trump card and was ready to launch at any time. After a few breaths, Sasori's pupils suddenly contracted, and he quickly spread out the scroll. Red Secret Skill, Hundred Puppets Performance After a burst of white smoke, numerous red puppets appeared on the field, and under the control of Sasori's ten fingers, they rose into the air and surrounded the cave entrance. Step, step, step. The sound of steady footsteps came from the cave, but the explosion just now did not even disrupt the rhythm of the footsteps. I will give you a chance to show your strength. If you still don't teach me honestly, then don't blame me. Human patience is limited. As soon as he finished speaking, the black smoke at the entrance of the cave suddenly surged abnormally. Achiha Tenen walked out from the entrance of the cave and gently fanned it with his hand. He said with a disgusted expression, It's not very powerful, but it's quite powerful. This taste is a little bland though. Is this guy immortal? Sasori's forehead was covered in cold sweat at this moment, and he said sternly, Achiha Tunin, other than the puppet's secret technique, I can teach you everything else. Otherwise, I can only bet everything on me and fight you to the death. When Achiha Tunin heard this, he raised his head and saw the densely packed red puppets floating in the sky, completely surrounding him. Needless to say, this formation was quite intimidating. You want to play with me to the death? I have to say, the current you doesn't have the ability. Everyone had dignity, not to mention a genius like Sasori, who had been arrogant since childhood. Achiha Tinan insulted him over and over again, which made him unable to control his anger any longer. Immediately, his ten fingers quickly trembled, controlling the hundred puppets to attack Achiha Tinan. The densely packed red puppets attacked Achiha Tinan. The red puppet that was the first to bear the brunt of the attack held a saber in both hands and slashed at Achiha Tunin. Achiha Tunin stretched out two fingers and gently pinched the blade. He narrowed his eyes and said, Strength can only be said to be average, completely relying on quantity to win. I have no interest at all. Only the secret arts in the mountain have not been tested. In the next moment, Achiha Tunin turned into a black shadow, and under the siege of hundreds of troops, he quickly approached Sasori like a swimming fish. No matter how these red puppets attacked, they could not touch Achiha Tunin in the slightest. How is this possible? Sasori saw this scene and instantly paled. In an instant, Achiha Tunin arrived in front of Sasori in a flash, stretched out his hand, grabbed his hair, and lifted him up. His five fingers slightly exerted strength, and his fingertips burst out chakra, instantly cutting off Sasori's chakra circulation. He sneered. These trash, they can't even touch my clothes. Since you don't know what's good for you, then I will take what I want myself. Let me see what is in your mind. Sasori had already thought that there would be a huge gap between the two of them, but he did not expect that the gap would be so big. When the other party became serious, he could not even block one move. He saw Sasori's face full of fear, his voice trembling slightly, What are you doing? The corners of Achiha Tunin's mouth curled up slightly. He said slowly, I have recently learned the heart reading technique and have never had the chance to try it. I can use you to test it out. However, I prefer to call this move. Soul Reading as soon as he finished speaking, Achiha Tunin activated the mind-reading technique and began to violently steal Sasori's memory. The mind-reading technique dealt a lot of damage to the target. Under normal circumstances, the target needed to be anesthetized. This way, it could reduce the difficulty of the spell and also reduce the damage the target received. 
However, Uchiha Tenen expressed that it was not difficult at all. As for the damage done to others, it was not within Uchiha Tenen's consideration. Cold spiritual force poured into Sasori's mind, frantically searching for his closest memories. Sasori's entire body involuntarily twitched, foaming at the mouth. Uh. Ah. Uh. Spare me. I'll tell you. A strange smile appeared on Uchiha Tenen's face. He said softly, How can I trouble you? Let me do it myself. The pain of mental violence was not something that ordinary people could imagine. Even a villain like Sasori in the original work could not withstand this kind of torture, and his eyelids gradually turned white. You are, demon, killed. I. After a long time, Uchiha Tenen got what he wanted and gently let go of his hand. Sasori's body fell to the ground, twitching from time to time. Uchiha Tenen looked down at Sasori, hesitated for a moment, reached out and picked it up, and walked away. Half an hour later. In the previous laboratory. Uchiha Tenen was beating the puppet parts left by Sasori in the laboratory. I used to think that these things were like toys in anime. I didn't expect them to be so precise. They are simply black technology. At the same time, another Uchiha Tenen appeared in the laboratory. He threw Sasori in his hand on the ground, then turned into a puff of white smoke and disappeared. The one who had fought with Sasori before had always been Uchiha Tenen's doppelganger. After all, this was the main venue for Sasori. What if Sasori had some black technology that could kill him? Uchiha Tenen had always been cautious. Naturally, he could not directly come to the door before the information was fully understood. The instant the clone was removed, the memories of the clone were transmitted to the mind of Uchiha Tunin's main body. However, Uchiha Tunin did not even look at Sasori. He slowly got up and walked to a wall in the laboratory. He reached out and pressed the wall. Ka! A secret compartment appeared next to it. There was a small box filled with sealing techniques in the secret compartment. Uchiha Tunin had received Sasori's memories, so he naturally knew that the main function of this box was to block perception. There was no danger. He opened the box and took out the scroll inside. This scroll recorded all the puppet techniques that Sasori knew in detail, including the puppets he developed himself. Uchiha Tunin immediately opened the scroll and carefully read it. After a long time, Uchiha Tunin muttered, Has the theory of regeneration been developed? His eyes lit up and he turned to look at Sasori on the ground. He had an eager expression on his face. Very good. We have all the materials to make the regeneration pill here. We can work together with a few more clones. I think we can go back to the village before dark to make dinner for dough. Chapter 248 Back to Camp Evening Hour The sun was hiding behind the mountains. Half of the sky was a fiery red sunset, and the other half was a dark blue sky. Hataki Doze sat under the eaves with the container in her arms, waiting for Uchiha Tunin. In the end, he was still a child. After his parents suddenly passed away, he didn't know what to do. After a long time, footsteps sounded in his ears, and he looked up. He saw Uchiha Tunin holding a cylindrical object in one hand and walking towards him. Hataki Do quickly got up. When Uchiha Tunin came close, he bowed slightly and said, Sir. Uchiha Tunin smiled and said, Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm going to cook. Hataki Do was stunned. She did not expect Uchiha Tunin, who was so powerful, to be able to cook. However, when he thought that he wouldn't be able to do it, he bowed and replied, Thank you. Uchiha Tunin nodded slightly and walked into the house. He casually placed the reborn nucleus in his hand on the coffee table, then tied up his apron and walked into the kitchen to cook. Dada! Hataki Do listened to the crisp and rhythmic sound of cutting vegetables from the kitchen. Perhaps she felt that it was not good for her to not do anything, so she came to the kitchen door and stood there, wondering if she could help. The kitchen knife in Uchiha Tunin's hand flipped over, and the flesh of the thigh on the chopping board was instantly separated. This scene made Hataki Do secretly speechless. Go sit at the dining table. 
You won't be able to help much, Achiha Tunin said without raising his head. Hataki Do nodded and obediently sat at the dining table. Not long later, Achiha Tunin came to the dining table with a fragrant dish. Under Achiha Tunin's signal, the wooden belly-shaped bag was not polite and picked up the chopsticks to eat. This meal was not too delicious, mainly because the ingredients were a little crude and the seasoning was only simple salt. Moreover, many vegetables were moldy because they had been put too long. Achiha Tunin also chose the vegetables that he could eat to cook. The two of them ate without saying a word. During this time, Hataki Do would occasionally look at the reborn nucleus on the coffee table, his eyes filled with curiosity. However, because he was not familiar with Achiha Tunin and subconsciously felt that the two of them were superior and subordinate, he did not dare to ask. Achiha Tunin chewed and slowly swallowed the food as he said lightly, If you're curious, then ask. I'm not a man-eating beast, what are you afraid of? Tumu swallowed the food in his mouth and asked curiously, What is that? Achiha Tunin said slowly, It is called the reborn nucleus. It is used as special method to extract a person's heart and brain and add special materials to fuse the two. Hataki Do nodded. Then, he asked, what's the use of this thing? The chopsticks in Achiha Tunin's hand paused for a moment, and he explained. The soul and consciousness of a person will be sealed in the rebirth core, and because it has removed the burden of other organizations in the human body, and is protected by a special sealing spell outside. This will allow the flesh and blood in the rebirth core to survive for a very, very long time. It could be said that he would never die. He won't die. When Hataki Do heard this, a look of yearning flashed across his eyes. Yes, this guy is called Sasori. Achiha Tunin continued to explain. He was the genius puppeteer of the Hidden Sand Village, and the rebirth core was developed by him. He had always wanted to transform himself into an immortal puppet. As a result, he happened to meet me, so I helped him. When I go back, I will assemble a suitable puppet body for him so that he can move freely. So powerful. Hataki Do opened his mouth wide in shock. For him, he had only heard of powerful ninjutsu such as fireball and water from his parents. He had never expected that he could actually play it like this. When Uchiha Tunin saw how surprised Hataki Do was, he smiled warmly and said, There's no need to be envious. There's not only one way to choose whether he dies or not. I personally think that his path is an unorthodox one. When you understand more in the future, you will eventually walk your own path. Let's eat. After we finish eating, we have to hurry back through the night. Yes. When Hataki Do heard that they had to hurry on their way, she immediately responded and increased the speed of their meal. Half a month later, in the camp of Mount Kikyo, Achiha Tunin had just returned to the laboratory with his wooden bag when Shikaku Nara found the door. Shikaku Nara said anxiously, Lord Tunin, you are finally back. Achiha Tunin raised his eyebrows slightly and said, What's wrong? Is there a problem with the war? The assassination team we sent into the rain country suffered a great loss. After all, there is a great disparity in numbers. A team often encounters two or three enemy villages. When Uchiha Tunin heard this, his tone became cold. You want me to make a move? Shikaku Nara saw that Uchiha Tunin seemed to be a little unhappy, so he lowered his head and said, If it is possible. The main force of this war was Shikamaru and the Hyuga clan, and Shikaku Nara was mainly worried about the casualties of his family's ninjas, so he wanted to see if he could let Uchiha Tunin make a move. As for the physical problem that Uchiha Tunin was talking about, he did not care too much about it. However, for Uchiha Tunin, it did not matter if Kanoha was dead. After all, most of the ninjas had already recognized him, and he could strengthen himself. In any case, he had defeated the allied forces of the two countries and killed Fonging of Hidden Sand Village. His battle achievements could be considered to have broken through the sky. As long as the last line of defense, Mount Kikyo, did not fall, no one could say that they were wrong. No matter how great the loss was, it was still because the strength of the Inoshika Cho and the Hyuga clan was not enough, 
or that the commander, Shikaku Nara, was not in command. I am really sorry, my body is not suitable for assassination missions. If you can't handle the loss, you can return to Mount Kikyu. When they come, I will help them. Uchiha Tunin decisively rejected Shikaku's request. Shikaku was slightly stunned and continued to persuade. However, Mount Kikyo only occupied the main road, but there was more than one road. If too many strongholds in front were lost, the enemy village could attack the country of fire through other routes. When Uchiha Tunin saw that Shikaku was pestering him for a long time, he completely lost his good expression. He looked at him meaningfully and said coldly, The other roads are not so easy to take. Even if Chunin and Jinin passed, they would have exerted most of their strength to trek the mountain range. My duty is to defend Kikyu Mountain and repel the army. There was a hint of threat in his tone. When Shikaku saw Uchiha Tunin's expression, his heart skipped a beat. He quickly lowered his head and bowed deeply to Uchiha Tunin. I understand. Lord Tunin, please take a good rest. After saying that, he turned around and left. After walking out of the laboratory, Shikaku Nara wiped the cold sweat on his forehead and sighed heavily. Inoichi, who had been waiting outside for a long time, hurriedly asked, Did Lord Tunin agree? Shikaku stretched out his hand and patted Inoichi on the shoulder. He helplessly shook his head and said, Inform Lord High, Sue to call the Hyuga clansmen back to guard the stronghold. In the laboratory, Hataki Do looked at Uchiha Tunin's back and said weakly, Sir. Uchiha Tunin turned around and a gentle smile appeared on his face. You don't have to care about this. Come with me. I've prepared the teaching materials for you. As he spoke, he led the wooden bag to the innermost room of the laboratory. In the next moment, Uchiha Tunin took out a storage scroll from his ninja bag and placed his hands on the scroll. Bang! After a burst of white smoke, Hataki Do was completely dumbfounded. He saw a large number of books and scrolls piled up on the ground, almost reaching the ceiling like a small mountain. This is... Uchiha Tunin reached out to rub his hair and said with a smile, The books and scrolls here are only part of the more basic parts. You can finish reading them in about half a year. You don't need to understand them all, you just need to remember them. Only then you begin to practice. After practicing for a period of time, you will come back to read these things. After repeating this for a few times, you will learn it. This is called becoming one with knowledge. Gulp, Hataki Do swallowed his saliva and nodded his head blankly. Uchiha Tunin immediately formed a seal and conjured a shadow clone. The shadow clone came before the pile of books and waved at Hataki Do. Come on, let's divide these things into different categories first. Then I will teach you how to read and write. If there is anything you don't understand, you can ask me. Hataki Do lowered her head and looked at the container in her arms. She asked, What about the relic? Next to him, Uchiha Tunin stretched out his hand and picked up the container. He said slowly, In a few months, you will be fully developed. When the time comes, I will send someone to send you to Kanoa's orphanage. There are special people there to take care of you. When the war is over, we can meet again. Hataki Do nodded and bowed deeply to Uchiha Tunin. Thank you, sir. Uchiha Tunin nodded with satisfaction and left the room with the container. He was ready to try to create the puppet. Chapter 250 The Swarm It was already midnight, and the bonfire had already turned into ashes. The darkness in the distance rushed over like the wind. The sparkling stars were embedded in the dark night sky, like shining gems. The crescent moon hung high in the dark blue sky, illuminating the dim light on Mount Kikyo. Nara Shikaku and the other two ran out of the commander's tent and stood at the edge of the mountain, looking into the distance. With his eyesight, he couldn't see the enemy ninjas. However, he could see the black wind flying towards Kanoa's camp. Buzz! Inoichi looked at this scene and frowned. What is that? Is it a bug? Shikaku narrowed his eyes, and then his eyes were full of shock. No, that is the bee of the Kamazura clan, 
the mortal enemy of our Aburim clan. Inoichi was shocked and said with an ugly expression, This is bad. Although Lord Tunin is strong, he is alone. But the other party obviously wants to kill us with these troublesome bees. Shikaku took a deep breath and said with a death on his face, Right now, there aren't many combat personnel here. Any tactics are useless. Prepare to fight to the death. As long as I die, no matter what the result is, nothing will happen to the family. Let me bear the blame and resentment. The eyes of Inoichi and Choza flashed with sadness, and they clenched their fists. Choza took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, I'll go find Lord Tunin. Shikaku immediately turned his head and shouted at Choza. Don't go. It's impossible for him to not know of the enemy attack. Quickly inform the camp ninjas to light up the bonfire. In the face of this kind of thing, it is better to have a clearer view. At this time, at the highest position in the Kikyu Mountains, Uchiha Tunin and Sasori stood side by side by the cliff, looking down at the messy camp. Sasori looked at the black wind and turned to Uchiha Tunin. It seems that all the people of the Kamazura clan have moved out. You don't have enough Aburane ninja or fire escape ninja, it will be difficult to handle. What are you going to do? You have to know that facing these little insects, even if you use fire escape, you can't stop them. Uchiha Tunin did not answer him. Instead, he quietly looked at the sparse logistics ninjas in the camp and said meaningfully, With so few people, it seems like they want to force me to make a move. Only then did Sasori react. The enemy warning had been issued for a while, and there were only a few hundred ninjas in the camp. And from the looks of it, they don't seem to be very strong. He immediately asked with a puzzled face, Where did all the ninjas from Kanoha go? Naturally, they went to the place they were supposed to go, but I don't know who they meant. Achiha Tunin looked in the direction of the commander's tent and said, Once something is done, they will have to pay the price they deserve. It can also be considered a lesson for them. At this time, the bees controlled by Kamazuru clan had swept to Kanoha's camp. Kanoha's ninjas also made their moves, trying to stop these bees. But for people, those honey bees were too small, and the number was too large, so there was no way to start. Fire style, great fireball technique. Earth style, earth flow wall technique. Damn it! Shadow imitation can't be used. This thing can't be hacked with kunai. No, other than fire release, other ninjutsu are useless. Next to the commander's tent, Inoichi and Shikaku took out kunai and resisted the incoming bees with difficulty. Jaunin could use kunai to cut bees, but there were so many bees. The two of them were rapidly depleting their stamina. At this moment, the effects of the Akimichi were revealed. Choza looked at the large swarm of bees in front of him. He spread out his arms and shouted angrily. Doubling technique. Choza's two hands suddenly became bigger, like a huge cattail leaf fan, slapping towards the bees. Pa. The two palms struck together, instantly killing tens of thousands of bees. However, the scattered bees in the surroundings also had enough targets to attack. They frantically rushed towards the arms of the Choza and ruthlessly stabbed the poison needles into it. Annoying bees. Choza screamed, his face becoming extremely painful, his arms constantly waving around. However, the method of Choza was undoubtedly like a cannon hitting a mosquito. Very quickly, the poison from the poison needle seeped into the body of Choza Akimichi. Not only could this poison paralyze the nerves, it could also solidify the blood in the body and block the meridians, causing the circulation of the chakra to stagnate. After a few breaths, Choza finally could not hold on any longer. He gritted his teeth, inhaled a breath of cold air, and roared, It hurts. As soon as he finished speaking, Choza felt the world spin around him, and his entire body fell straight to the ground. His arms also shrank, but they had already been stung to a greenish-black color. Choza lost his ability to fight. He immediately came to his side and used the kunai in his hand to hack at the bees. He felt that he had consumed too much energy, and the bees seemed to be endless. Kyoza looked desperate and said, Damn it! 
This thing is too hard to deal with. There are only a few Aburain ninja in the camp. They can't stop it. In the distance, the ninjas of Hidden Sand Village and Hidden Rock Village were on standby under the command of Anoki and Old Hazon. A rock ninja in charge of sensing came to the side of Anoki and whispered, Tsuchikich Sama, Kanoha's camp has very few people, and under the attack of the swarm, at least two thirds of them have lost their fighting power. Anoki nodded, stroked his beard, and said, Wait a minute, let's see how that Uchiha Tunin will deal with it. According to the information Kanoha has sent back, every time the little guy fought with all his strength, there would be serious consequences. We don't have to risk our lives to kill such a person. If he doesn't have a way to deal with it, then we will attack Kikyu with all our strength today. If he can block it, then we will try our best to exhaust the strength of Kanoha's side. When old Hazong, who was with Anoki, heard this, he slightly raised his eyebrows. I didn't expect Rock Hidden Village to be so well informed. I also have an intelligence. I heard that Hidden Cloud Village's Hachibi Jinchuriki has become a perfect Jinchuriki and is already on the battlefield. When Anoki heard this information, a smile appeared on his face. In his heart, he was more confident about this war, and he said, That's good, let Hidden Cloud Village pressure Kanoha. It's best to transfer Achiha Tunin away, and then we will attack with full force. Anyway, Kanoha doesn't have the strength to attack, so we can pin them down. The swarm of bees from the upper stream tribe had already enveloped the entire Kikyu Mountain. At the peak of Kikyu, Achiha Tunin and Sasori watched coldly as the Kanoha ninjas fell one by one. There were even a few hundred bees that noticed Achiha Tunin and Sasori and spontaneously surrounded them. Sasori lowered his head and looked at the bees that were lying on his body and constantly using poison needles to attack him. He said calmly, The human body is really fragile. If they were all turned into puppets, they would not be afraid of these little things. There was a sense of superiority in his words. No, no, no. The human body is not as fragile as you think. A low and magnetic voice sounded. Sasori turned around and looked at Uchiha Tunin. Just like him, a group of bees were lying on Uchiha Tunin's body and constantly attacking, but they could not pierce through. One of the bees even flew up and then rushed towards Uchiha Tunin. In the end, it stabbed into Uchiha Tunin's body and even broke the poison needle. Uchiha Tunin raised his hand and caught the dizzy bee. He looked at it in front of his eyes and praised. What a cute bee, hardworking and steady, working tirelessly. As he spoke, Uchiha Tunin stretched out two fingers and straightened the poison needle of the bee. Then, he pulled it out bit by bit. The poison needle dragged out the organs of the bee. For some reason, Sasori looked at this scene and felt that Uchiha Tunin seemed to be a little scary. He subconsciously wanted to swallow his saliva, but found that he was already a puppet and had no saliva at all. Then he asked, I'm very curious about how you will clean up the mess later. Hearing this, Uchiha Tunin raised his head, narrowed his eyes and looked at the sky full of stars. He ponders. Hmm. Perhaps he felt that it was about time, or perhaps he felt that the punishment was enough. Achiha Tunin raised his hands and made a seal in front of him. He said lightly, Nature has evolved for a long time. Every species has its own natural predator. The extraordinary power of chakra can turn the impossible into a possibility. Let some creatures quickly break through the restrictions of the original species and stand at the top of the food chain. Become the natural enemy of all species. Secret Art Super Beast Bite That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part 7.